What's up, everybody? Welcome to the After Chat. Let's go ahead and say hi. How's it going, everybody? Appreciate you hanging out. Appreciate you coming back. We're live again, and so what's the point of all this? What are we doing? Well, we're going to answer your ham radio questions live. Now, of course, there's so many people who have found out about my channel, my Instagram, and all that stuff. I got so many messages because of this AT&T failure, we'll call it. 75,000 people lost complete access to their cell phones. Totally insane. Totally crazy. And I, I think I think what they're, they're factoring this up to is a migration problem, meaning a lot of these companies are never going to stop the need, right? There's never going to be a, like a cessation of the need to grow the network, constantly just grow, et cetera, et cetera. And so they're always going to be migrating new nodes, new portions of the network into the, the mothership system, right? And there was a failure there that took out 75,000 plus customers. And Sean said, not just AT&T, but yeah, see, that's a really, a really good point. It's not just AT&T, it's Verizon, T-Mobile, et cetera. The, the point here is that some of these major carriers like AT&T, they not only just serve their customers, but they also serve other companies because their network is so large, at least in a lot of places that they can have other customers from other networks being kind of onboarded onto that network as kind of a, you know, to spread the load, if you will. But if the entirety of the network goes down, ah, it takes out them too. And I was told that FirstNet, FirstNet, which is a very high priority emergency responder cell phone system, also went down because it wasn't just like oh we we lost some communication they lost everything it all went down my instagram was just insane this week since thursday guys my my I, my views went up my uh followers went up but that's not the point it was the direct messages i was getting of so many people that became really really interested in how they can refine their communications and add some kind of redundancy to it. And so that's what this is going to be about. We're still going to answer all your questions, don't worry. But I want to kick things off. I want to kick things off with a question. I, and Drew's joined us from the last live stream. Fantastic live stream. One of my one of my favorites. Drew, I, I love you. You're a great guy. But I don't know. You're, you're probably right under Tamitha Scove as far as my best interviews that I've done. I'll put you in between Tamitha Scove and Hayden. So you're you're right in there with some of the best of the best. Uh, that was a fantastic live stream. I hope everybody enjoyed that. It was so much fun for me. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna dive into the Discord right now. We're gonna talk to all our friends there. Discord is a, a chat room, but it also allows us to do voice communication. Yes, over the internet. Don't worry, we're gonna talk about ham radio. I promise. But that allows us to be able to communicate back and forth and actually have like refining questions which is often often really important because this is an incredibly technical hobby but we're here to help you the best that we can so let's hop over to the discord and say hi to everybody josh is dialing in here we go do, 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 do. high school and it didn't seem like there was a lot of um interest in that kind of stuff they just kind of dropped it hey josh i'm out hey how's it going james appreciate you yeah guys thanks for uh let me jump in there. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Drew's already in the chat. Drew, you're there. Can you hear me? Oh. Oh, he just muted himself. Uh, have you all talked to Drew? Has he, he been able to talk with you? I don't know which person I was talking to, but we were talking about uh, getting DMR and a weather station working or something on at schools. I, I don't know if it was the same person. Uh, I'll give no, a it's not Drew. That's I'll give, me. Uh, I'll give it, a shout out to Mitchell Pilot. Thanks for the super chat, man. Appreciate you following along. So Drew, it sounds like you might be having a problem. Just go into your uh, Discord settings and, or you can text me if you want. Uh, go into your Discord settings and set a mic and a speaker, and uh, just type in the chat how you're doing if you need anything. And I'm I could give you no PTT if you need that. I've been having to reset my PTT every time I come onto your stream. Yeah, Discord can be a little weird. Me. Yeah. I can appreciate that. But uh, I don't know where it's at. So how oh, are we doing? There he is. You got him. How you doing, Drew? Doing great. How are you? Very good. Your sound is fantastic. Five nines across the board there. So, uh, Drew, we're going to do a couple of things here. 
Uh, Drew obviously is joining us from the last live stream, which was just fantastic. I hope everybody has a chance to watch at least portions of that. And I, I may actually go back in and add chapter markers. It was so good. I think we should probably break that up a little bit. But with with this whole cell phone thing that happened, and Drew, you're on the East Coast. Were you affected by this? Do you have AT&T in your house? Uh, so we do not have AT and T. We had Verizon. It is around this area. Some folks do use it uh, just because it's a it's a major one out here. Um, and we did experience a lot of uh, a down time around here. And even the school had a big issue with it. So yeah. Uh yeah, and we we had some first responders that had issues as well. Somebody's saying I have some snap crackle and pops in my audio chain. So let me know if uh, I'm not coming in clear. Am I clear to everybody? It seems like it's gone now, Josh. I was the one that said it. Well, very good. I'm glad we got that. So here's what I want to do. Um, we got a lot of hams on the Discord. By the way, join us. We, we would love to if you joined our ranks here on the uh, HRCC Discord. Link is in the description. But what I would like to do is start this off by asking, what is your favorite mode of communication if there's a grid down situation? And what do I mean by grid down? So no power, no cell phone. Um, what would you do in a, in a situation like that? So you wake up in the morning. I'll, I'll, I'll set the stage. You wake up glassy-eyed after a wonderful night's sleep. You don't know what you're waking up to, but what you, when you wake up, your cell phone has no signal. You cannot make a simple text message. You can't post even a TikTok. What do you do? So who wants to be the first to dive in on that one and break the ice? I'll break it. All right, Frank's breaking it. Go ahead, Frank. I love it. Uh, HF with Winlink and Vara AC chat to get out if I absolutely need to. To an area, you know, especially with Vara AC chat because it's basically a chat service for hams. Uh, take that. Get out to someone who might have cell service or power. Let them know, hey, we're out of power here. We're out of cell phone. You know, everything's okay here. So, one link and VAR AC chat. So, VAR AC is, uh, is a really nice method to be able to communicate over HF radio. Uh, would you do anything local comms? Absolutely. I can uh, talk to a couple people on two-meter simplex, no problem. Uh, the repeaters that cover... Most of the areas I'm in are on backup generators, and they are not internet connected. So, mm -hmm. you know, and they're wide area enough that I could easily help uh, or talk to a wide enough area. If you're somewhat familiar with the San Francisco Bay Area, I'm as far north in the Bay Area as I can go. Mm -hmm. I can talk all the way down to Vacaville on three different repeaters, no problem. Which is and important. Well, outside that, it's a. Uh, 80 mile or so radius. Well, no, repeater. it's important so that you could speak to the jelly belly factory. If the cell phones are down, you can get your order mm -hmm. in, get those belly exactly. flops fresh off the, off the line. The belly flops are the best it, thing going when it comes to jelly bellies. Exactly. You That's, hit the nail on the head. I, yeah, you, you betcha. I toured that plant. Let me tell you, I'm a big jelly belly guy. Um, all right. So who wants to be next? Oh, I, actually, I think Frank is what he's really going to do is he's going to take all his radios, he's going to hop on a train, and he's just going to go. He's going to get out of the affected area via his most adjacent train. That's that's the real answer, uh, right? No, I, I'd use my uh, Ford Explorer first and then get on the train when right. work was ready. All and right. Drew, Drew is a fantastic guest. Awesome job. Uh, fantastic job. Just absolutely killed it. Uh, Drew is amazing. I, I, one, one last thing, and then I'll let you carry on. Yeah. If I had someone like him in oh. my high school, I tried to get a club going when I was in high school. If I had someone like him with his enthusiasm in high school, I think the club would have been absolutely fantastic. I, I got to say, like, at, like now that we're so further along the line of technology, there's a couple of things that I like. I know that I would be so much further along is if I had a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino, a 3D printer, 
and Drew. <laughs> Drew is the, is the fourth person that I will add to this. If I had a, a some kind of educator in the chain somewhere like Drew, I would be a much better engineer than I am today because I would have gotten started so much earlier. It's like Tiger Woods in a golf club. If somebody had put a Raspberry Pi and Arduino in my hand early, I would have been much further along. So who wants to go next with this uh, challenge question? What do you do when the cell phones go down? Is there an instant I reason I need to do anything? Uh, so somebody said, do I need to do anything? Who was that? Go ahead. I mean... Tuper, go ahead. I, I could go to work or like I could just have a camping trip in the front yard. Like I don't necessarily have to talk to people. I enjoy it, but... I that's a, that that's a life and death emergency, you know? That's the true ham radio answer, right? Is uh, why am I even talking to anybody? <laughs> Just let me do my projects and leave you alone. <laughs> I mean, I got a 32 foot motorhome with a generator. I can make dinner. I can survive. I don't, I don't know that I'm in survival situation yet. Mm hmm. Well, that's a good point. But I mean, that's also one of the questions is like when you wake up and your cell phone's completely dead. Would you not immediately pull out an AM FM transmitter and start to listen and see like, is the morning zoo crew there? Are they actually talking about, you know, whatever blah, blah, blah points uh, of, of popularity and, and fashion is going on? Or do you like, oh, there's literally an emergency beacon. Now what are we going to DEF CON 5 or, you know, whatever on our, in our home preps? Right. That, that's a curiosity is like when the cell phone's down, that's just an indicator that it could be a disaster situation. Right. Yeah, but I'd assume, you know, weather radio or something like that would be going off in that situation. That's a good point. Really good point. So you do have a weather radio, right? Oh, absolutely. I got in the ham for Skywarn. Ah, Skywarn guy. So Mad Cat Magician says, Hi, Josh. Do you guys in the ham community think that this was because of the solar, because of the flares, or as the Fed say, tech issues? I don't think it was flares at all, because it was, if it was flares, we would have had much wider spread issues with other services. It was mostly adjacent to AT&T. So flares would affect way more things on a broader frequency. And likely would have been a lower frequency in some cases. Solar flares likely are going to be closer to the HF area of affectation in terms of like the immediate reaction and taking out a service kind of thing. And AT&T is generally very high frequency. Yeah, oh, 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 that, that's all I need. That's all I needed to hear. Dr. Scove said it's absolutely not solar flares. So, yeah, it's it's no, it, that's what it's I was not. about to say. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely not solar flares. By the way, guys, uh, if we got a solar flare that was large enough to take down a cell phone network, we'd be screwed communication-wise. Like, hams would be the only ones, the only name in the game that'd be communicating, other than GMRS and our uh, CB brethren. Uh, it would be a bad day for everybody if we had that situation. So, yeah. All right, who's I next? I think that would be a bad day for solar radiation. Uh. No, well, yeah, I guess I don't know. The radiation would be up, but I don't know that it would be like can't can't go outside that bad. Who's next? Who has their thoughts on what if you wake up glassy? Got, got go ahead, Shadow Warrior. I would head straight to seven one oh seven. Seven one oh seven. Okay, uh, you're talking about frequency, right? Yep, that's uh, that's the that's the ghost net. That's S two Underground's information. Oh, wait, seven point one zero seven megahertz. Is yep, this... that's where they do JSA. Oh, I was gonna say this is JSA call. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's a really good. Um, so fantastic point. JSA call and other methods of communication, that watering hole of getting like-minded ideas on what's going on would be a, a fantastic point. So every, everybody that's ever experienced this, I don't know if you've experienced this, when the power goes out, I immediately run to my radios. I love it when the power's out because my noise floor drops to nothing and I can communicate to everybody. And Almost all of the time, I know that it's not a disaster, but when the noise is that low, I can make contacts to everyone and I can hear everything. Like you can see the noise in my background 
right now. I'm still on 20 meters. I haven't switched to seven uh, to to 40 yet. Watch what happens when I change. My antenna is going to switch over right now. I I love the power outage, and yes, I would I would love to go to a watering hole like, hey, you guys experiencing this? What's going on? And just have a little little chat with people. So yeah, S2 underground. What was it? Seven dot one zero four. Was it? It seven seven dot one zero seven. Seven. Usually they have a uh, night. They have a weekly meet on Thursdays. But if anything goes down, that's the first place I'm checking. I love. I, I may. We may uh, start out going to. Uh, no, calm down, Captain. It's not. It's not good yet. The my my antenna is still tuning. Oh yeah, because I'm not. Hold on. Ready, ready. Hold on. Here's here's the top antenna. Is the step I R. That's my noise floor on 40 meters. That's my uh, loop on the ground antenna below it. Holy look! It's it's S9 RFI S9 noise. So bad. 7.107. Go check out uh, S2 Underground's JSA call. I may we we might actually kick off the live stream going there just to drop a couple of heartbeats and see how it goes. All right, who's next? Who wants to talk about what they do? If they were glassy-eyed in the morning and their cell phone wasn't working, what would you do? What what mode of communication would you would you gravitate towards? FM. Uh, uh, broadcast FM. No, right. Ask your local. I, I I live in a little town, you know, uh, forty miles from everything. I mean, I need to reach thirty-five miles just to hit repeaters, mm -hmm. but. Uh, we we with the guys in Aberdeen would who wanted to talk to me. We would just point our beams at each other and talk simplex. Yeah, I mean that. So I, I would do. I'll just give you my spoiler on what I would do. I'm I'm making a video. I'll post it on Monday. But um, AM FM broadcast stations. Start with that again. Morning Zoo crew. If you're hearing weather stations and all other stuff, likely the world's not ending. So there's something else going on. And then I would say like, okay, well now what do I do to offset my inconvenience by not having my phone? Winlink email, APRS, Meshtastic for texting my my wife with her Meshtastic device. That's exactly what I would be doing. Who's next? Who wants to add their thoughts? I'm lucky enough to be a first responder, so I default to if the if my phone quits working, I default to our VHF UHF public safety channels. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's that's a great spot to go. Yeah. And I know I'm not. I know a bunch of people aren't fortunate enough to uh, have access to those, but if you go to Radio Reference, look up your state and your county. Uh, Josh, I'm fairly certain you did a video on this. Put in just receive yeah. only. Please, and, uh, please put in receive only. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm uh, I'm just going to say I have personal radios like my TYT that I have transmit and receive on because I'm allowed to. Mm -hmm. I was given permission. So, but yeah. Um, Ray Reference has done a pretty good job of making sure not too many people get a hold of that because you now have to pay the premium to get your input frequencies. There you go. Hey, uh, Sharif Israel says, what's up, Josh? I have to say... Thank you, and others helped me pass my technician test earlier this evening, WMX7. Congratulations, man. Thank you for joining the fraternity of hams. All right, any last uh, thoughts there on the cell phone going down? Otherwise, I want to throw things over to, uh, to Drew, and we're going to take questions on educating the Utes. That's what we're going to talk about, and just everybody, frankly. Excellent. We'll we'll take it straight to uh to Drew. Does anybody have a question for for Drew or thoughts on the last live stream that we just wrapped up? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, Josh and Drew, um, can Drew comment about the transfer of skills and spark of learning in normal classroom situations? Like if you just walked into an English class, or if it was like a science class, and you're like, "Hey, this is Drew to talk about this crazy thing called ham radio." What do you mean specifically? Let's let's dial it in. No, what I'm uh, sorry, Josh. No, what I mean is the skills that they're learning in the ham in the ham club that they have, such as the science, the math, um, all of the general education skills. Are they seeing those being transferred back into the classroom, and are they seeing uh, changes or positive changes in the children that are involved in the club? Interesting. That's a really good question, Drew. Are you ready for that one? Oh, we lost it. I think your mute button is tied to your PTT button somehow. 
All right, let's try that. There you go. There you go. You're good. Right. Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, so what I would say is that all of my information at this point would be anecdotal. Uh, so that my data set is uh, non-quantitative in, in nature at the moment. I don't have anything to show that like my kids are, are doing better in their classes as a result of it. Uh, what I will say is that I have heard from teachers saying that, you know, how engaged the kids are, how, you know, how these particular students have done well in their classes in different regards. Um, now, is that a result of what we're doing? Probably not, honestly. It's probably just because of who those kids are. Um, you know, but there's, in, there's inherent aspects to it that I think are helpful. For instance, the, uh, you know, the problem solving skills, the fact that in our group, they have to come prepared to do something. It's the number one rule. It's the only real rule of our group is that they have to be productive. Mm -hmm. Like they cannot sit around and do nothing. It's not a social hour. It's not just time for them to hang out with their friends. That's the only thing. They have to be productive and whatever they're productive on is of their own choosing. Um, that's a really good. That's a really that's good point. Real, we didn't ask that question, but so yeah, you you do expect them to be working towards some kind of greater goal, right? Yep, absolutely. So that transference, you know, I, I mean, very clearly, you know, in in the physics curriculum, they're running into you know standing waves, and they're you know understanding that more intuitively because we you know deal with those standing waves all of the, all the time right um you know like first thing every time you, you turn on that radio you're checking you know the swr and you know we've done the demonstrations we've talked about what that means and we talked about what the energy levels are coming back to the radio you know if it's not radiating it out as uh, electromagnetic radiation so like we, we talk about those things and so I, I do think that there is transfer in in a lot of different senses so there's discrete knowledge there is the um you know, soft skills, communication skills, and then there's, you know, those more um, maybe esoteric ones in terms of, like, problem solving that are, are just a little bit tougher to nail down. But that's what they do. 99% of what they're doing with us is problem solving because no one's teaching them how to do it. They're having to figure it out on their own. Um, so most of the, the responses I've gotten from other teachers is that, yeah, no, they're they're, they're willing to problem solve. They're willing to, you know, put the extra effort into it. But again, is that a result? I, I don't know. These kids are, are wonderful kids to begin with. So I yeah. can't really take any credit for that. All right. Well said. Hope that answers the question. Anyone else want to ask uh, Drew a question? Oh, sorry, David, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say thank you. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's all about the inspirational teachers. So, um, it, you know, take a take a pat on the back because what you're doing is and does make a difference. Thank you, David. It, it is appreciated, and and you're right. There's a lot of great teachers out there that are doing this for the kids, and you know, it it does help that inspiration point of it for kids because a lot of times the kids don't know what it is that is possible. So a lot of times you have to just kind of like give them a little bit of a, of assistance in terms of saying like, Hey, have you heard of this thing? Have you heard of checking this out? You know, you're interested in this aspect of it. Have you heard of this? Like, did you know that there's mid altitude ballooning that can go all the way around the world? I don't know how it works, but maybe you, that's something you do want to check out. Go look at this. And so, yeah, that, that spark of it is really important for teachers to be able to pass it on because Kids, uh, kids feed off of us, right? Uh, they do. They feed off of the adults. They emulate what they see. And so if we want to see them have that spark more, then we've got to do it for them. So it's a joy to be able to do it. There you go. All right. Uh, who's Anybody want to ask Drew a question? Go ahead. Somebody asked, uh, let's see. There was a question about educating. Question, have, uh, let's see, that's not that one. Hold on, we'll get to that. Uh, what's up, Josh, wanna say thank you. Okay, got that, thank you. I'll ask a go ahead, uh, go ahead. question. Yeah, dive is, in. Um, have you made any contacts with um, Australia yet? No, we have not. Uh, 
<laughs> we have not made any to Asia at all or Southeast Asia or Australia. Um, none none to, to anywhere down or over that way. Um, our farthest west of us is Alaska, and our farthest east, I think, is Turkey. Our farthest south is, I want to say, I want to say it's like southern Argentina. But, yeah, that's it's, it's one of those things. It's a goal. We'll get there. There you go. Right on. There we go. Got that sort of hey, Drew, I've got to, I got to tell you, I was driving my truck one day and I had my 106 mounted in it that day with a 10 meter antenna. And I got two guys in Australia just driving around in Stillwater, Oklahoma. So propagation will get you there eventually. <laughs> well, that is good to know, and I will share that with them because, uh, you know, I, I have personally never worked Australia at, nor Hawaii, and so, you know, I hear the stories of it, and so I will, I will pass that along. They just got to keep at it. Yeah, you'll, you'll just hear him one day, some dude named Larry in, in wherever he was in, in Australia, and it was my first 10-meter contact. So I found the question for Drew. Uh, what your thoughts here, you know, would be great. What is the best way? Uh, what is the best way the kids are studying for the test? Are they using online practice methods or books? I have a thirteen-year-old that's interested. All right. Now that I can master a space bar here. Um, <laughs> All right, that's a great question, and that's one that we struggle with all the time. Um, it, again, each kid is different, right? Everybody does things differently, whatever works for them. We, in our group, we do not... Uh, we do not practice for the test. We do not teach to the test. We don't pre we don't do anything related to the test directly. We do no test study or prep in the after school group. At least we never have. Um, what we do is we say we say to the kids, here's hamstudy.org, here's books, here's all of the stuff, and here's a room full of people that have all passed the test. Oh, okay. And you do what works for you, but. And I, I, ha, I know that this is like very counterintuitive, but for us, at least at the school, this has worked. Um, they see the other students that have passed the test, and those other students have passed the test by taking the time and energy and effort to learn the content or memorize the, the questions or do whatever they've had to do. And whether it's via the books that we have, the study guides from the ARRL or Gordon West, or it is the um, or it is just straight up hamstudy.org uh, and just going through the questions, they see the other kids that have done it, and so they do it because those other kids have done it, and they know that they just have to push through it, yeah. and so they just do it. Um, so we don't, we specifically don't study it together as a, 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 like a class or a group or anything like that. That's at school. I will say this. At home with my kids, uh, so I've got three kiddos here at home, and all three of my kids, they got their tech in generals. And what we did was we, so during, so like when I'm home in the evening, what we would do is we would, um, you know, we'll go through a section of, uh, like a sub element of the of the the test, right? So like T one A, right? Sure. Yeah. And we'll go through those questions together, right? In a night, and we will talk through those. It'll take us an hour and a half or something like that. We'll talk through those questions, explain, jump through the rabbit, dive down into the rabbit holes. We'll go through those questions, and then the next day or two days, whatever it would take, they would then uh, they would then practice those questions until they got those questions up to 70% uh, on hamstudy.org. And then after they were at 70% of, or 100% of seen and 70% of aptitude, then we would move on to T2A, and we would do that together as a family. And then 
uh, their goal after 70% was to move to 80% and then 80 to 90% and then 90 to 95%. And so there was the repetition aspect of it and then the reinforcement through the conversations that we would have and pulling up a lot of videos about those, you know, those random things like what in the world is this, you know, store and, you know, forward system yeah. that they're talking about. Like I've never heard of this thing or let alone seen something to do with it. So, um, you know, and progressively we would just work through the content that way. It, it took us here at home uh, the better part of about five weeks to get through all of the content in that way, spending the hour to hour and a half in the evening, you know, every couple days or so. It, but the repetition on the kids' side, doing it with the questions, getting up to 95%, um, you know, made it so that way when they took their tests, uh, and all three of them took their tests through GLARG mm -hmm. and uh, through Ham Study, and they, you know, the kids were, the, my kids were just competing with each other to right. see how fast they could take it and with what accuracy. Okay. And so they took the, they took the test in like five minutes and three minutes, and I think Benjamin took it one of them in like two minutes and like thirty seconds or something like that. Oh my goodness. Uh, but you know, again, it's not right or wrong. It's just time so right. whatever works for them so here you gave us so much information here's something here's an idea that you might not have looked at but we'd love to hear your thoughts this is from jk flip-flop question in my high school you could get a letter jacket for making the varsity math team or programming team for kids that did not play other sports it was a big deal does drew's school do that no, it does not. Not yet. It is something that we have been actively talking about. That's interesting. Um, That's super yeah. cool. Yeah, we uh, we're, we're in a lot of conversation right now about the the difference between after school activities and athletics and, and all things are good. Don't get me wrong. Everything is good. Sure. Of all, course. All, all of it is like we're not not bashing sports or anything like that. It's just that how do we create, um, you know, an on par, uh, an equitable system of recognizing, supporting, and respecting the fullness of each student's experience. So like, and validating it when there's a lot of effort put into something. So does that letter essentially come when they hit, when they get their extra? Or does the letter come, you know, when they have made a thousand contacts or I don't know what it would be. Well, it could be a letter for just joining the club or, or making some kind of contact. And then you could get a pin, like that your color of pin changes uh -huh. if you're a technician general or extra because that was my thing is like you yeah. you'd get a uh you get a varsity letter you get a letter if you're participating in like what i was a water polo kid and so then if you're on the, the varsity team you'd get a different color pin to go with the water polo like it'd be a so, ball you know uh-huh so I will say this. One thing that we have done, I, I'm really glad that we did it, is, you know, like every kid gets a student ID from their school. So our kids in my after school group, the advanced technologies group, they get their own ID and their own ID um, has it's completely different than the school ID, but it has their call sign on it and their class on it. And so. The students are supposed to use that, like being able to show the teachers and being able to like leave classes to be able to go to the radio room. Mm -hmm. And so when they're at a radio, they're supposed to have that to be able to like say, hey, look, the frequency right. that I'm on. Yeah, I'm a general. I'm an extra. I'm a whatever. Oh, and so, I love it. Like, but you could do that with the jacket. It's so cool. I know. I know. Like, I, I, We're going to get there at some point in the near future. We're just not quite there yet. But it's a great idea. I, I I want I want all of this. I want I want like uh who was the uncle uncle uh the uncle from uh Napoleon Dynamite? I want I want I want an uncle to pull out a jacket and be like, "Yeah, Rico. Uncle Rico." Uncle Rico. I I, I was I, yeah, I was varsity ham radio operator when I was in such and such school. We we were going to go all state. <laughs> That's what I want <laughs> for ham radio. I want that so bad. Could you imagine? A CIF competition for ham radio. Could you imagine that? Like, this exists. Like, this exists in the world right now. There's a competition for uh, for ham radio where they like, you know, they give every group their own radio station that's identical, and they have to make as many contacts as possible. Like, that's 
it's rife with with oh we could do something like this for, yes. for him right here. It'd be and, amazing and competition is so incredibly important it for is. schools it yeah it yeah. it is intrinsic for a lot of human beings right to compete and to to prove themselves against others yeah. but schools love it because for them it's a way of being able to say hey one we're doing something with others but also hey this is how we uh relate our skills against all of these other school skill uh, you know schools but it's it's bred into the nature of schools. It's friendly. Like uh, we have plenty of rivalry, but it's sure. not like a negative rivalry. It's a positive thing. We enjoy going against these other schools to put ourselves against them. It's a good thing. So yes, the more we could do that, the better. Could you imagine though a world where, where high schools, there's so many high schools that have ham radio clubs and it's like a competition, like ham radio i don't i don't even know what it would be like high school club ham radio day it's like a contest where you try and make as many contacts as you can with high school ham radio have, clubs it would be amazing have poda month have dxcc month or whatever yeah that'd be amazing yeah, yeah. And, and you know we have the school club roundup right now sure but it's the of only contest yeah. that is specific for schools and it only happens twice a year and so i've got a whole bunch of kids that want to do these contests but it's like uh, okay we just did it in february now you've got to wait until october again but like, it's like the best part about ham radio is that you could just spearhead a, an idea for an event you could do a poda event it would be like so here's the high school poda day and it's just a saturday i i I don't know, pick close to like the end of the year where the kids are like getting a little bored. They're getting a little antsy. You're like, okay, we're doing it in, I don't know, April, May, May, do it in May. And then it's just one weekend is, is POTA weekend for high school kids, all high school clubs. And you're just trying to see who can get the most points. That'd be amazing. My kids would be all in for that. It take it takes one, right? You guys, obviously, you've proven yourself, Drew, to be the one that is willing to say, like, we're going to do this. If you're down, follow us. We're doing it. Like, that That would be awesome. Uh, there was a comment. Go ahead, comment. Yeah, so before you guys got on, uh, we were talking. This is n 0 uh, I'm in a middle school and run a middle school radio club here in Missouri, southwest Missouri. Um, and Drew, you're going to have an email for me that I sent you during the live chat um, that I'd love for you to respond to later on when you get time. <clears throat> but one of the things we were talking about before you guys got here is um, we just put in some DMR stuff at our school, hoping to get uh, a talk group built for um, just school clubs to be able to communicate what we're doing and what we like to do and link these activities together um, as a way for us to communicate and talk. There's a lot of school clubs out there. And when we were starting ours, this is our first year. Um, I dealt with Joe at the Big Apple schools. Um, I've talked to three or four different schools on the East Coast about, you know, what they do and what we do and how can we get together and what can we do together to make things happen. Like you said, Drew, we just did Winter Field Day and it was a great event. Kids made 500 contacts. It was a lot of fun. And now they're like, well, what's next? Well, we don't really have much until the next school roundup or summer field day we could get together over the summer but um i would love to be able to have some sort of a system where school clubs whether it's high school middle school whatever um can get together and kind of decide these things and i'm i'm with you josh uh, nobody's going to build it for us we got to do it so uh, that's kind of why i'm here there you go right on i uh, yeah i 100 percent agree with that i mean you know whether it's dmr or it's, you know, Echo Link or however, you know, whatever we would use. Like, I'm all in because if the kids can see other students in other places doing it, then it will help them to feel like they're not an island. Because, again, most of my students, what they see as being other people in amateur radio are folks that have a lot of experience under their belt, right? <laughs> like, they. They're, they're 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 a touch on the older side of things mm -hmm. and so i think that there is that general thought process maybe not expressed but is hey wait a second why is it that we're not seeing other kids like us and so that's why the school club roundup is so incredibly important and the field day or having other schools having a way to be able to interact with other schools directly so yes yes and yes please I love it. Well, guys, I'm a kid who uh, 
who um, really struggled. Um, it took me until 62 years old to get my foundation license. So if I can get it at 62, um, maybe I can serve hope for the rest of the kids that are struggling. They just got to do it. And we just need to support them. Uh, but I, but I, I, I think, um, I think it deserves repeating, and I'm actually going to continue to repeat it as much as I can for people that are going to listen. I think Drew was very honest in that, like he said, "Hey, look, this is a direction we can go, and I may not be the Elmer for this, but we'll walk this road together because I'm also passionate about this. I also want to learn this, and I think that that is a, I think that is a." a different way of doing things that a lot of folks, particularly Elmers who would call themselves an Elmer in amateur radio, isn't really necessarily willing to do. You'll, you'll find an Elmer who like that. They're very skilled in a certain area, but they may not be willing to take that off ramp into an area of ham radio that they're totally unfamiliar with and, and treat it like just a, a learning process for themselves as well. So I, I do want to reiterate again how unique uh, the environment of learning is in, in Drew's school. And I want to encourage more people to think about that for their home clubs, for, you know, whatever they're doing in amateur radio is that like there it is so such a broad hobby. There's so many different roads we can go down, but if we do it together, right, the learning gets spread out and we all learn a little bit more from it. But you kind of have to do that to bring people on board with you, right? I think that's kind of the point I'm trying to make. So I'll jump in there and just say, you yeah. know, yeah. there's two two parts to that, right? Like, if you have the skills to teach, right, but you're not a teacher, if you have the patience and the understanding and the the, na the natural skill set to teach, and, and you can be an Elmer to a larger group of people in the sense of like a school or you know whatever, uh, then awesome. Then do that right because having the ability to teach and having the patience to teach, especially squirrely you know seventh and eighth graders or you know moody ninth graders, however that might be, right like. Awesome, wonderful. But if your skill set is much more um, nuanced in the sense of like you really know your stuff or you're just really passionate about your stuff and you're willing to communicate that to the, the adult, the teacher of those kids, then do that. Like You don't have to be everything to everyone all the time. You can be that person for the teacher, right? Just right. be that person that comes alongside the teacher and assists them. I mean, that's what a lot of the guys do for us in our local club. Like, they help me to be able to help the kids. They help Alan and Elaine to be able to help the kids. They're not directly working with the kids, at least not most of them, you know, on a regular basis. Right. They're helping us so we can help the kids. I, more often than not, they're like, I don't know how you guys ever work with these kids. They're so squirrely. But, like... And that's fine. But that's we not their job, their right? Job, right? <laughs> right, exactly. And, and, and I don't need them to do that. I don't need them to be there every single day. What I need is, okay, wait a second. How do we actually, you know, how do we actually deal with this really specific nuanced problem of X, Y, Z? Help mm -hmm. me with that because I have no experience with that. I have no uh, experience, yeah. you know, putting the, the LMR 600 ends onto the coax, right? Like I don't, I've never done it. Like I can figure it out, but I'm going to bungle it up a whole bunch of times. It'd be really nice if somebody just helped me through that process and then I can show the kids. Yeah. So, yeah. Be that if you can. And then I think it was David that had said, um, you know, that like he, he or somebody would said that they that they had struggled. Right. Like they were the struggling learner and it took them a long time to get their license. What I would say is that there's a lot of kids that fit into that category. And what we do for them is incredibly nuanced and specific. Right. Because. They have the intelligence and they have the capability. They can do it. It's not a matter of intelligence. It's not a matter of capability. It is purely a matter of figuring out what the strategy is to be able to work through the, the content in a meaningful way for them. Interesting. And Interesting. 
I, I mean, I see this all the time because we have, um, we have a lot of unique learners, right? Like we've got a lot of kids and, you know, if you're throwing around the terminology or whatever, like that the have, you know, learning disabilities, right? And so, you know, you hand them a book and they're never, they're not going to have any clue as to what any of this stuff means and nor should they. Right. How many of us come to ninth grade or seventh grade with a background in, you know, electronics theory? Like, like, no, that's, that's not normal. Of course not. Why would you expect right? that? It's right. impossible to expect that. That would be naive to do that. But then add on top of it, you know, if they have a difficulty comprehending what they're reading in the first place, even if they are on grade level, they still struggle with that. Mm -hmm. So the way that we approach those students is to be different. But we know that. Like, that's common knowledge. That's education right. today. We know how to do that differently. We just have to make a choice to do it. So I'm going to piggyback on that. Uh, Sean Sullivan sends a super chat. What does this do? Well, it sends $4.99. Thank you so much for sending that. So something I didn't ask, and uh, I, I think this is a perfect time to dive into it a little bit if you if you're if you're willing, or you know if it if it's uh, you know if you if you've experienced this, failure to me has been my greatest teacher. Uh, whether it's doing YouTube videos or these live streams, I failed so many times. Or ham radio failed so many times. Software engineering failed so many times, countless number of times. Failure is my teacher. And I sometimes think that when you talk about amateur radio in terms of like a club or like an Elmer situation, they're almost allergic to the concept of letting someone fail. So in your experience, Drew, with the, with the kids that you're teaching, you give them so much latitude. How much is failure guiding their hand, if you will? All right. So I'm laughing over here because we, uh, so I have said this over and over again with my students and my colleagues. If we are not failing, we are doing something wrong. Oh, I love and, it. Okay. And, <laughs> It's it's hysterical because, you know, when when you see the rocket go up and then it explodes. Right. And, you know, that was a 20 million or 70 million dollar rocket that just went up there and just exploded. But the the you know, the mission control is going nuts and they're so thrilled that it made it up for for 45 seconds before exploding. Right. Like. Yes, we need to learn from our mistakes and our yeah. failures. And we need to try and we need to be okay with all of that. And so like we had a we had a spectacular fail um, back in June of 2023. We were doing a, a weather balloon launch, right? And we had everything prepped out, set, ready to go. And it was like we had, you know, the school came out to, you know, to to see the launch, right? And then Ready? Like three, two, one, right? And then like, they, the kids let the balloon go. And then you see it just snap. The line that's attached from the balloon to the payload just snaps. And the payload falls down and the balloon goes up. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the, you, you're, you, you know, and like that like moment of, oh, and. The, the the great part about it though was like immediately immediately we said like look guys here's what we get to learn from this and immediately the kids went right back into the room they started dissecting the video footage of the whole event and, you know they could identify where the the point of failure occurred they uh, you know were looking like again like okay now let's talk about the tensile strength of this particular you know cordage and let's talk about you know this other you know connection point and why did this fail here how did it rip through the box at this particular point why did yes. it do what it did and and honestly, it was one of the best events we've ever had because it pushed them to be ready to go in three weeks time for another launch. And they had so much more confidence in their build and what they had done. Oh, and they had awesome. tested it so many more times. And so that failure was so, so, so valuable. But it's not just the only one. It's the little failures along the way. If anybody has, if anybody has, has ever tried to do um, NOAA goes weather satellite um, downloads. I have, like the yes. Yeah. The images, right? And you're trying to do it using uh, like Raspbian, and you're trying to do the. Uh, oh, I didn't do that. I did the Windows application. Oh so. my goodness, that thing yeah. is so fraught with complications. It's so old. It's so old. It, yeah, 
it, yeah. yeah, it is. It is rough, yeah. real rough. Yeah. Um, you know, but but like seeing the kids struggle through the Raspberry Pi and struggle through the Linux program or the the Linux uh, command line, right? But you know what? Every single day that they don't get it right is just an encouragement that they have identified something else that hasn't worked and they're going to find the thing eventually that does. So did so, you just it, you just threw them like blind into Linux? Did any of them have experience with Linux and they just they just flew to it like not a single one had any experience with wow. it. We old turkey straight into it and loving every single second of it. Wow. I I'm telling you I'm telling you guys I'm I'm not kidding when I say if if I could have gone like when people say like time traveler stuff, like what would you what would you say to a younger you? I'd I'd give my younger me a Raspberry Pi and and the the backup files, you know, the images for it. I, I I'm telling you, it is it is such a valuable tool for education. How 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 much do you leverage the Raspberry Pi in what you do? Okay, so we have used it for APRS uh, with Dire Wolf. We have used it for um, it was the it was the backbone of our sensor payload or part of our sensor payload for uh, one of our weather balloon launches. It was the uh, video generation like a through a, like an Ardu cam that was connected to the Raspberry Pi that was then uh, put out to the RF modulator for the live ATV the amateur TV video feed that was being sent out from that balloon. Um, we have used it for NOAA GOES weather satellite imagery. We've used it for um, the Sparky kit from Eris uh, for just uh, general SDR work. Um, I think so that's... It's, it's, like the, it's like the Swiss Army knife of no. like technology because there's so many things you can interface it with. Uh, have exactly. you dipped into like the GPIO pins or anything like that? Um, so I have a student right now that is doing that exact thing. Um, and so traditionally, we've done most of our I.O. through our, uh, Arduino, like all of the sensor data, all of that kind of stuff. All of that has been traditionally done that way. But we want to move towards a more streamlined um complete command and control system for future uh, weather balloon or high altitude balloon payloads. And the, the Raspberry Pi is where it's at for that. And so oh, that's awesome. they're diving into that right now. So smooth move awards for the day. Have the best learning curve. Well, thank you, Dwight. I appreciate you uh, supporting the, uh, the show and everything you're doing out there. So yeah. By the way, guys, we're going to have Drew back definitely because there's, <laughs> there's no way that we could like I, I was telling him after the show, I was like, how do we bottle this energy and give it to all the teachers everywhere? But I, I think he's right that like there has to be a cart with a, you know, a wagon cart that has to pave a road. And, and, and Drew would be the first person to say that he is one of many that is paving a road, which is true. But once we do that and we can actually show the path for other educators it will be so much easier and it will it will spread that knowledge quickly but you know drew drew is inside you got insider information here so so really the question and and drew this is this is another question to you i have seen so i'll give you some of my background there was a time back in 1998 at the boom of yo-yos do you remember when yo-yos were a thing in 1998 i was calling schools offering a free yo-yo show, right? This is my job. This is literally what I did in 1998. And uh, we had professionals that would come out and do a whole yo-yo expedition, you know, at, not exp exposition, and show this whole thing off. And you'd be, you'd be amazed at how even free entertainment that could be like a lunchtime thing or whatever uh, at elementary schools was met with just hanging up the phone, I will not talk to you, blah, blah, blah. So I know that on my end of dumb yo-yo things, in comparison, when you, when someone like an educator or someone that's ham radio knowledge tries to reach out, they're often rebuked. Like, no, we, we, we will not talk to you. We will not, you know, d discuss any of this with you. So I think the question is, you already talked about this. Drew, how does someone that's ham radio knowledgeable actually get inside? And and you talked about like reach out to the Boy Scouts clubs, you know, blah blah blah. But is there another way or any other ways you can think of? So, 
it's uh, tough, right? Course, right? Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It's it's really, really tough. Um, I mean, I, I would say the first thing is leverage any contacts that you already have. That's step one, right? Sure. And step sure. two is uh, if you have no contacts, then don't be afraid of cold calling, right? Don't be afraid of just reaching out and offering. Don't be afraid of the rejection either. Don't be surprised by that rejection or the complete absence of a response. Uh, that's yeah, totally, not, totally. Yeah, right, that's, that's, a, that's part of the process, right? Like whoever it is that you're reaching out to, they might be like, mm, I don't know who this person is and I've never even heard of this thing and isn't that the, what the old people do and like I don't want to have anything to do with that. I'm, I'm too busy with X, Y, Z things right like, right yeah and that's fine nothing wrong with any of that um the third thing though would be to reach out to again steve good game find who is doing it in the area there are schools around right like so just on this one call you know jaron is here you know and he's doing his awesome thing uh down in joplin right and so like there are people in pennsylvania and in missouri and in california and all over the place so ask steve who those people are, mm -hmm. reach out to them, ask them if they need support and or if they know of a school that needs support. Because if that teacher or that person at that, that advisor at that school says, hey, look, the school next to us is trying to get started. They don't have a club call sign yet. They don't know, you know, they don't have a radio set, set up yet, but they're just starting to get, you know, they're just trying to get started. Then yeah. you might be able to be that person for that school. Yeah, that, so that's a really good point. Everybody remember, and by the way, I think there was also a universal consensus that, you know, teachers don't get taken care of enough in, in all the things they do and, and educators in general. You have to understand that, like, they're so busy, right? There's there's so many avenues that they can spend their time and, and all those free hours, they could pour that into any number of things they're already obligated to do. So you kind of have to make it easy, right? And so if you think about like what Steve has done, Steve Goodgame, K6A uh, K5ATA. Use use that capability. Steve is some is an amazing communicator. He's available on the internet. He's pretty much everywhere. Reach out to Steve and say like, "Hey, I'm in this area and, you know, you may not need me, but I'm available if you do need me." God, I I love that, Drew. That's a great idea. That's a fantastic idea. I know Steve's not watching right now, so we're just signing. Steve's gonna wake up in the morning. He's gonna have all these like Elmers, like, "Hey, Steve, I don't know. I'm I'm in I'm in Salem. Let 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 let's get something going. Let me know if you need anything." Right? Just I I love that concept. Blow up Steve's yeah. blow up Steve's inbox. Let's let's blow up Steve's inbox. Let's uh, make that a trending hashtag. <laughs> Josh, not to uh, not to just steal and piggyback off of you, but I was watching the live stream, and when uh, Drew said he has three people helping with this club, I was like, God, that'd be nice. I have anywhere from 15 to 20 kids running solo, and some days I don't look forward to going to radio club. Well, okay, well, where are you at? Where, where are you located? Maybe maybe we got somebody that can reach out to you in the Discord. You need more uh, help? Joplin, Joplin, Missouri, and our club has been really good. Yeah, um, at helping at times, but we have two or three that really help a lot. Like when we did Winter Field Day, I had three club members for six students, and it was awesome. It worked really well. Yeah. I was able to put a person on each transmitter with two students, and life was great. But there's a lot of days like I'm listening to Drew talk about how they're kind of project based learning on their own. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I have to monitor, and the radio room is in one spot, and it's only about an eight by eight closet. And then we're building antennas in my classroom and like running back and forth between the two to make sure everything's okay. Um, yeah, just time and being able to help answer questions is awesome. Oh, it, the, the, the time aspects is insane. Drew, go ahead. Are you going to say something? Go yeah. Ahead. Jaren, Jaren, like I, I hear you loud and clearly. Like it is you, you, the reality that you are living is um, very, very difficult, and it is, it is what I experience too. So there are three of us. Um, two of us are there for m almost every meeting, uh, so that way that we always have a little bit of backup. Uh, you know, any given time, one of us is on the roof, um, and with 30 kids, yeah, it's it is really, really hectic in there. Uh, you know, I, I've got kids that are asking me about the the Linux command line, you know, you know, pseudo grep, like all of that stuff, and then moments later, I'm you know trying to, uh, you know, help 
think through what's going on with the radio astronomy, you know, average IF of the, you know, um, you know, hydrogen line thing that's going on. Like it's it's all over the map, which is really really tough for us. That's kind of really was, difficult. We, it is. It is. But, you know, what I what I will say is this. In your district, do you have a gifted coordinator? That's actually a question. Uh, not really. They are pretty much phasing gifted out of our schools, which is really unfortunate because I was one of those kids. But that's kind of where we're So you don't have a gifted teacher at all? Um, I think there is in the elementary level, but not in middle school or high school. Uh, I'd have to look and see who that person is. So uh, Elaine, who is uh, one of ours, KC3SFY, I think is her call. Um, she is our gifted teacher for the entire district. And so most of her time is spent at the elementary schools. And but she is able to make the time to come up to the high school and junior high to be able to be there after school for for our club probably about half of the time. Um, and having her is, you know, hugely beneficial because it's also provides a, a streamline point for kids in the, you know, K to six that are coming up to us eventually. Um, what I would say is, you know, look to see who else is on the peripheral. Like, who is the person, like, the the art teacher? Like, we have had a lot of support from our art teachers. Um, our art teachers are honestly our biggest gamers. And our biggest are they? gamers... <laughs> yes, they are. I love are. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. And so... Um, you know, between our art teachers and then our uh, STEAM teachers, like, it, it's sometimes it's the people that we don't think about. We've had a lot of uh, outreach from our English teachers uh -huh. because of the, like, the creativity side of all of this and the, you know, the dreamers need to dream kind of side of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's people, like, I, 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 that's that's... It, it just took me a while to find them. That was that was my initial struggle. Man. Yeah, and I, I think part of it is just being an infancy. I mean, our club's been in operation for, what, six months now? Um, and I, the thing I tell myself is you're building something, right? It's the same thing you talk about, always being productive and building to what's tomorrow. Um, and I'm sure as time goes on and more students are involved, more teachers will also be curious and want to join and figure out things as well. Um, because those people are out there. I mean, we've all ran into somebody that we didn't know was a ham um, and you sparked the conversation and that's going to happen. Um, and our, our local club is getting younger as well. Um, we've already mentioned this year that um, our club is set up so anyone who goes to high school where there isn't a club can come back to middle school um, in our after school program and support those that are younger than them. Um, so we're trying to build that kind of fostership as well. So the other, uh, you know, advice, if that's even a good word, which I, I, I struggle with here from my it experience. Is, it is. I mean, again, Drew, don't sell yourself short. You're doing a lot, man. Feel free to to say it's advice it's it's good uh, it's good stuff well, well jaren like you're 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 six months into it like and you've got things going on which if you're six months in and you've got stuff going on awesome like you're you're just beginning that journey i have five years in with amateur radio and i've got eight years in with kids and doing stuff I think one of the biggest things that has been beneficial for me and for my students is that we are not amateur radio exclusive. That is, we are we are not beholden to amateur radio. Oh, amateur radio I didn't know that. Is, is it like a STEM thing, or what would you call yeah, it? So, so, so ours is called the uh, the Advanced Technologies Group. So that's our that's the name of our club, right? Oh, the I Advanced Technologies Group. I love good and name. Good we, name. We are anything and everything that is, quote unquote, advanced technology. Right. And so whether that's programming for the Oculus or it is, you know, the astrophotography or it is, you know, whatever radio star, it doesn't matter. Love it. Like we are we are anything and everything. The, the reality of it is, is that when you start to look at really big projects, things that kids are really interested in and I'm seeing from the tagline of your uh, 
of your email that you sent to me that you're an earth and space science teacher. Kids love space, right? They, you know this. They love it. It's a huge hook. And everything that we can do with space uses radio. Yes. Like everything that we yes. can do with space connects back to radio. So you can call it a radio club, but then the focus is on the radio. If you call it it's something gen generic like the advanced technologies group then you let them be whoever they are and they can love space or they can love like i've got one kiddo that uh, so all smart. he wants to do is make live streaming things become better like he just wants live streaming to be the best that it can be which is awesome because he has i a love home this with kid <laughs> it's guy right. make yeah. it make my live stream better <laughs> right like and, and i mean like that's what he does but we need him we do to be able to to do the other stuff. And so the focus is not radio, but the focus, it, radio gets used to, in everything that we yeah. do. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know, but I would say keep those options open and, you know, let your, let the kids drive what it is. I, I personally don't feel like a focal point of amateur radio outright is the way to go just because it narrows the vision and i think you're right kids think i think you're right i, I totally agree tool. it's the tool go ahead jared are you gonna say something i hear you yeah i hear you um we also do a makerspace program after school as well um and esports and some other things like that so we are incorporating stem in a variety of ways um, I realize that the radio kind of pigeonholes me in, but I think there's opportunities to collaborate those groups together as well um, for the overall kind of advanced technology side. Yeah, but I like the branding that Drew's talking about, right? So it, it's not... Um... So hear me out, right? Everything Drew's saying is 100% accurate, that radio is still going to be the background, the baseband, if you will, of all of this. Branding yourself as advanced technologies or the STEM club or whatever, there's so many aspects of that that are like perfect. It's, it, 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 they line up like peas and carrots. It goes together perfectly, right? Like I, I, I love that. And we didn't talk about that uh, on the, the live stream, but I, I think you're right, Drew. I, I think that sometimes, even though our hobby is immensely large, it's still kind of like a sandbox that you have to play in versus if you open it up to just be like, what is possible? What can we do here? That now you even start dipping into like the hacking aspect of it. And hacking can be a good thing of just understanding how things work in, in the technologies around you. And that all leads back to radio generally. It always does end up leading back to radio. I, I love that. I, I think that's I think that's uh, the way it has to be. So Corpse a lot, my friend Corpse a lot. Thanks again for the super chat, man. You don't have to do that, but uh, thanks so much. I appreciate it, and I, I'm I, I'm glad you're hanging out with us. So take it easy, bud. Yeah, right on. Good stuff. Uh, have you have you done, have you done that? Uh, so here here's this could be this could be. I don't know how do we approach this. Have you have you dipped into the world of hacking at all, Drew? Like in that discussion of like hacking in the right in the in the good way of like let's just figure out how this works. Let's see if see if we can like peel back the onion, if you will. Uh, so like we have we have not done like white hat hacking yeah. Um, yeah. directly. You're just um, all black hat. Yeah. Just kids out there, <laughs> just black exactly hat hacking. Yeah, yeah they're just all just like DDoS like everybody. You know, license step two dark web. Like <laughs> no. Um, one of the things that we do is we try and break things down as much as possible. Good. Um, Good. You know, and demystifying a lot of it. And so, you know, as the kids start to figure something out, you know, the questions that we will ask them as the adults are, okay, yes, but how? Or yes, but why? How, why does that work yes. that way? How does Good. that work that way? Yes, yes. And so most of the time, we don't know the answer to it ourselves, but we expect them to be able to communicate that to us in some way, in some way that we can understand it. And so we don't usually let them off the hook until we have an explanation that is at least somewhat logical enough for us to be able to process it. So, you know, whether it's the Noah goes or it's the, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Okay, what step are you on? 
how did you get to this step? Why are you using that command? Why are you using that program? Why are you doing that thing with this particular hardware? Why did you choose this sensor? Like, you're asking me to go out and buy this $12 sensor. Fine, I'll buy the $12 sensor. Why are you asking me for the BMP 180 sensor versus the 280? Oh, like, I love this. Like, <sighs> and so, like... I don't understand. Like I, I don't need to know it. I need to know that you have a rationale for why you're doing it. And sometimes it's well, I don't know that, and that's fine. Like you don't know it yet. You made a choice. Did you intuit that choice, or are you doing it because you saw it on somebody else's list that that's what they used? And if that's the case, then that's okay. But why did they choose that thing? Is there another choice? Have you compared it against anything else? Or you know, how does this thing like? Okay, again, the difference between why are we using the Raspberry Pi versus the Arduino? Where does this? the uno shine as opposed to the the mini or the pico or the you know like whatever version we're talking about um the raspberry pi whatever the, the w0 or whatever right like the add a fruit feather or the you know it doesn't matter like what is your logic for choosing this thing so no we're not hacking per se but yes we do try and delve into the deeper side of why is that hardware doing the thing that it's doing? Why are you yeah. making the choices that you're that you are for that particular piece of hardware? Uh, okay, I, I have to get to the bottom of this. Drew, who is an engineer in your family? Who is it? No one, not a single it, person. Every single thing you said is literally how I approach when I talk to people that are on my team about engineering questions like this. It is literally exactly what you said. Like, yeah. No. What, no, I don't know how you that. I don't know how you came to these viewpoints or intuited this, but this is literally like no question. Every conversation I've had when things go this way, when when I'm in charge of a budget or schedule or I'm a manager or whatever, it's literally like some we have a an insurmountable problem where no one has done this before. Or they might have done it, but like if we modified the code a little bit, it'll work, blah, blah, blah. And we need to buy something. And it, literally everything you just said, everything you said is is what we do in engineering in everyday situations all the time. It, 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 it's fat. I don't know how, like, again, I don't know how you got here. I'm, I'm fascinated to know this because it's like we need more people to approach learning this way. So it's I'm I'm fascinated. Do you have an answer for that? I, I'd love to hear it. I, I mean, I don't truly. I don't. Um, it 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 ha it's it is who I am. I don't know why. And I, I've I've that's not, amazing. I, I I don't I don't know that. I'm sure that there's a lot of great people and teachers that have helped me along the way to get to this point. But sure. I think part of it part of it for me, and I think that Jaron and others can probably attest to this, is that at least for me. I love challenges that are too big to uh, that too big to achieve, right? Like, think, give me the biggest problem that you could possibly think of. Give me the thing that no one else is willing to do. Give me the thing that is you don't think that a school could possibly do, and that's what we're going to do. Like, that's our goal. Like, it's it's doable. Everything is doable, and in my mind, I don't know why I think like that, but like, it's all possible. We just haven't done it. You just haven't. We just haven't proven ourselves yet. And I'm, I don't know that that's a good take on things or not. But that's a fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's the best take. Uh, if I you ever need work in the future and you want to like dip into engineering, let me know. <laughs> I'll bring you on that's board, the, man. That's the best mindset you can have. It is. It is. It, it, it is the it. best mindset. I mean, you know, I mean, only thing that's limiting you is the actual ability to do it. You're always going to try it. No, but see, but that, but that's the right. thing, right? The, the ability to do it is it. It doesn't really matter if the entire team or or some folks of the team, they all agree in the path and they work towards that path. It, it doesn't even matter if they're the most efficient at walking that path. It just that they're doing it together and they can communicate and make improvements and changes as they go. That is it, it, like if you could if you can condense down a successful engineering team in my eyes it is always comes down to how well do they communicate? How well can they forecast ideas that they want to achieve? Whether or not they hit those ideas on the on the timeline they expected 
And then the third one be how close are they are to cost? Like that only comes over time as they get better at doing it. Everything you're doing, like the kids that are coming, like, by the way, like this is a total side note. You mentioned like two of your two or three of your kids are graduates and they all went into engineering. I am not surprised. And I think they have a huge leg up on the competition. If, if anything you've talked about today is like what they could walk into business doing that, that is they're going to have a huge leg up. It's, it's going to be very impressive. So good on you for that, man. That's amazing. Well, you know, them walking into college or into a business is is them, right? Like, sure, I, I can't. That's the thing. I can't. You know, it's it's. I, I appreciate the the um, <laughs> the the endorsement. However, like, I can't walk into an engineering situation and be able to hold my own. Like, I, you might I, be I surprised. <laughs> you like, might be surprised I, from what I've heard from you so far. You might be surprised. Well, well, I guess I what I always take to the kids is that. I don't have the knowledge to do that thing, but I have the capability of getting the knowledge to do that thing. That's it's not it's not a, a it's not an inherent difficulty. It's not an inherent uh, barrier that I have to get over. It is yeah. just a knowledge barrier or a skill barrier. And those things aren't really barriers. They're just a deficit. I just have to learn the things. That's not a problem. I just have to learn it. I just have to get access to the information, process the information, and then be able to, you know, get experiential understanding with it. And for the kids, it's the same way. I, I don't need to teach them this. I don't need to know it in order to teach them this. They need to be able to have access to it and then to be able to have somebody to be able to bounce ideas off of, have a sounding board, have a team of people to be able to help them when they get stuck and they don't know that like, oh, well, there's this really great Reddit sub thread that they could start posting questions to and ask for some help or this stack exchange or this whatever to be able to get some assistance because those are the people that do understand it. And hey, did you reach out to the the author of that Instructables post, or did you reach out to the the creator of that GitHub GitHub, um, you know, coding like code like whatever it is? They just don't have that background to be able to do that quite yet. They they don't they don't know that it's okay. It's it's okay to call to call those people to ask them, send them the email. They maybe they respond, maybe they don't, but it's fine to reach out. Chances are those people are happy to be able to help and answer questions. But for me, yeah. No man, you, you got the right mentality for engineering straight up. <laughs> like that is that is everything you just said is is being an engineer. It really is. Like that is like textbook core basic basic stuff like that is like you 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 fall upon that when you don't know the knowledge you fall upon those ideas that you just said and those are the things you're teaching your kids that is so valuable so valuable at that age that's crazy valuable kudos again man that's just stellar you know what wait uh k6ark adam dive in on this back me up on this are you there are you on mic Oh, I hope he's on mic. I am here. Did you hear all that, man? <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm, oh, no. Uh, chatting oh, no. with Ara and looking for a Sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I needed, I, needed, a, I needed another professional uh, engineer to back me up on this one. For... Hey, Josh. Yeah. This this. This so, Heath, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, so, so I'll you, back you up on no, it. Go, <laughs> well, let, let Heath go, and then we'll go to Adam. Go ahead, Heath, man. Go for it. Yeah, I mean... What you described was exactly what we do every day. And, yeah, straight uh, up. And software engineering and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, I don't know everything. I can't know everything. I have to go find, like, 90% of my job is finding the answer to something. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's it's that's that's what you do all day. <laughs> Literally, so many people in the chat Absolutely. are backing me up right now in the statement that you're making. Dude, uh, <laughs> true. You're... <laughs> You no, you are equipping sorry, these children. I, I didn't realize that was, that was still the didn't realize that was still the the, the focus. Oh yeah, um, no, we've been talking yeah, for a while. I, I agree a hundred percent, hundred percent on all that. It's uh, and I I have often argued that uh, getting an engineering degree doesn't really teach you a whole lot about. Uh, anything unless you you really get into uh, or you you go. 
far enough to to get a master's or a PhD in something, then you, then you really learn the the details about something. But a, a bachelor's degree in engineering, and even even potentially a master's degree, is is just showing that you know how to to solve problems, and yeah. and that's what it's all about. Man, true. Again, fantastic. Well, as far as engineering, really the only good thing a degree will give you is, you know, the ability to prove to your employer that you, you're good with deadlines. But, and that, you know, a lot of engineering students aren't very good at that to begin with. <laughs> and that's obviously an engineer because he's talking to you from inside a wind tunnel. <laughs> where, where are you at, man? Out here in the prairies. <laughs> you got some major wind going on. Uh, all right, man. I think this... Drew is an engineer. I think he I, is. I think Drew's an engineer. He just doesn't know it. He doesn't know it yet. Yeah, he doesn't know it yet. Uh, everything, like, you're literally an engineering manager. Like, no question. The, the the way you're approaching these kids is equipping them. It's it's so valuable what you're doing. And then, again, like, how do we bottle this, right? That That's the thing is, like, Drew, you said you just intuited this. And, and how, how do I teach how, how a how do I teach a, teach a, teach a teacher to, to do what you do? Like how how would you do that? Would you even be able to do that? I so part of what I do is I work with the teachers, right? Like that's I, that's my that's my job as the as an assistant principal, right? Like yeah. I'm not I'm not teaching content all day long, right? Like that's not my thing. Um you know, it's ha as an assistant principal, like, and that's part of what I love. That's part of why I got into administration in the first place was because I love working with teachers. I love to be able to help the teachers to be able to do things differently and to be able to find their voice and find their passion and to be able to, you know, transfer what they're passionate about. And so, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess what I always come back to is that if if the teacher is not loving what they're doing, then the kids are not loving what they're learning, right? Like, 100%. and so yeah. it, it has to start there. And it's hard for me to go into that after school group and not just love every single second of it. Don't get me wrong. Jaren is, Jaren's experience is my experience. It is super frustrating at times. And I have absolutely overwhelmed at times by it. Um, but it, it is that love that is born from adversity, right? Like it is such a struggle, but it is so worth it because in the end, whether it's the teacher or it's the student, the gain is there. And that gain is, gain for the future. And so whether it's, again, whether they go into engineering or not, they're going to take those skills with them into anything and everything. Because you're not going to unlearn how to think critically. You're not going to unlearn how to problem solve. And so I, I don't know. I just, it's just, I don't know. It's, it's what we do. I don't know. Man. Again, we're going to have to have Drew come back for another show. <laughs> question. Think... Go ahead, question. Drew, who is your favorite teacher? Okay. Well, that's a tough one. Uh, I've got three that come to immediately to mind. Uh, seventh grade Penny martin uh, special uh, social studies teacher, um, when she was like, yeah, you don't really need to do this. Why don't you go to the library and uh, do like an independent assignment? And so I went to the library and I had my handheld uh, CB and uh, my friend Dustin and I, <laughs> we, uh, we talked to truckers from the library with the handheld CB and uh, we busted out that report and that, that presentation uh, in record time uh, the night before. That was one, but I genuinely really, really appreciated her just because she did genuinely see that we were doing things differently. We thought about things differently. Uh, second person would be my physics teacher who, when he heard that I really wanted to do underwater bumper cars as a project, and I wasn't just theoretical about it, like I really wanted to make underwater bumper cars. Uh, and he was like, yeah, go for it. And we did it and we put them in the pool and that was hysterical, but like he was completely supportive of that. Um, and then my AP English teacher, um, she was fantastic. She was like hardcore, no technology at all. She was like, you need to be able to read and rip this thing apart over and over and over again. And she was like, you don't need to look up anything. You need to use your brain and just dissect this thing, explicate the heck out of this thing. And, you know, 
do your best to analyze it with the information that you already have. And so from her, I, I really gained a, a very valuable insight. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of others like, uh, you know, I, I could think of Wayne Appleton, who was my, you know, uh, my guide for, uh, a lot of things, technology, uh, uh, <laughs> there was the, the, tech director for the school district who was fantastic with me from fifth grade, sixth grade on, uh, when we set up and I told Josh this earlier, like a token ring network when yeah. I was in like seventh grade and we were doing that and playing, uh, Duke Nukem over the, the network. Like, I don't know. I've had a lot of really good teachers in my time, man. Yeah. It's, who That's was it? James right there. Go ahead. Say that again. That's why he is the way he is right there. Yeah, I, I think it, I, I think you're right. So nobody nobody gets to where they are as an adult if it isn't based off of things that they've experienced as a as a younger person and older humans that have educated them about humanity. Right. And so if you are given lots of latitude to explore as a younger person, you're going to learn a ton more than other people, right? Whether that's in the boundaries of safety or not, I know tons of smart, really smart people who are dangerous with everything they know, right? Um, but that that's, oh man, Drew, this, this has just been fantastic. I, I really do appreciate you hanging out. But I do need to take a moment, so feel free to hang out as long as you can, Drew. If you got to hop out at any time, just go ahead and mention in the chat or, or yell out. I want to say hi to our YouTube friends. Every week, you know, anybody who does YouTube videos or anything like that, I like to give a shout out to them. And I know we got a number of them here now. And I'm also trying to work FT8 in the background. So I want to give a shout out to some of our friends. So Chase, I think you are definitely first because you're right at the top. Are you you on mic, man? You're, you're always the you're, first. You're... So we're, we're always testing out your mic situation. So how are you doing today? I'm good, man. I think my mic's working tonight. It is fantastic. How you been, man? Good, man. Good. Just uh, hanging out and did not have time to do a video this week, but uh, did do a live stream, tried to play around with it, slow scan TV working, and uh, finally got it to work yesterday and made my first slow scan TV contact. Uh, what what, what band you make it on? On 20, I think. Nice. There you go. Very good. Congratulations. Yeah, super That's fun it. to play around with it. Did you did you have different images for your QSO? Like when you, you reply back with the signal report, did you do that whole thing? So not for that first QSO, actually. I had just like the white background and then like some text, the mm -hmm. like default text for MMSSTV or whatever that program's called. Right on, man. Well, thank you for hanging out. And uh, if you need to say anything, hop in. Frank, yeah, I think Frank. you're next. Frank, how you doing, man? Uh, good evening, Josh and everyone. Not much going on over here. Uh, lots of video still being edited, but uh, so March, April, and May, I'll be dropping a lot of fun stuff. And uh, I, I think I've turned a lot of people on to slow scan TV, Chase being one of them from the sounds of it. Uh, I definitely am enjoying my bit of slow scan TV, and I'm still trying to make one contact a day for a week on 10 and 15 meters. It's lots of fun there. I was on 10 meters today, Chase and Poda, and I made a couple of DX contacts on 10 meters. I think I made uh, Serbia. Serbia I did today before the live stream on 10 meters, which is just, whoo, that was amazing. I was on, on single sideband. A lot of fun. That not even fantastic. Not even on amp, just 100 watts barefoot. 10 meters, single sideband, amazing right now. I'm telling you, guys, wake up tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., and start rolling in those DX. It's going to be really good. All right. Oh, yeah, 9 a.m., your local time, 10 meters rocks. All right, there you go. Yeah, so I'm 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 using. By the way, Frank has been a fantastic uh, live stream producer. So I think next is Tim. Tim, how you doing, man? Uh, he's out of here. He, oh, he, he did. Out of he here a while ago. <laughs> so a a Adam's next. Adam's next. Go ahead, Adam. How you been, man? I'm good. I uh, I took the KH1 out for a maiden voyage today. 
uh, went out to the Palm Springs aerial tramway and took the first tram up uh, with my buddy from the mountain rescue team, and we skied up to the summit. Um, had a good adventure <laughs> using ski crampons for the first time, and my buddy, who I went with, is a much more competent skier than I. He's uh, he he learned to ski on the I, I think in Vermont, and is just used to horrible icy conditions. So he's just charging up this like thirty-five to forty-degree slope with ski oh, crampons my on. Ski, ski crampons are it's kind of an aluminum uh, a set of teeth that attach to alpine touring ski bindings or or what a lot of people would refer to as kind of like uh, uh, really robust uh, cross-country skis to, to go uphill and, and then you, you rip these friction devices off the bottom of the skins, you lock your heels down and you ski like regular skis. Well, you add cr these these ski crampons to him to go uh, up icy slopes. So he's he's just charging up this icy slope, and I'm following him and and just about uh, soiling my pants in the process. But we made it, and uh, I activated San Jacinto with the KH1. I um, oh. I came up with a came up with a pretty good antenna option for that for a short wire. Um, uh -huh. I built one of my kits as a four to one un un. And uh, I found that with a, a 15 foot radiator and seven and a half foot counterpoise, I could, with the internal tuner, I could get about 1.1, 1 1.2 to 1 on all bands with that. So that's so how, what I ran with. And yeah, go ahead. Give me the field report on the KH1. Do you, do you, you, how you, do, how you enjoying that? I like it. I, I think they made a significant improvement with the latest firmware on the side tone quality. The the original videos I saw, the side tone quality was just painful to listen to. And it's it's still not great, but it's better. Um functionally, I think it's it's really impressive. It's it's a, a little smaller and more compact than I even expected. Um I put a little six hundred fifty milliamp hour lithium. Uh, lithium ion 3s uh lipo pillow pack in it um for rc cars and stuff like that and i plan to put a um, USB C port on it for charging but um but yeah i'm, I'm impressed the the tuner is very capable and uh when i got the thing you know i went out in the front yard with the the stupid little whip and uh started calling cq and, and made some contacts and i was just like giggling at myself it was so much fun yeah, so does does this remind you? So I don't know how long you've been a ham, but does it, does this remind you of the last solar cycle, the high point where you could like literally put up anything and you were making contacts on it? It feels like that to me with this radio. You know, I I I wasn't really operating at the peak of the last solar cycle, so I couldn't tell you. Um, but I I really do think that uh, to some degree, people. Um, uh, overhype the solar cycle. I think you can still make great contacts even at the lull of the solar cycle. You just have to use a little bit lower bands and make sure you're in an RF quiet location because those lower bands tend to be a bit noisier. Um, but you can still work good good DX and and weak signal stuff um, even even off of the solar cycle. But you know, have, having the higher higher maximum usable frequency makes uh, makes it a little easier to get away with a, a three foot whip on a on a radio. But it, uh, it is fun. I, it is fun. It it is. Um, one little tidbit about the KH one though. I I'm pretty sure that counterpoise is actually more of the antenna than the whip is. Uh, oh yeah, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> interesting I, I i do not have enough experience with it to be able to say uh so why do you feel that way uh well it, it, it try removing it or making it smaller and see what happens <laughs> ah okay uh i but, am uh yes yeah. Go ahead, Make, go ahead. makes a big difference um and sorry I, I have horrible internet here that has massive latency and it's it's a little difficult with this stuff no but, you're good man you're um good. i did run the i did run the prototype pressure paddle today and it worked quite well i had no no issues with it um so i i uh 
if any of you are familiar with the, I think it's VK2 or VK3 IL pressure paddle that uh, was designed from, I think he got the idea from an old uh, QST article or something. Um, I kind of took that and ran with it and made a, a KH1 paddle out of it. And uh, I do plan to to get some more made of those and may have at least a limited run of, of kits. Um, antenna kits, yeah, I know, I'm behind. Uh, I'll get some more out. Patience, please. Well, yes, absolutely. We're, we're, we're very patient for the next uh, offering from K6ARK. So appreciate you, man, hanging out. Feel free to dive in with your yeah. thoughts. So there was, a, there was a question I got earlier uh, asking about uh, handheld HF radios. So the KH1 would be probably on my short list of recommendations. That, though, means that you'd have to learn Morse code. But it is a proper handheld ham radio. That's what it's designed to be. If, if it's the same person I'm thinking of, they mentioned voice not CW, and I mentioned the IC705. I mean, how much more handheld can you get? Yeah, so uh, shout out to Jason. This doesn't exist yet, and he does like to talk about radios that don't exist yet, but he made a video about it. So uh, the, the TX500MP, which is from Lab 599, would have a battery pack with a vertically aligned screen or horizontal when you're, when you're looking at it vertically. And you could treat it as an HT, if you will, although it still has a, the, the mic uh, going around. I will comment, though, and this is a really important point to make— um, there are a number of HF ham radios like the KX2, the 705 to some degree. The KX2 is probably the KX2 is the one I would I would proper properly say is a handheld HF ham radio because you can put a, a radial off the off the little nubbin, the little uh, thumb screw, and you can put a vertical on it and it has a internal microphone. Uh, sem many of the Shagus do as well. So the 6100 and the 5105 have that as well. Oh, I think somebody's literally holding it. K Kiwana has a 6100 they're holding. So there are a number of HF radios that can work as a handheld for single sideband. The thing to remember is that you, you generally have to have a counterpoise if you're going to do anything like above 10 meters. You can sometimes get away without having a 10-meter counterpoise, but um, you're, you're not going to perform as well with that. That would be, that would be my, my recommendation. And the thing to keep in mind, as you, as, you, as you operate on lower frequencies, it generally requires a longer antenna. And that longer antenna is either going to be really long and then you're going to hold it or it's going to be a wire that you like Adam was talking about. And you're going to make the contacts that way, which is the most uh, efficient way to make contacts. Or you're going to have like a long coil of wire that then has a little whip at the end. That little whip at the end with the coil is not going to be as efficient. If you think about it, it's almost like scrunching down your capabilities. It's almost attenuating those capabilities when if you're if you're going super simple on how loading works on an antenna, uh, but you can still do it. And I, I, I'll, go ahead. I've got a little, I, I've got a little, um, a 15 meter folding mag loop um, oh. that I built to directly mount to the KX2 <laughs> out in the shop that I never quite fully finished and never got it working as well as I would have liked to. But uh, with 10 meters wide open right now. You could, I mean, a 10 meter mag loop is tiny, right? It's, it's oh, like yeah, less small. than a, oh. but you could easily go less than a meter in diameter. Look at VK3YE's videos. Somebody was uh, posting about him. And uh, yeah, tiny aluminum bar stock mag loop. You could easily directly mount to a, a radio like that. And you don't need a counterpoise. And they're actually pretty dang efficient for, for what they are. Yeah, I like it. All right, let's move down the list. Uh, so I think we got K6ARK. Who's next? Lou, hiking and hamming. Are you there, man? Yeah, I'm here. I'm actually uh, coming in on my phone today. So uh, if you if you working. didn't tell me that, I wouldn't have known. Oh, excellent, excellent. 
Although I'm watching the, the live stream on the on a Jankopotamus using hotel Wi-Fi. So that's, oh my uh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's for ham radio. It's not for YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's what I've got with me uh, right now. I can't use the the company laptop. So uh, uh, while I'm talking here, you you might hear some train whistles uh, from the surf liner going by. So that gives you an idea where. Oh, I, am I know right where now. you're at, bud, <laughs> or somewhere and, along the uh, line of where you're at. <laughs> so yeah uh had the day off today got the day off tomorrow and uh doing another got a photo activation in today doing one uh in the morning so uh that should be uh, an interesting activation i'm planning on doing some poto myself hopefully tomorrow i got a couple of things i gotta do uh, but included in that hopefully is going to be a poto activation so right on man well thanks for joining us i appreciate that all right let's see who is next uh K Tim. Murder. Oh, is he did did the K Merds join us? Did I see he, he did. There he is. What's up, man? We're coming back to oh, he's deafened and uh muted. No, Undeafen yourself. Oh, there you go. You're up, man. No, I, go ahead. I, I undid all that stuff. How you doing? No, man? I, I I'm I'm well I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to hear you. Uh, hang on. I'm hanging. I had to deafen you on uh, the YouTube there. Oh. Your audio was like perfectly in sync. Somehow there's like zero latency between what you're saying uh, and on uh, YouTube. It's gone really? now, but yeah, wow. everything, everything. I had no intention of jumping in uh, tonight. I know, but, but then uh, you started chatting, and so I was like bugging you to do that. So thank you for doing that. No, How you no, doing? Man? You were you weren't bugging me at all. Um, I just want to talk about ten meters because that's, oh, please, that's why, dude. Ten meters, man. Yeah. Oh my god. So me and Ryan did a po today. Our our goal was to just let's just go out and let's just po to all day. He ran his big geek dry. Wow. I've not done that with my big geek. But I brought out my 100 amp hour battery today. But uh, he was he was crushing. I was talking to some people, but uh, uh, ten meters today at the park. The ban the bands were weird today, but but where I was, there was zero noise. So like literally every contact i made today on 10 meters i think i made probably 65 or 70 70 contacts just on 10 meters today okay side, right like a few hours ago nobody's moving the s meter but everybody's like audio is is perfect is four, five, yeah maybe 10 meters maybe like, can be like that yeah like and i'm hearing and in a typical like um radiation pattern for me uh i'm hearing like connecticut new york pennsylvania lots of pennsylvania I got a pipeline into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which sucks because the Pittsburgh Penguins suck. All right. I'm just going to throw some shade on the, on the hockey team there because I love hockey. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then you go out to um, California mm -hmm. and Oregon and Washington. Like that was my uh, – but I got a lot of Missouri. I got Kansas, uh, Idaho. I got a lot of stations today on 10 meters, and and the again the audio was was fantastic. You could hear everyone like they're standing next to you, but nobody's moving your signal meter. So, um, for the for the new hams, the new technicians, and I got Alaska. Yeah, I got Paul. Somebody said whiskey India zero Oscar. Sean is in the Discord. I got I got Paul in Alaska on 10 yeah. meters. Nice. And I got uh, I got a new station that I've not heard in Alaska. Uh, he had like five letters and numbers in his call. Uh, They'll do that. They'll do that to you, I, dude. Like you get Paul. Like everybody knows Paul. November Lima and Victor, right? Uh huh. Uh, or excuse me, KL, whatever the hell his, his call is. Okay. Um, ten. Yeah, I don't do that, oh man. Me and Ryan. Set out to do a poda all day today, and that's exactly what we did. It was great. Excellent. But 10 Good meters job. was, uh, 
like I said, I made I made sixty, seventy contacts. Nobody's moving the S meter, but we all but we worked each other because yeah. the video was so good. Dude, ten you, meters is great. That's but, I just want to talk. I just want to chime in and talk about ten meters. That's all I, I, I mean, I I will I will go ahead and add that like that's one of the beautiful parts about Poda is that you're often going into areas with no noise floor. That allows you to make those kind of contacts, which yeah. which is amazing. Well, portable ham radio in general. I mean, I I'll, yeah. I'll give a nod to Poda because like that's my thing. But my thing started just just doing portable ham radio was what got me into ham radio. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, it's not really, but portable ham radio is like my jam, right? Yeah. So whether you just whether, go to a city park and put up an antenna, like that's what I did before Poto was a thing. Uh -huh. This is, this is like four years ago, five years ago. Like this is recent, but like, who cares? We're working, we're working uh, so many contacts on 10 meters today. It's great. It's good. So it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I'll make I'll make a I'll make a, a side question to uh, to Mike since he's he's uh, joined us. Mike, what are your thoughts on the movie Red Dawn? Uh, which one, the original or the, original. the remake? The original done in Pontiac, Michigan. The original. Uh, I don't really have any. I think it's a good movie. I think it's you know like that kind of stuff is what uh, what makes you glad to have a ham radio license, I guess. And a gun? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. How, how do you answer, how do you answer that question, dude? So uh, that that is the uh, movie club movie this week on the uh, Ham Radio Crash Course podcast. So something that Leia has uh, created this year is that every week we have a new movie we watch that is uh, voted by the viewers of the podcast, and this week's movie was Red Dawn, which. Okay. I have watched that movie so many times, and every time yeah. I watch it, there's new little things I pick out and I find interesting, and it's such a good movie. It's so much fun. Such a good movie. <laughs> the thing that pisses me off is I, I feel I watched um, with within the last two months, I'm going to say, like recently. Mm -hmm. I watched, I don't know if it was the new one or the old one. They, you know, in the very beginning, they shoot the animal and they're like, you got to drink the blood. Uh, that's they, the first one. Did. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And they're like, and he's like, what does it taste like? And they're like, we don't know. We never did it. You're, you're an idiot. Yeah. You, you we're know. making Wait, you do it. I thought you were talking about, I thought you were talking about no country for old men for a second. Oh, I love that movie too. I, I love, love that movie. That movie. Keep the going. Very big, a lot of a lot of people don't seem to understand that one, and that's why they slow don't like your it. slow your roll there on No Country for Old Men. If you listen to like the first like minute, he's like, "Yeah, I took that guy down Huntsville, Texas, the prisons. That's literally where I live. I am there right now." Yeah, okay. Huntsville, Texas, but not in the prison. Yeah, but I mean, it's like a lot of people, um, it seems like a lot of people that don't like the movie just don't understand it. Because um, they're like, well, okay, so you're saying the main character? Which one's the main character? Is that if, you know, if Llewellyn's the main character, why you don't even see him die? You just, they just cut to the scene where he's just lying there, you know, the cartel. Wait, who, wait, 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 are you talking about the, the, yeah, the that, remake that, or the new one? Well, not the book, the movie. There's only one. Wait, is there? Oh, is there wait, wait. No wait, 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 wait. We're not turning this into a no country for. No, no this this that's needs to I... stop right. Now. Stop. And then we got a we got a pug that's like amplifying the signal. You were talking about ham radio. Okay, let's go back to ten but, meters. Who's this other character that's like got a hot mic? Hold on, let's mute him. Okay, you're hey, Mike, got a question. I'm, I'm... What? Go ahead. Frank? So, Mike, there actually is a fun question in the chat for you. Uh-oh. Well, I'm going to take that as an opportunity to run to the restroom really fast. So go ahead uh, to Mike with a question. I will be right back. Well, so Ryan, uh, Ryan. So it's the Mike radio crashers? Yes. <laughs> uh, Ryan Alderman asks, what is that battery called? He's talking about your big geek. Maybe you want to dive into that a little bit. What is that battery called? Well, it's called big geek. The battery that's inside it is a 30 amp hour bio NO lithium iron phosphate battery. Is there you cool? go. Hey, Mike. Uh, yes. Did you work Oklahoma Poda today? 
I worked, a, I, there was a lot of Oklahomas actually, Oklahoma and Missouri and Kansas. I, I've got uh, West Virginia. Yeah. I was just wondering if you got the um, hunted uh, Oklahoma North Park. Dakota? Oh, I, I have no idea. I don't know. I got South, okay. I got Kurt Sardison. He's one of my patrons in South Dakota. I got him today. Uh, I don't, that, that call doesn't uh, ring a bell, but yeah. Oh no, I've, I've got South Dakota several times, but I so start off today. I got a hundred and there's 107 or 108 contacts on phone. Um, excuse me on sideband. I had the DX commander set up. And then I switched over. I took I took the DX Commander down, and then I put up the Pactena and fed half wave, just twenty meters, like as a vertical. Um, but I was on ten meters, so because twenty ten is a harmonic of, ten, of uh, excuse me twenty, of, of course. And all of these ten meter contacts that I'm talking about, I made on that uh, Pactena, and it was just the noise floor was like signals weren't strong at all, like. You would be your your you wouldn't your signal would not even move the meter, but I could hear you like five, like you'd be five one. Great, it's amazing. Do you ever get Alpha Lima Seven Kilo Charlie Mike up there in Alaska? Uh, well, like I said, I worked Paul, um, but then I got a, I got a, I got two Alaska stations on ten meters. The uh, forgive me, like everybody knows Paul, but I can't remember his call sign right. Like uh, whatever it is, but I got another station today from Alaska who I've I've never worked before. Like you know the Alaska call signs right, that you work. Oh yeah, I I like I worked a new Alaska call sign today, so I, I don't know what I don't know who he was though. Fascinating. Was it KL seven DUG? I don't know. If I knew, I wouldn't say I don't know who it is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But it was on 10 meters. And I was using Potaflex 6. Oh, Not shout seven. out. Six. Shout out. I just got it. I just got it. Oh, Very yeah. Reflexes. Isn't it nice to be a part of that group that has that, Mike? <laughs> Dude, listen, I can't, I can't control what happens. I know. What sits I know. on porch okay mm -hmm. i can't control the guys that fly me out to italy to see their coaxial cable uh, manufacturing plant and then take me out to dinner and wine and dine me i can't yeah no I, I mean, I that would th that sounded i mean i saw what you sure. showed us was sure. a lot of fun it looks amazing it was horrible so, can you imagine could you imagine what, what it's like in oh. california so like the the plane ride was like 11 hours yeah so for you, it'd be like 15 hours. Oh, at least. Yeah, yeah. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. You don't ever want to go over there. It's horrible. Oh, so horrible. Did you, get, did you get Greg's cable made up today? I made that last night when I told him I was going to make his cable, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, it's already packaged up and addressed, and yeah. Thanks for... Oh, he'll be happy. He'll, he'll be happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg and I, we got each other's phone numbers. We text. Frank, we, Frank, we, Frank is now the uh, the unofficial uh, assistant for the HRCC. He's the one that's. He's the ass <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh no! He's oh the no! Assistant to the assistant. Okay. He, he's he, like he's, the. He's uh, doing all the work. What's, what's Rain Wilson in the office? Like the, that's Frank. The the the. Uh, oh God! What was it? The the. He's the assistant to, to the, the assistant manager. Not the assistant manager he's the assistant to the manager <laughs> Ch chase has it right hrcc secretary no. uh, all i know is that uh, you're doing a great job <laughs> you keep doing what you're doing with that said so mike hang tight i think we have yeah dude i'm done man i'm, I'm here dude so go to the next who, who one. did we hit who didn't we hit did we hit everybody we got lou we, we we got everybody now we got everybody all right well so wonderful um Let's see. Let let's go back to Drew for a second. Drew, do you have a favorite movie? Uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna launch off at this point. If you if you if hit me, if you indulge me here. Oh, we lost. You muted yourself again. 
Okay, favorite movie. Does yes. it have to be radio related? No, it no, doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. All right. Well, then I- I'm going to go with Evolution. Evolution. David Duchovny, uh, uh, Orlando. Um, Classic. Orlando Jones. Yes, Orlando Jones. Yes. I think I only watched that movie like once. That's your favorite movie? Well, I guess here's the thing. I'm not making you second it's, guess it, that. I'm not it, trying to make you. It's hysterical. It, like it is. It's yeah. just it's straight up hysterical. It's on here. It's right yeah. up there with like multiplicity, right? Like it, it's it's a easy movie that you can watch over and over again. It requires no thought. It requires no effort whatsoever, and it, it's just it's continues to be hysterical. So yeah, I, I'm going yeah. with that. How, what are your you kids? Multiplicity. Yeah. I want to give a good hi, Steve. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, yes, that is yes. a very good movie too. Multiple cities, very. So have your kids has has your kids watched that? What do they think about it? If you if uh, so, we it. actually just watched it for the first time with them, uh, probably about two weeks ago, and the, they were not as enamored as my wife. <laughs> Okay, okay. Or, or was it? I mean, uh, Kristen and I were cracking up the entire time. You know, the the caca scene, you know. The, <laughs> there was so, so many parts of it, but you know what? Hey, to each their own. So that that's kind of where I'm going with this. So uh, as part of the movie club for the HRCC podcast, we watched uh, Red Dawn, as I mentioned. And Edison clocked out early. He he clocks out on most of the videos. He fell asleep on the couch. But my my older son Ben, he he's kind of like me. We'll stay up and watch like anything, and e- even if we shouldn't be awake, we'll still be watching things. And we're watching it, and Leia's like, "Oh, this is kind of a good, you know, like." She she was trying to to, to draw some like father son kind of narrative with a lot of this stuff. And I was like, yes, honey, this is the most important part where the dad yells, avenge me, avenge me. <laughs> like, Ben, this is going to be your job. If daddy is ever abducted and put into a re-education camp, you must avenge him, right? That's going to be what happens. There, The movies that came out of the 80s were wild with a lot of that stuff. It's like, you know, teach your kids to be prepared for a communist takeover and how to deal with that, right? Like, it... It's 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 pretty wild when you think about the movies we grew up on as kids. I yeah I don't know I I don't know of a movie that's kind of like Red Dawn, but it's it's pretty special. Princess Bride. Uh no, Princess Bride is not like so bleak, right? Because at the end of the movie, like everybody's dead in the Red Dawn. Like like the Rock is now a monument, right? Not. Dwayne Johnson, but the rock that they carved their names in is a monument. Princess Bride is a fantastic movie. That that stands the test of time. I'll I'll put any kids on that movie and be like, this is literally going to be one of the best movies you can watch as a child. Go nuts. Uh, by the way, if anybody is interested in what I'm talking about, if you actually a pull, good year. yeah, if you, if you pull up uh, any of our podcasts, wherever you know you can you can watch the Hammer Radio Crash Course podcast, we. Uh, we have a link there to a uh, a poll, and you can add your favorite movie to the poll. The only thing I ask is that you do check the poll to make sure that the movie's not already there. And if it is, just vote for that instead of making the same movie twice. Right now, the, the, the best movie we've reviewed, the best movie for preparedness or disaster is 10 Cloverfield Lane. Our ranking system, that is the highest ranked movie because it is like preparedness is off the charts if you're looking at preparedness it is amazing go ahead comment is that the one with john goodman yes yes okay so good go ahead comment is enemy of the state uh, appropriate Yes, it's very appropriate. Actually, I would love it if somebody would put Enemy of State on the list, dude. If you, I'll, I'll, I'll actually, I'll actually go grab. I'll see if I can grab the link and I'll drop it. Please don't vote. Like, please don't post something that isn't already posted. There's Jason again. Hold on, gotta get him off of there. I'll grab. I'll grab the link. 
So let, let's do this. Any questions from anyone amateur radio related, we want to make sure we try and answer them. And I appreciate it. Thank you for, for bearing with me on this one. Uh, we had a lot going on in this live stream with the AT&T you know, outage and obviously this fantastic stream we did with Drew. But any questions anywhere from anyone on Discord, we'd love to take yours first. We'll go with you first, and then we'll look at YouTube. So go ahead and start typing, guys. Go ahead. Or we'll just we'll just talk movies. I'll do it. You know I'll do it. I'll talk about Dune Two coming out and Henry Cavill. Warhammer Forty K. You know that that's my kryptonite. Hey Mike, are you still around? Mike's still around. Go for it. Did you have tons of people stepping on each other today when you were making CQ calls? Uh No, oh, he's gone. No. <laughs> I had one guy who I, I feel there was like one guy who maybe knew who I was, who was just keying up incessantly CW, but I had the notch filter on. So we made it kind of annoying for like the first, I don't know, 10 minutes. But no, the, I think the bands just kind of suck today. I ran on 20, which was kind of a mess due to the QSO party. Um, well, that's what I, I made, was on 20 when I said all of that. Yeah. I made like 203 contacts, I think. And I guarantee at least four times I had to tell people just to shut up because I was trying to get a station and it'd be like, I need you to come back with your call sign three times. And all of a sudden 14 people are like jumping on top of it. And I still didn't get anything. And I don't think I'd ever had that happen in a photo before. Uh, I mean, yeah, it happens. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that kind of means you're doing a good thing. Uh, no, I, I I get it, and I've had it happen before. It just seemed like today was like excessive. Good, good for you. I mean, that's that's great. I had the exact opposite experience. I mean, I had, I didn't, I didn't have too big of a pileup. Um, stations were a little weak where I was, so we we had to struggle. My my dude, my volume was like cranked, and I'm like having to, you know, kind of lean my head over and you know point the ear towards the speaker to, to hear some people so sounds like you might have had a little bit better day uh day than i did but uh i was yeah. i was in shorts I, I was in shorts and a t-shirt so i i, I didn't really care <laughs> same it was uh, i'm just north of you in missouri um but it was like oh, yeah. 65 and sunny here and it was great i didn't have yeah. volume issues at all my pileups would be like three or four at a time every 20 minutes yeah. it wasn't great yeah. but they were there yeah Interesting you say that because they yeah they did come and go like I would call I had the uh, uh, like I would I would push the button on the uh, seventy three hundred like auto uh, call thing and and it would go like yeah and then all of a sudden like I said yeah they would just come and then they were gone so yeah it was it was a weird day bands bands were interesting today but so what I had yeah I had. I had two or three times where I was dang near finished with a conversation and then lost them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, they would just drop. You just, they just be gone. Yeah. Let me for do sure. a quick, uh, jump in there. Say a big thank you to Santos Vega for joining us on the, uh, YouTube membership. Thank you so much. And there was a question. This is a really good one. Sean, I think you've asked this a couple of times and I'm, I'm glad we can get to it. Why does the FCC not allow amateur radio to transmit on the GMRS bands using the same power with a GMRS license? So the, the simple answer is those are completely different radio services. They are not the same service. You'd have to petition the FCC to allow for that capability. And the FCC has that capability to petition them, but no one has petitioned to do that because... Frankly, they are services of themselves. When you get your amateur radio license, you don't really need GMRS unless you're going to interact with a lot of GMRS people. And if you're going to interact with GMRS people, just use a GMRS radio. It's totally fine. Nobody nobody really nobody really cares if you if you are, you know, using that or not that or whatever. They're both great services, but they're not affiliated with each other and and that's the way all the fcc services work does anybody have any other comments to add to that the comments that i made 
There's uh, all kinds of comments in the chat on YouTube, that's for sure. Uh, they should, I agree, per USC 47 part 95, the radios need to be certified to operate on GNRS. Now, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, they, they have to be type accepted, but uh, I don't see a reason they need to intercommunicate. I, I, I still don't. I, I, if you have your amateur radio license, you're an amateur radio operator. Just use your amateur radio frequencies, and you're fine. You don't need to interoperate. If you if you want to interoperate, you can use a GMRS radio. It's fine. They're small and easy to carry with you wherever you go. Uh, let's see. I got a random one about uh, becoming an extra. Yeah, go ahead, man. All right, so, like, I've been struggling just with, like, motivation with getting my extra. And, like, I, I like honestly feel like my brain is turning into mush with the amount of information that I'm studying. And, okay. like, do you guys have any, like, suggestions or anything, like, to get over that? Or Well, how are you studying, first of all? What are you doing? So I'm using uh, Ham Study. Doubt. Okay. Uh, for, for as an app, because I'm I'm an over the road truck driver, so it's kind of hard for me to keep a computer with me. I got that I from the chance... 18 wheeler ham. I, I yeah, that, yeah, that was a little a, bit of a it's... yeah, a little bit of a hint. So, what else? What else are you doing? It, and that that and then um, there's this guy on YouTube, Five Nine Radio. Mm -hmm. um, he has videos of like the test questions and answers that I've been like listening to, kind of like a podcast mm -hmm. when I get a chance to. Uh, there is the, the audio book I recommend from the podcast. What is it? It is, oh boy, I have to look it up. Fast track. The fast track. The fast track audio book is really good. I like the way they do it. They use like a little bell to signify the, uh, the, the, the right answer and then walks through why it's the right answer. And I think I did the entirety of my study almost on that audiobook. And that was all I had to do for extra. And as a trucker, where you should keep your mind on the road, that might be exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was like seeing if, like, if there was some type of like audio thing. Because, like, mm -hmm. like right now, like when I listen to those videos, I kind of like have to shove my phone into like there's a whole bunch of storage in the truck. So like I kind of just shove my phone into a, a bay and just kind of listen to it and mm -hmm. listen to it on like a play all like playlist that I made. So I can just like listen to it over and over again, trying to do it that way. But like I said, dude, there's so much information <laughs> in, uh, yeah. in all of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. So Ryan C asked, can you talk about the HRCC camp out? I logged on the live stream late and just heard you mention about the link. Uh, I think the link should be live in the uh, the this web this video that we're doing. So it's real simple. The last weekend in April, we're gonna do a campout, much like we did last year. We've been doing campouts like every year, but uh, some of them are backpacking trips, and this one is gonna be car camping. We're gonna be at Silverwood Lake, which is outside Hesperia, California. It is uh, a POTA. We'll be in a POTA location, so we'll be able to make uh, as many contacts as we want for POTA. I think we're adjacent to Soda, but I haven't uh, looked that up yet. It is a, a lake, so you can go fishing. There's boat rentals and the whole nine yards, but uh, it's going to be a whole lot of ham radio fun. Basically, if you RSVP, eventually my wife will contact you if you want to be on the, um, the, uh, the whole setup where... You, We'll have a couple of meals that are cooked, uh, all set. There'll be a beer share. Um, I generally do a giveaway of ham radio gear and whatnot, some stuff that I've accumulated over the years that I'll be giving away. So look forward to that. And if you are in the Hesperia area or don't mind driving to Hesperia, it might be a lot of fun. Hope you come out. Yes, it is in the description and the link is live. I just checked it. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that, Frank. So, yeah, there you go. All right. Any questions anywhere from anyone about anything? <laughs> we'll open it wide, wide open. I've got a question. Go ahead, question. Uh, what's everybody's opinion on 
opening up the HF digital bands for technicians. Can you petition that? Um, I'll, I'll give you my thoughts and then I'll open it up to the chat to, to give their thoughts. Uh, if, it, if you were asking me what I would like to see, I, I would like to see technicians get uh, a little bit of single sideband and a little bit of digital. I, I would give them a little slice of this and a little slice of that, like a little piece of the cake, you know, a little, little trial slice. Not a lot, enough to make them go, oh, yeah, this is really cool. I should get my general or I should get my extra. And I think it, it needs to be both single sideband and also digital, personally. That's my opinion. Anything yeah, in the chat yeah, want to dive I, I, Yeah, go ahead. I, I learn, I learn by, by doing, and yeah. it's really hard for me to pick up on things by just reading it. There you go. Yeah, uh, anybody in the chat want to comment? Go ahead, Frank. I second you with that. Uh, I would say maybe give them give technicians a little bit of uh, twenty meters, say fourteen three forty to fourteen or no fourteen three three five to fourteen three four seven, and definitely give them at least FTA privileges at, at minimum. Tease them with some FTA because I know of a couple technicians that they're studying to become generals now, but they really, really, really want to play FTA. And they can't. Yeah, so I, I yeah, think... you could restrict that to QRP as well. Uh, yeah, or sure. Or 10, 10 watts or 20 watts, 20 watts. I mean... Yeah, the, the thing to remember... Go a long way. Yeah, the thing to remember is that, like, technicians get access to 10 meters. 10 meters is relatively open right now. But if you remember three years ago, it was fairly closed. Like, there, there was not a really uh, huge amount of contacts we were making on... 10 meters so with the again solar cycle being a little bit high the higher frequencies are going to be really good and so for the next couple of years i won't have any problem getting people licensed for technician the problem is how do i parlay that into getting them licensed for general which has always been my goal my goal is not to get people licensed for technician that's the that's the the costco sampler i got you in the door with the sampler we got to get you general access. That's what opens it up to 20 meters, 40 meters, etc. So if you ask me, technicians should get a little taste of the pie of 20 meters and 40 meters as a nighttime band. And if not 40 meters, 40 meters is a very uh, tiny band if you think about it. 20 and 80 would be, I think, great. That would be wonderful. I think that would be really, really good. So. Come on. The power... The, the power restriction on that on 80 would be a problem, I think. Mm, maybe. I mean, I, I well, so you're implying that there must be a power limit. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not implying that there should be a power limit. I, I think that. Well, there's a power limit on 10. Mm, yeah, but I don't know why that has to be. So, guys, keep in mind. Oh, we I, literally. Oh, OK, keep an open mind. about. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So I, I was. So we give technicians the license to use microwave bands at full power, as much power as they can jam into microwaves, which is arguably way more dangerous to humans than HF, even on 10 meters. So the fact that we deemed them safe enough to have a technician license that allows them microwave access, but we can't let them have a little piece of the pie of HF is ridiculous ridiculous completely ridiculous i mean if they if they really if they really want to push through it and try hf and see if it's for them techs do have some cw privileges on hf i mean okay yeah it's not voice but they yeah. have they have them on 40 and i think 80 as well i no one is no one is taking anything away from what exists like that that is totally totally valid that's not the question though the question is like if if you wanted to grow amateur radio and get more people involved you got to give technicians more of the pie you got to let them try you got to let them try hf you do straight up there's no let way me, around let that. Me well, that that's what i kind that's, go ahead. that's what i kind of see that's what i kind of I kind of felt that way with like they got CW privileges, probably because there's not a whole lot of damage you can do with that. So why not digital? But, but what damage? You already give them access to microwaves. There, there's no damage, right? They're already you've already no, tested no, no, them I, for safety. 
No, no, I mean, I mean, like, like arguing on the bands over voice and stuff. Like CW, you can't really do that. Okay, okay. Well, I'm not gonna get into that. Go ahead, Mike, and then I'll come back. That's interesting. Uh, that's an interesting comment you make about uh, microwave, Josh. I've, I've, I've ever thought of that. Yeah. yeah. Just, just go out and. Your just Nobody blast knows. everybody with microwaves. Point it into your neighbor's house. We 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 allow yeah. them to do that. Why not allow them HF? Which is yeah, arguably not, way safer. Yeah, not why I chimed in though. Not why I chimed though. Go ahead, go chime on, All man. Right. Chime on. So, so hold on, the, the mic go. Hang on. The problem, the 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 interesting. I won't say the problem. The interesting thing is. For a technician ham radio license, okay? Think technician. Yeah, I'm there's thinking about nothing, it. There's nothing farther from technician in ham radio than CW. Yeah. The, right? Yeah. So, like, why, like, technicians have CW privileges right now. Yeah. On Go 80 nuts. and 40. Go nuts. Right? And, Go and, nuts. And, and you know what we always say about and 80? There's me? too many damn technicians doing CW on 80. Dude, dude, don't even get me started about all technicians doing CW mm. on 80 meters, mm. especially. They, oh, my God. Just... Oh, oh, so, like, as well. Isn't that oh. stupid? Isn't yes, that stupid? it's so stupid. It's yes. so stupid. Yeah, so anyway, that that's my two cents. Yeah. It's no, just, it, it's... It, it's like... It's like it, it it's like they had to figure out where to draw a line and that's really what it is they had to figure out where to draw a line to like bar off access but as we've as we've determined the only way you capitulate people to go and take their valuable time and turn it into something else like a license or you know a higher education or whatever is you give them a little taste of it right we we know this costco the costco model yeah. Give them a little sample. Give them a little taste. A little taste of. But uh, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna go from a bofang or a baofang or a pofang or a however boof, you want to say it. Boofwang. A boofwang. Boofwang. All right. From like and myself included. Okay. I'm not gonna get my ham radio license and then be like, oh my god, I immediately like I need to, I need to I talk need to, to CW. people. In bleeps and bloops. Yeah. Like bleeps and bloops are my calling. Right. See, it's stupid. And and I'll I'll give you my whole road to ham radio. At, at no time did I think I was going to be doing CW. I was the hacker kid. I was the kid that took things apart and figured out how radios would communicate with them. Right. Like I I existed before YouTube. Like I am I am that kid. I existed before the internet, right? Where we were taking things apart and doing all the things and and trying to break stuff. We we never thought like Morse code's got to be a thing again. It was only until we learned that Morse code has tons of advantages over voice that you might want to use if you are running low power, right? It's a tool 100%. in the arsenal, right? It's a tool in the arsenal. But nobody starts out going, you know, CW, that's where it's at, right? And so that's why I'm like the, the, the licensing system in a lot of cases is, is fairly outdated, it is. We know it is. So and because Josh, you and I have talked about the radios. Yeah. Because techs have privileges. Like, they can do 10-meter, like, FT8. But okay. nobody makes radios unless you're going to buy, like, a 7300 or something or, or a, you know, whatever to get on sideband to do that. It's ridiculous. Now, that's a fun take there, Mike. I've heard it both ways. Uh, as far as text being on 10 meter FT8, some people say no, they can't go to the digital portion, even though they have it, and others say, oh yeah, they can. So technically, uh, it's it's voice and CW. It's not digital, I believe, but I could be wrong. Correct, I agree. No, it, it's it's they have it's, 28 to 28 five. That's what they have. That's a tech. Yeah, but That's what they have the it's privilege is for yeah. phone. Yeah, text can get on FT8, no problem. But the, but nobody makes a radio, or a tech doesn't want to make a ra uh, pay for a radio to do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's so that that's why POTA is such a a blessing in this case, in the sense that you can say, "Hey, go do single sideband in a park with a cheap two hundred fifty dollar ten meter radio 
you'll get hooked. We know you'll get hooked because it's freaking amazing. At least most people will. And then that'll that'll make you want to get your general. Right. That's that's right the now hook. they will. And I've, right I've actually now. had a guy on the right air now. tell me that exact same thing. But but you're right, but, Mike. Right now. Ten yeah, meters yeah. is gonna close like a like a safe door in four years. And then you're not gonna touch it for another four years, and then it's gonna open up, but it's only gonna you know, again, you're yeah. gonna start riding that day night cycle. There's nothing better like Mike, I go ahead, dive in on this, Mike, because you've done nighttime potas. There's maybe you want to do a pota at night. Why do I want to be beholden to the day night cycle for doing a pota? Maybe you want to do a nighttime pota. Is that not amazing, Mike? Have you done a nighttime pota? I'm sure you have. Go ahead. <laughs> Breathe, Josh. It's okay. I, I, oh God. <laughs> slow, slow your roll, buddy. Uh, yeah, I have. Um, but I like I'm not even going that deep. I'm just going like um talking to like the technician and being where I was as a technician, just talking on repeaters and then um like making a lot of friends. I was I was in a good place in 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 the Detroit area where I was when I was a tech, like there was a lot of repeater activity and there were a lot of repeaters in different areas much like you are in LA so yeah. I could I could go I could go south from where I was and I could hit a repeater and 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 you'd hear different people you'd hear you'd hear the same people but like there there was there was like that community and the second you know when you key up if you're a technician please please technicians just push that PTT button and throw your call sign out. Because there's a lot of people that would love to talk to a new ham and just, oh my gosh, you're you're a new ham. I'm glad that I'm the first person you ever talk to. There's a whole lot of that. There's a whole lot of that. I yeah, I think so. If you're in, if you're in the right area, I don't uh, even know where I'm going uh, with this. Well, no, but you, you 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 ended with the right point. If you're in the right area. Because here in Southern California, a repeater almost becomes like the corner that the high school kids used to smoke at. Like you had to be a part of that clique to be able to like hang out and lean up against the wall, right? That's the reality yeah. of repeaters is that they turn into these these kind of like local boy hangouts, right? HF's not like that. A a HF no. isn't like that at all. It it's the randomness of the atmosphere which makes HF so much fun and why we recommend so highly that you get your general license. But the reality is is that like repeaters are repeaters are super useful and there are really good repeaters out there. And so I'm not I'm not throwing any shade to that. But there are repeaters, repeaters are a good place to cut your teeth. Even if you're in a bad, you know, if if you don't have a lot of uh yeah. just just activity if you don't hear a lot of conversations on the repeater much like where i live now there's 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 not a lot of activity and if you're in that situation if you're if you're a technician if you can kerchunk the repeater like everybody's like oh don't kerchunk the repeater. screw that kerchunk the repeater if you can hit it that's awesome that you're testing your stuff through your call sign whether you say it phonetically and i'll go one further i will say call cq on a repeater which is not something that is um, generally, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, done, let's just say. Just call CQ. Just push that, hold that PTT button. All you technicians, just push the PTT button mm -hmm. and call CQ, CQ, CQ. This is K at MRD. CQ, I'm a new ham. I just got my license. Looking to make a contact. Whatever it is. Uh, frowned upon. So, like, calling CQ on repeaters, like, frowned upon. It's just, like, you don't do it right, you know. Throw your call sent out. But. Okay. You're calling CQ on a repeater. Whether, whether you annoy someone or not, because you're calling CQ on a repeater, you just got their attention. That's the whole point of calling CQ. And just came back to you so you just uh, yeah, made but, your first contact but some people aren't willing like you and i are to be confrontational from the beginning 
<laughs> right? Like, of course not. I mean, they're trying course, to like you, they're you, trying to join listen, the cr- the club, if you will, the cool kids club, right? All right, listen, you got to be a little offense, a little defensive. Like, hey, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're like you should call you CEO of the repeater. Out, don't man. do that, kids. Don't do that. Listen, don't do- I'm, I'm not saying like okay, don't just get a get a uh, a radio and call CQ on the repeater. That's not what I'm saying. What are just you throw saying? your call sign out, say, Mike? I, dude, I don't know, man. I told I I came in here to talk about ten meters for like five minutes, and here it is an hour and a half later. So, so I don't know what we we got a comment from Sean. I'm trying to help technician, and I'm going to mute myself. Yeah, so no, ahead, I, I I'm uh I I am I am working on something. I don't know how I don't know how off the ground this is going to get, but I'm working on something in this area. So, uh, Sean Sean brings up a point that I want to I want to dive into, and and Sean, I hope you're on chat so you can reply to this. So members does have its privileges. It's why we have a small table for kids, so implying technicians. Moving into general bands requires some skills that techs can hone before moving up. So here's the question. Go look at the technician license pool and go look at the general license pool. And what part of either one of those pools would prohibit the other from having some kind of HF access? Do you acknowledge, and you should, because technicians are allowed 10 meter HF privileges that they're tested on HF use? And the mere fact that technicians are allowed 10 meters means that, well, why do we allow them HF on 10 meters? If they can't do HF a little bit on 20 meters and 40 meters, the answer is there's nothing. It's an arbitrary boundary we've created. That's it. If you allow them on 10 meters, which is HF, then why would you not also give them a little piece of the pie on 20 and 40 or 80? You pick. I don't care. I'm not picky. I don't care. It could be work bands. Give technicians a little piece of work bands, a little sliver of work bands. Why not? Give them something more than 10 meters, which is so highly controlled by the sun, right? It, the solar maximum. Give them 15. Uh, why not? What, 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 are we, what are we so beholden to? Like, why are we so scared? What do you think they're going to do? We already tested them on HF prowess to get on 10 meters. We're okay letting them do 10 meters. So why not give them a little bit of 15? Well, Why look not? At most like of the other countries, like look at England. You look, get at a look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Would you look at that? <laughs> Would you look uh, at it? They have all frequency privileges, to my yeah. knowledge, but they're limited to ten watts. Like, you know, look at look at Canada with uh with their uh what is it the something plus honors right plus honors means well. Canada has Canadian bacon, so I don't know how much we can whack intellectual about that, but it's basic plus uh, honors. So if you get basic, like basic license is like technician equivalent. But if you do like really good, I think it's like ninety five percent, you get basic plus honors, which gives you a little bit of HF, a little, 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 little spice of HF. Like why not? Why? Why are we? We're we're coming up with arbitrary reasons why techs can't have HF. And if you if you're trying so if at any time you're making a rule based off of feels, that's not a good rule. It's not a good rule. Uh got a super chat. There's a super chat. Hold on, here it is. General course sub element format coming. Yes, it's coming. I, I, I promise it is. I got everybody knows I got really waylaid over Christmas. I was supposed to do the whole recording when I had two weeks of nothing going on, but now I got a lot of something going on and I got to get through all the something so I can get to doing that. But I will, I promise. Hey, so I just wanted to say a quick I... comment. Uh, got I heard someone say comment. Go ahead with the comment. There was too many people. Over that was top. Chase. Go ahead, Chase. Yeah. So here's my thoughts on the whole 10 meters thing. So, Having the small slice of the pie on 10 meters was a huge drive for me to get my tech. Like, I would spend a lot of my time, you know, working 10 meters during the day. And then as soon as 10 meters died, I'm like, well, shit, I can't do anything else. 
yeah, radio's but the, done but, for the day. But but and what then, if what if the sun says you can't use ten meters any of the time? Yeah, so that that was kind of my next point was okay. So yeah, I mean that was it was a good like drive to get my my tech or I mean my general and sure, sure. and then you know so I ended up just like slamming that out and getting my tech about a week after I got into HF. Um, or two weeks, maybe, I don't even know, but I mean, that was a huge drive, but I do agree with you guys that definitely 20 and 40, you know, tech should get a little bit of the slice of the pie for that. Well, and so maybe let, with let, some let's go output with, let's limitations. Go, let's go with your, let's go with your example. So you, you were, you were encouraged to get your, your general license by having the bands kind of turn off on you. Like, okay, yeah, exactly. it's nighttime, it's going... Well, then give them 15. 15 yep. is way less, way less perturbated by the solar maximum and minimum, right? So 15 is, you know, it's still not going to be very great during a solar minimum, but it's going to be way better than uh, than 10. So, Heck, okay. even some 30-meter FT8. Look, I'm I'm willing to hear all arguments. The problem is that, like, I've had this discussion with the people at the AWRL. I've had this discussion with multiple people. My argument is that ham radio already is on a negative footing when you compare it to, like, GMRS or whatever because you have to have a license. But then you tell them, oh, thank you for getting your technician license. Everything you really want to do that all those people on YouTube do that are doing is really cool is actually the next test you have to take you have to take two tests so and, and you gotta give them a too. little bit you gotta give them something as a technician to get them interested to continue the road that's my point of view and a big thing that discouraged me from getting my general earlier i think was having to go through all the like electrical schematics and stuff like that like i i don't find that stuff very interesting to me like i find it playing with antennas and stuff fun but the whole like learning what all the different schematics and learning all the math stuff that i suck at you know all that stuff's just really boring to me so that was a huge discouraging you know thing to me when it came to my general and that's why i've also been kind of taking my time getting my extra as well mm -hmm. josh you had, you had asked me if i wanted to chime in yeah uh, go ahead, on the comment so um, you know, regarding the 10 meters, I, I mean, well, regarding giving extra privileges to technicians, I think the idea of either work bands or 40 meters might be a good thing because you want to give them that taste of the night bands. But giving them, for example, 20 meters, if you looked at today, there was so much QRM with all the contests today. What if you took a flood of all of the technicians and you added them to the very limited slices we have already? For contesting, what what would that look like? Oh, well, it's it's always going to be a slippery slope argument when you're talking about taking a finite space of of whatever and saying we're going to give a little portion to technicians, right? So then they get to experience the world we experience it. <clears throat> Why are we waiting for them to get a general license to go? Oh, on a contest weekend, this sucks. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Fair like, enough. that's that's yeah. Like th they should just know. Like, uh, okay, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. So why I feel like I have to justify this. Then? Should there only be two classes? No, I didn't say that. I said that the technicians should get a slice, a a little no. bit of a little bitty bit of bandwidth. Fair enough. I fair enough. Right? Satan yeah, would I like me totally to interject agree. here. Totally Go ahead, Satan. Well, I'm speaking on his behalf. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah, please. All right. So I under, I've heard and I understand and I relate to everything that was just said. Okay. But I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I really, I'm serious about what I'm about to say. Josh, do you know the channel Save for Parts? Save for Parts, yeah. Save it for Parts, yeah. Yeah. So he just did, I just, I literally, I think three or four days ago, I just watched a video of what he did. And he's a ham. He's got his license. Uh, he made some kind of, and you probably would nerd out on what he did. I watched the whole 30 minute video of what he did. I might he took seen. like early, early Palm pilots and he used business band radios to send a text message over these Palm pilots. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm I didn't see that. I don't know. I really don't know what the hell he did at all in this. Okay. The point is. 
and so we're talking about just like giving uh, techs privileges on other bands, right? Just give them a sliver, right? Right. Okay, I'm there. This argument is this is this is the same argument from uh, our our Elmers, okay, who had to learn CW to get their license. Right. The benefit of being a licensed ham radio operator is that we get to experiment with radio and we're allotted these frequencies per the federal government yeah. to yes. for experimentation, okay? It's not about going out and doing a put It's not about working the DX. That is not what ham radio is about. That is a benefit of ham radio. Good point. But, it's, but at the bottom line, ham radio is about science and experimentation. Mm -hmm. So we're allowed to use the frequencies to experiment. But we need to, we need to learn a little bit. And that's why the licenses and the license classes exist. It's yes. not just about getting on 10 meters and working single sideband. It's not about going down 40 meters and working single sideband or CW. The mode, talking on ham radio, communicating on ham radio, is only a small byproduct of having a ham radio license. At the end of the day, it's about experimenting. So I, I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm being a little long-winded. No, no, it's good. But, it's a good but, the guy, but the guy from Save It For Parts was using business band lice, uh, radios. Mm -hmm. And he made it a point to, to reference that a couple times in this video. Because he's because, smart. Because he, knew he knows. <laughs> well, no, no. It was, it was that, and I, I kind of was like, why are you doing this? Because you're a ham. Uh, so anyway, he, he was using these crappy uh, Radio Shack business band radios to and he's writing code and he's putting breadboards together like he's doing all kinds of stupid stuff like experimenting he's nerding out with radio and my question was why are you not doing this my question to the guy from save it for parts was, why are you not doing this on he was very close to either the two meter or the 70 centimeter band i don't remember which frequency he was on but I'm like, why are you not doing this on the ham radio frequencies? Because that's literally the entire point of getting your license. Mm -hmm. Getting a ham radio license is for experimentation. It says it in the manual, in every book you read. So why would you go anywhere else, even if you have a license? Yeah. And that just that bewildered me that he did that. And he's smart, as, and he's got a ham license. So I don't know. That's that, that's just kind of where I'm at. Well, With, um, so I, I'm torn on the whole. Like, let's give techs more. You know what I mean? Well, Let, let's so let, do more. Let, science. Let's, let's dive into that a little bit further. So this, your rant will lead into my rant, and I, I I'll try and make it short. So oh, the I FCC, the FCC has qualified the license to be fundamentally three parts. Right? There is the operator part which is what mike talked about with parks on the air and being a better radio operator right then there is the technician aspect and technician is like uh how to fix a radio how to how to build an antenna that kind of thing right and then there is the furthering of of radio frequency knowledge the the the, the things that have never been done before right those are all capable under the license. That is the goal of the license. And focusing on any one aspect of that part of the license is like a detriment to the other parts. That's my understanding. That, that's my focus when I, when I make my videos and whatnot. With that said, there are certain parts of that thesis, the business statement of this is what this is all about, it is much harder to draw people into. And it's only when you give them 
bits of frequency spaces to allow them to experiment that they can truly experiment, right? So if, again, we go back to this, the fundamental argument of technicians can have single sideband and parts of digital on 10 meters. True statement, true statement. But 10 meters is blacked out in a pretty good chunk of a stretch of years. If you start out watching my channel back in 2018 or before that, 10 meters is closed. Good night. No activity, right? Un unless it's local comms, like CB comms, like local CB truck to truck type of comms, right? It's only now that we're in this high solar cycle where 10 meters is fantastic, which is great for technicians. But to say that your first level license is on an 11 year cycle is, I think, I think, ignorant of the reality of our hobby. I think that you're not understanding the hobby if you say, oh, technicians, we got to give you a little piece of the pie to encourage you to go further in the hobby. Well, the way you do that is by giving them a piece of the hobby that's always generally pretty good, which is 20 meters, 40 meters, and maybe 80. I can take away, again, I said take away 40 because it's a, it's a very congested band already with shortwave stations and all that other stuff. So give them a little bit of 80. I'm fine. Here's the point. I'm not trying to say this is the way to go. I'm saying I want to encourage discussion in this point. Let's talk about it. Let's continue to talk about it. Let's figure out what the right solution is, and let's talk to the FCC about it. And and then I'm 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 gonna go ahead and say I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a statement. I'm gonna make a statement. If I if I can't get the AWRL to do this, I I'm willing to to make this discussion happen with the FCC on my own to the best of my ability. In the best way possible, in the open-minded discussion. Elon made rockets fly faster than NASA did, Josh. So just saying. I you'd never bring his name up in this after chat. Never. Elon, never Elon, up. Elon, Elon. Humperdinck, Humperdinck, Humperdinck. The the point though is like I'm willing to go to bat on this one because I think it's important, and it's I have no I have no chips in this other than I want to give the right people the right access to the appropriate amount of access based off of what they've already proven based off the test they've taken that they can do. That's what I want to see. I don't care what bands it is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. We'll open it up to questions. Go ahead. I would argue that you go to bat that they add more frequency bandwidth. I think give it to give it to text and then we're every yeah, but, but which band, which band pick a band. It doesn't matter. I mean, no, I but see, yeah, yeah, but then the, now you're on board with me, right? So I'm saying 20, 40, or 80. Pick a little bit, a little bit of each. Just a, a little bit, a little bit. Give them a little bit. Yeah, right? I, I probably didn't come across right. I agree with you. I agree that that carrot needs to be there. But I kind of think originally when they had the CW component of it, that was yeah. part of the carrot, right? You didn't want people out there. Right, rack and CW at four words a minute on the general bands. You know what I mean? Because like, it would just be maddening. Now with sideband and voice, maybe it's a different perspective. It's a different time. So I, I, you're, you've, you've, you've won me over. No, and, and so don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't want to take away the CW. I want to encourage people to do CW, but to, to not acknowledge that technology has moved on in that space and that single sideband exists in other bands and digital technologies also exist to not allow technicians to play in that space seems like well how do you how do you really get them to move the bar other than they watch a youtube video like mike's or my own or or a number of youtube what? videos that are I, I just want to see you in a suit on c-span that's all <laughs> you want to see what on c-span I want to see you in a suit on C-SPAN talking to Congress. Oh, you don't even know. Guys, you only see me in this, like, garbage that I wear when I go on the live stream. But I wear a suit, like, often. <laughs> I, I'm... You, do look, you do look like crap tonight. Well, like, uh, Mike has seen me. Mike hoodie, has seen uh, me. Hoodie there. And... Mike, Mike, you've seen me. You've seen me now two years in a row wearing my sport coat and, and all the other stuff. That led to the Conor yeah. McGregor moment. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can get classed up, right? <laughs> 
to, to wrap the would, question. Would it be interesting, Han? Let me let me let me have it for a second. Uh, on the top on topic. Yeah. I would be one hundred percent for like CW is already allowed everywhere, right? Yeah. Like even as like the gentleman's agreement where like usually the lower part of the band is kind of the CW portion. I think every ham radio operator, no matter what your class, should have CW privileges anywhere and everywhere just to keep Morse code alive. Oh, if, I agree. If nothing else. So but, but there's, that, there's that. But But that only comes with like teaching people about why it's useful. Why has CW lived for so long? It's because it's incredibly useful. It's incredibly valuable. But it, people have to see it. They have to be demonstrated why it's important. Imagine and, and, if The Walking Dead started with like da 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 da. Right? Yes. I mean, well, how, okay. How well, what well, world would that have well, been? Well, wait, wait, wait. I, I have to. Well, now you're, you're now, now you're dipping into a huge wheel, like a whole space for me. The Walking Dead didn't really feature not. radio enough. Walking Dead did not feature radio enough. Of course it didn't, and neither did that stupid Obama movie, okay? The point no, is... No, The Last of Us. Go watch The Last... Everybody watching, go watch The Last of Us. That so didn't much have better. any radio in it either. Yes, the second episode starts out with the guy oh. who knows everything that everyone capitulates to as being an important person is the ham radio operator. The most important person in the city is the ham radio operator. And then he never was in the episode ever again. The point was made. <laughs> the point was made. You're reached, dude. Your your straw. You you've already swallowed that straw, dude. You're done, man. No, man. It, your argument I, doesn't. What? Your argument doesn't hold. It it I does, get it, dude. I get it. I get it. I get that guy, it. That guy. Had, same, that guy had. That guy had. We're on the same team, dude. That guy had forty people outside his door, <laughs> all trying to get in there to make a contact with some loved one. That he Ish, was the ben. only person that could broker that communication. Come on. Come on. You didn't even watch and the imagine, episode. What are you even talking to me about? I watched the whole series. I know how it ends. Uh, I, I celebrate imagine, the entire portfolio. Like, dude, we all pray for this to happen, don't we? No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no. No. Well, I, Josh, Josh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it with this, with this conversation. Yeah. And if I were to say, give the text anything... I would say give them all of the 15 meter band because like at least in my humble opinion and I'm I know I'm going to be called wrong by at least three people in the chat and that's fine in my humble opinion 15 meters is the second magic band it is like 6 but it, it is like six in the rarity of it working right, but it's also like 10 and 20. It works perfectly every time you want it. So I would say give the techs full privileges across the whole 15 meter band. Yeah. In okay. addition to 10. And yeah. that would be the band they get. So if you want to, if you want to be like, uh, I'm okay with the world where technicians, like when the sun goes down, so does your band access. I'm okay with that because that does add to the, like, you need to get the next level of license. I'm just arguing that 10 meters is the is a poor band to stake the technician flagpole on. It's a it's not a good band for that. It's really not. Oh, oh no, not at all. And that's yeah. why I think 15 would be Great. a yeah. better band to add to it. You yeah. know, just give them 15. Well, I mean, you won't have to give them all of 15. You just give them a portion of it, right? Like, like again, all discussion is on the table. We should be willing to discuss this. Then that's the point, I think. Hey, hey Josh, I got Why not all of 17? Okay, sure. It's really small. Go ahead. It's small in ways and acts just like 20. There was somebody else who had a point. Go ahead. All right, right. I'm, I'm sitting here studying the band plan, Josh. Yeah. And I noticed that the CW portion of the band plan for novice and technicians and for the portion of 10 meters that they get. So they get 80, uh, 40, 15, and 10, and they have 200 watts max. Mm -hmm. I, 
I don't, I've never operated with more than a hundred Watts and I'm a general and why are the privileges? Right. It's tone and deaf. You wouldn't need more than, t- you don't need more than 10 Watts on CW to make contacts around the world right. for the most part every day of the week. It, yeah, why, do, why is it 200 Watts? Again, because it's, it's tone deaf. It's, it, it's, it's comments that were made in the past and people grasp onto them and said, this is it. It's almost like the, uh, why do we have a 10 round limit on a magazine? It's because John oh, Ruger made a comment oh, that no one needs more than 10 rounds to bring down an animal, right? It's like someone made a statement and somebody latched onto it and said, this is the thing. And they went, yep, that's the thing. And then that's how we have it, right? So so you're totally right. But okay, so, so j- just from this chat alone, which is likely, you know, largely a lot of like-minded people, if I were to petition the FCC saying, hey, let, let's give a little bit of 17 meters to the technicians. Do you know how hard I would get negative comments that the mere audacity of me making that comment is to people, right? Heck, I have, I have privileges to work it as a general and people complain to me that 17 and, and working POTA is not a good thing. And, and I've right. got the privilege to work there. Right. Right. So it's insane. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's the reality of ham radio is everybody wants it to be bigger and better than it is, but then they actively get in the way of making it bigger and better. They're constantly trying to stop it from growing. They want it to grow in exactly the way they learned and were licensed in ham radio. They want it to be as challenging and as difficult as it was for them because they feel that's the only way it's right. And that is a uh, concrete-minded way of looking at the world and not acknowledging that things have to move on. They have to grow and they have to change. Yeah, if, hey, Josh. If, if we change to power limitations instead of limitations on bandwidth or not bandwidth, sorry, sorry, didn't want to get the wrong term there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, change our band plan, uh, everything would work out just fine because 25 watts, you can go a long way with that. Yeah. Or 20 or whatever arbitrary spot well, you want to throw it because you can use decibels to make that point. It, it goes back to Mike's comment is it allows them to experiment in the world of the amateur radio hobby, which is what we want to encourage, right? Everyone that is a ham, yes, collectively, hopefully. Oh, yeah. But the reality is, is that nobody, a lot of the folks don't think about that. They don't want to think about that. They, they just want to make it as difficult as it was for them for people to get started. That's the reality of it. It truly is. Hey, Josh. Yeah. Can you run for head of FCC? Like, I'd, I'd support it. Uh, I don't think so. I think I have to be, like, well uh, involved in the government before I would ever be considered for the FCC. Yeah, it's a, it's appointed. You you generally have to be rolling in those circles before anyone would ever consider you. Besides, he's not an attorney. Oh, is that what it is? Also, you have to be on the bar. Yeah, that's possible. I I'm just guessing. Yeah, that's probably like a good I point. said in not right. like I said in the comments. I think we might be getting to the point where it's almost time for a new lobbying organization, like the FPC has done in the gun community. You're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong. Go ahead, comment. I just want to go back a couple minutes and the uh, chameleon that is Josh and say whoever did the lighting for the Mike Glover video you were in, they got the grizzled mountain man look down. You look good. Uh, so everybody commented on that on the YouTube video. That was just the time when my beard was really long. And I wear flannel to work all the time. You just don't see me in that a lot but if you go back and look at my videos there's tons of tons of times where i'm wearing flannel but yeah so many people are like oh so he does a field craft video and now he's wearing flannel and his beard's really long do you think i grew the beard out like overnight <laughs> like, no, no of course no, the not beard, it's the same length but no the way that they had the lighting set it was it was it was good yeah no they, they were i again i'm i'm you know but everybody's like, oh, he, he joins Fieldcraft Survival, and now he's got a really long beard and a flannel on. I was like, no, dog, I wear flannel all the time. And if you look at that flannel, 
the some of the colors is hot pink. <laughs> like that's not the color. That's not the color profile for Fieldcraft. Hey, nothing wrong with hot pink, hot pink fan flannel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, come on, guys, give me give so me a is, break. Is is Mike Glover like as an imposing individual as he might seem? No, not at all. No, imposing? Well, no, yeah, I'm sure the guy could kill me like 15 days from Sunday if he wanted to. But most of the time, like, go back and look at the interview I did with him. Like, he geeks out when you, like, can hit those little geek spots. Everybody's got those little geek spots in them. They just have to figure out what it is. Like, literally, when when we were doing uh, the pre-chat, when I was hanging out with Drew and we were doing audio checks and whatever, literally, Drew was talking to, like, we were talking about, like, playing online games, right? And and what did we grow up playing and all that stuff? And he was telling me about, like, we just got a new console in the house and the kids are going nuts. And we were all geeking out about that before we even went live. So that that's actually, you know, so that's kind of the thing that, that I, I want to bring to Fieldcraft if I can. Because, like, when I go there, there's, like, a lot of, like, hard dudes. There's, like... Mal, like you know what a Malinois is. Everybody understand what that dog is. Everybody know what the a Belgian Malinois. Malinois. Yeah. Yep. Those are like the dog. Like so, you take a German Shepherd and you're like, no, not deadly enough. You get a Malinois. There's like Malinois rolling around Fieldcraft, highly trained dogs, like super super trained, and the owners like wearing <laughs> like a like a BJJ. Uh, gi on and, and and like everybody's just so just like dripping with the intensity of the thing that they're really passionate about they're, they're geeking, just dialed up they're geeking out about that thing that they're really passionate about and i'm just like the radio guy rolling in there and i'm like hey guys we're gonna talk about radio now and they're like what's all this nerd shit i mean they're not all like that of course but at the I same time i just loved how we nerd when the guy recognized you on a repeater is like, oh man, this is a huge right, sense of because, community and just he yes. loved that, that you were known. Yeah. So the the reality of it is is that like you have to be a bit of everything. And if anyone goes too hard down any road, then they're they have a deficit somewhere. Right? That's the reality of it. It's okay to have deficits. It's just know what your deficits are. And then you're going to either offset that by a greater skill in one area or the other, or you're just going to say like, hey, that's just how I'm going to live my life. And that's OK. But like to say, like, I can't do the nerd stuff or I'm, I'm only about this or that or whatever like that. That doesn't really exist when you start talking to people. Right. So everybody I talked with the field craft, they were super into the comm stuff when when I was when I was talking about it and I'm setting up and I'm showing the radio stuff. They're all in. It didn't matter if they had a. a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, Gi on or whatever. They were like, oh, yeah, this is super cool. It's it's when you talk to people in person that it, like none of this stuff really matters that much. Like there's none of this animosity. It's like online tensions that people think exist, but it, it doesn't really. It, it really doesn't. <laughs> I had visions yeah, of getting the picked up in a Humvee and like getting rolled up to the gate and checked in and all these sorts of things. Oh, that I did Anthony when I when I rolled up to no. <laughs> yeah, like it feels like they would like you know check you at the airport, roll you up, debrief you on the way in. They got the comms, okay. they got the sunglasses. You want to? You want to? Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you my favorite story. Okay, so I've never experienced this in my life. So Mike messaged me. This is the first time I I had any wherewithal about Mike. Messaged me. So okay, straight up, like I I did not message him messaged me and he was like we want to do more calm stuff with my channel this is my channel check it out super gracious super nice guy and i went to his channel and was like dude yeah you're, you've got a similar mindset of mine this is awesome what are you thinking about doing he's like we're gonna fly you out of Pre fly you out to prescott prescott arizona and i was like hell yeah i haven't been there yet so yeah why not so they flew me out to prescott I get a message like when I went, you know, when I'm landing or whatever. And he's like, we left a land cruiser in the parking lot. Key is under the floor mat. That's your car for the weekend. Okay. Never experienced this in my life. I pull out of, I pull out of Prescott airport, which is the smallest air, one of the smallest airports I've ever been in my entire life. Roll out and I'm looking around and there's literally just a Toyota land cruiser, which is just a 
fantastic off-road vehicle. Lovely off off-road vehicle. And sure enough, doors unlocked, keys under the mat, pull the key, turn it on, drive to the hotel. And and I and I end up catching up with them the next morning. And I was like, hey guys, is it cool if I just I'm I'm using this the weekend? Is it okay if I do like a a trek up the road or whatever? I'm gonna go to a summit. I'm gonna do a summit on the air. He's like, heck yeah, go nuts. And that's just what it is. Like they're just like, yeah, here you go. Like it's cool. Go nuts. That's like that's Mike Glover. Like you do a thing. This is your thing. Can I help you out? Great. Here you go. That's Mike in a nutshell. For my experience, he's been a fantastic dude. He nerds out like if he's tuned into what you're what you're dropping, and otherwise he's just a super gracious host. It's really fun. He's a good guy. Anthony in uh, the Discord chat has a really good point. Uh, he says, now that we've had a ham radio teacher interviewed, I think HRCC's next interview should be with a professional engineer who holds a ham radio license. Maybe somebody like that Josh Josh Nash fellow. Get him in his snazzy suit on. Her. I mean, what am I? I can't even talk about most of the stuff I've ever worked on. <laughs> yeah, but you could have Adam come and interview you and do the live stream part. Oh, have Adam interview me on my own channel? That'd be interesting. Uh, I don't want to be ungracious to uh, to Drew. Drew, you're you're still hanging on there, man. Do you have anything you want to mention? I don't want to make you stay if you're if you're not like hanging out, like not enjoying it. Oh, he unmuted and then he muted. It. Yeah, e e you know, no, Josh, I I am I'm loving listening to the conversation and. Uh... You know, the uh, all the conversation about the tech, general, extra, all of that stuff. I mean, it resonates because it resonates with all of us. We've all had to go through it. It's a shared experience. And there's a, a lot of competing, you know, ideas in all of it. There's a lot of arbitrariness to, to all of it, you know. And whatever the, the current is, it'll be something different in the future. And then somewhere down the line, people are going to argue about whatever that is. And they'll argue for a different, you know, line of thinking. And so it's all good. Like in the end, you know, we're all going to, we're all going to find a good avenue through all of it. Um, whether it's, you know, internal motivation or incentivizing to get some new access, or if it's that, you know, internal driving force that pushes us to, to want to push ourselves to a different level. That's all good. You know, um, I'm on, I'm on board for all of it. Uh, you know, I, I do want to go back one second and just say that 18 wheeler ham, you know, studying for the extra and all of that, that goes into that, you know, there's, there's a lot and, you know, just one of the things that I found that has been very helpful f both for myself and for uh, some of my students is I have encouraged them, especially because at that extra level, it's a lot more science than it is uh, at the general or the, the tech. Um, I have encouraged them to write and draw pictures of it as much as possible. And so I know I have an hour drive, uh, you know, for work every day. And, uh, you know, I take my notes just through, you know, voice on the phone. But when the uh, um, when it comes to the pictures and everything else, you know, I take the notes as I'm listening to things and then, you know, um, make a make a picture of it, basically drawing out the idea in some way, shape, or form to be able to help process that abstract information. So, uh, and a lot of my students have found that that's particularly helpful uh, because, again, the more um, abstract it is, the more concrete when you create something from it, the more you're able to internally, uh, you know, process it and relate back to it later on. So I don't know for whatever that's worth. Drew, but, every time you say something, Drew, I'm like, this guy's an engineer even more. So do you? Do you have a whiteboard? Are you white? Are, you're talking about a whiteboard, right? Well, y yes. Uh, I, and just to be fair. Uh, I, like I live with whiteboards all around me all the time. I, I cannot tell you like how vital a whiteboard is in brainstorming. Like I, yeah. I, there, there are so many situations I'm in where I'm like, everybody stop talking. We need a whiteboard. That's, like that's it. It, 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 it just turns into like all the, everybody is all up in their heads and we have to draw it out. Otherwise uh -huh. it's like, we're, we're not going to capture this or, we're all just talking past each other, which is more yep. often than not what happens. 
Yep. Yeah. My uh, office is two eight foot whiteboards. So oh that's, that's, my uh, gosh. That's, oh, that's it. That's, that's like all my dream the space that situation. I have. But with the with uh, with drawing it out, especially for retaining it for the purpose of the testing, you know, one of the things I found is that if the the students they draw out that picture for whatever that concept is, and they keep adding to it, it's kind of like that uh, memory bank type of an idea. Yeah. Like they keep working through that picture. When you get to the test, draw it out again. There's no reason why you can't take some time and just draw out those images that you've used to process it. So that way, when you come to whatever the topic is on the test, you can again reprocess that same information. So. Um, Here's a here's the, the thing, and I, I you you shared so much with us, and so here's the thing that I learned a lot as a young engineer. Have you ever heard of a cardboard analyst before? Is this a new concept? I have not. Okay, so we didn't have it in my floor, but we treated it like it it existed this way. So there was a an engineer, a senior engineer, who had a cardboard analyst when he was coming up to speed as an engineer. And it was a full size Chewbacca cardboard cutout. And if you had to design like a like a code design, like if you were doing pseudocode, which I lived in a world where you had to pseudocode everything and then you actually went and coded it kind of kind of deal. You had to get it approved and all that stuff. You you wouldn't take the co the pseudocode to the manager you take it to the cardboard analyst, which was the large freestanding <laughs> Chewbacca. And you would read through the logic of what you were doing to the cardboard analyst. And nine times out of 10, you found your own problems by strictly reading through the logic of what you were doing. And it, trans it, it translates to everything. It doesn't have to be software. It could be building an antenna. It could be doing whatever. If you just speak out loud and listen uh -huh. to yourself in what you're saying, you'd find that the solution to your problem or or the the problem that you created, you could solve it by literally just listening to yourself explain what you were thinking when you originally made the design for the thing you were trying to do. So that's the cardboard analyst in a nutshell. And I, I absolutely love that. Yeah. Lab. Yeah, I mean, most of the time what I'm telling them is you need to go explain that to somebody else. You need to go talk to him, say that to him, make sure if she understands that or if he understands that, then great. Because if your team understands it and I still don't, well, then maybe it's just me. But if you can get some other people to understand it, then you're probably on, on more solid footing. So, yes, <laughs> that's a great idea. I love it. Yeah. And what's cool about that, actually, I think you you've probably done it in a better way, is that you ask you ask them like, "Hey, I'm hearing you. I I see what you're saying. I get it. But let's let's also take it through another person." So that's God. I'm I'm not kidding when I say this is like engineering 101. Is that usually you have a review board where you have some senior level architect that's looking at what you're 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 trying to show, and the architect is is using their vast brain knowledge that they can just pull for the system in question and they go ah that doesn't really make sense where's that coming from and they they, they make those poking questions i oh my gosh i'm like i i, I love it 100 percent. this is exactly <laughs> this is this is fantastic the like this is I this is better this is office. better than like ap college classes what you're doing i don't know if anybody said that but this is like as an engineer oh my gosh this is like I would be shocked if these kids don't come out and they're just like killing it in whatever they want to do. I'm, I'm amazing. So, uh, you know, so I'll, I'll end on this, um, you know, whatever happens with the, the, the tech license and however that plays itself out, you know, I, I, we're going to roll with it. I will say this. I, I don't feel as strongly as you, Josh. Uh, Th there is there me. is a part not of me but what i have seen in the students uh -huh. and is that there and again and not everybody is the same and so it might not be the right way to grow the hobby and so i recognize that what i have seen though is that the students that want to go to general or want to go on HF. 
they do it. They yeah. absolutely do it. They go on HF. Sure. And they go on it by taking that general. And I have never seen a single student that has wanted to get to that point that has not. They have all been able to do it. And the test is not particularly difficult in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, it's it's time intensive. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more science, a little bit more theory than the tech, but not a lot. You know that. Yeah, um, sure. yeah. But they do it. And so, yeah, there's a gatekeeping aspect to it, right, and, that I understand. And, yes, I completely agree. The 10 meters thing is, you know, whatever. It's mm -hmm. not helpful for most of the time, except for right now. Um, you know, but getting that point into the general for them, like they do it and they do it because they want it. Yeah. And the ones that don't, it's really because it's just not that interesting to them or it's not just not that important to them. They're just not anything that's necessarily there for them that they're, you know, that they're trying to accomplish. So part of me, part of me wants to say, I don't know. I, I, I don't mind it the way that it is. So, um, so this is, a, I, 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 I hear you completely. <clears throat> I understand where you're coming from. So really this is, this is the guidance of the FCC on, on what they think the service is. So if you ask me, I want more amateur radio operators that get licensed and then will sort out the licensing and flesh out their knowledge through doing. I am of the Costco sample mindset. My business model is let's give them a taste so then that encourages them to get further licensed. The other side is let's and I'm using I'm using a, a poor phrase that has a lot of baggage, but let's gatekeep technician and general and extra let's create these arbitrary gates that one must pass because they are passionate about doing so and as you pointed out the people that are the most passionate about it will climb any wall to do what they want to do because they have decided that is their thing that they must accomplish right there will always be human beings that will climb everest to you know achieve their goals the the question is strictly from the FCC is like what do you, what do you want the service to be now? At the time when the when the license was created, there wasn't colleges like we have now, right? The, the colleges didn't exist. Higher learning didn't didn't exist, and the FCC and the wisdom of the government. And yes, I give total credit from me, you know, someone who's not a big fan of the central central federal government. They had a lot of wisdom in saying. We need to create a system where we create like free to learn college in the form of RF and we'll hand out licenses for people to explore. And that literally turned into jobs for people that made many people many thousands of dollars, like literally funded their entire lifestyle. The license has changed by the mere factor of like society moving on past it. Now we have colleges where people can take very specific, you know, higher education classes and get degrees out of it. Amateur radio doesn't line up the same way as it did in the past. It doesn't have the same effect as it did. So the, the, really the question of the FCC is like, like almost a philosophical question is we can keep patching things on the side and expanding bandwidths or giving more stuff to technicians or whatnot. But the real the real root of the question is, what is the service to the FCC now? If anybody can go get an RF degree and come out as a hotshot antenna designer working on space vehicles like we have today, and a lot of these people don't even have licenses that come out, amateur radio licenses, because they view it as a non-value added thing, then what is the license? What is it for? What's the goal? What's the point? Kind of goes back to Mike's comment of it goes beyond operating. Well, so if it goes beyond operating, what is it for? Is it for broadcast radio? Well, sure. Most of the engineers that exist in a broadcast radio booth are ham radio licensed because they're you know, that is a valuable skill. But that's also a very tiny subset of actually usable skills based upon how many people are licensed now, 
right? So that's the, that's the, the, the I, I'm, I'm, I'm dipping, like if you're thinking about, I have a shaved ice machine and I'm literally just shaving the top when I'm talking about technician license frequencies and, the, and, and what we give them. The reality is that the FCC has to start considering this. Like this is a, this is a big point. It's a, it's a big point that you have to consider, like all of this, we need a decision. We really do. Well, I, I'll say that, you know, whether it's 10 meters or 15 or 20 or a work band, like whatever it is, you know, you, your point is well made that it is philosophical to what is the nature of the service right? and what is the point of what we're doing and what is the point of this? It's a reevaluation of the, of the system itself in, mm -hmm. and, and the, the process of giving access to that system. And, you know, again, uh, it's, it's fine for me any which way, like truly it, it is, it's okay. I, I think that in the end, we are all still a lot better off having the service and having, you know, that, um, I don't, again, not gatekeeping is not quite the right way, that, that honor bound privilege of responsibility that comes from, you know, working towards something of substance, right? And we are a lot better off regardless of what that particular outcome is. But the the due diligence of fi figuring out the philosophy for the next 50 years or 60 or 100 years is really, really important to be yeah, done. Yeah, and, and oh man, there, there's nothing, I mean, we, actually, you know, Drew and I were talking about Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts before we went live. I understand the meritocracy of like, yeah, no, I got an extra. I am an extra class operator. Does that mean I'm better than you? In some ways, arguably, in the knowledge base in a certain area, maybe, maybe. But the problem is that we've turned we've turned the license and the hobby into like extras almost lording that over other people, like it's some kind of untainable knowledge that can exist. I've seen it. I know there's plenty of people in the chat who be like, oh yeah, some guys are real big jerks. In, in a perfect world, the license structure would just be it, it's based off of like what you want to do and how hard you want to go to be able to achieve it. Right. That would be the, the best case scenario. But then just human nature gets involved. And now we have the meritocracy of like, hey, oh, I'm I'm higher ranked than you are because I'm an extra. And so that means I'm much more knowledgeable than you are. And the reality is, you know, the the the, the kids who are doing satellite radio communication in your school for instance are probably more knowledgeable about that than an extra is that only does hf in rag shoes right so how do you square that circle y you can't really right so it, there there's so much baggage that goes into this and i'm i'm just dipping into it and also it's it's getting long in the live stream so so you know what i'm so saying i i i definitely know what you're saying because i think that that is an experience that is very real for a lot of people in terms of the um, the nature of adulthood at times and the sure. way that we compete, um, you know, in in workplaces at times. Yes. Um, and the way that we have to, you know, elevate to a degree. I will say this for the kids, the with that rank comes a lot more responsibility and a lot more expectation, not a lot more <laughs> honor or, or, or uh, um, you know, uh, ability to lord, lord it over anyone else. The, the kids that I have that are extras, they are the ones that the others can often look to and say, hey, can you please help me? And they're the ones that will be the ones to go and actively help. And so, in some small way, and not that any and anyone can't, but there is something uh, inherent in that hierarchical structure that can be productive if, again, fostered with the right mentality. That you're not better; you just pass the test, right? And it doesn't mean that you know anything more. But if you do, then here, please help to transfer that knowledge on. We expect more from you. Right. We expect more from you. And 
you know, again, if that's fostered oh. in that particular way, then great, because that only that only encourages the others to grow to that level, to that next level, to level up, to be able to then turn around and do the same things for others that have been done for them. So that's how it should work. That is how it yeah. should work. That is literally the epitome of how it should be. What you're doing is like perfect from my point of view. Chat or anyone else listening, listen, you know, feel free to chime in. Real quick, Josh, I 100% agree with Drew. Absolutely fantastic. But I am going to have to jump out for tonight. Absolutely great live stream. Drew, you need to come back on at some point. This yes. was absolutely fantastic. And I thank you for everything you do. And I'll see everyone next week. Take it easy, Frank, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the work you did. Thanks for all the DMs. I don't tell you, I, no I, I cannot say, like, uh, Frank has, like, been really helpful in the live streams. I really do appreciate you, man. So have a good rest of your weekend. Do appreciate it. Guys, I am also at the point where I'm going to probably wrap up here. So I don't know. Um, you know, my favorite thing is talking about movies because I don't get to watch a lot of them. So I would like a recommendation for a hot sci-fi movie. Does anybody have a hot sci-fi movie? Somebody a new was one this to year. Ask a question, Josh. Oh, okay. I'll take a question. Go ahead. Where's the question? Go ahead. In Discord. Or is it? Was it YouTube? Yeah, I'm hearing you. you. Um. Go ahead. I'm not hearing you. Who's talking? Yep, I can hear you. Can hear you. He's trolling you, I think. Who is it? Okay, who is it that's talking? Because I can't hear them. Hello? See what I'm talking Park about? Okay, yeah, Josh, yeah, yeah. Parky, Josh. Parky, okay. Punch. You're good. Parky Pine Punch. So I, I muted you because you had your mic like hold open for like multiple minutes. I muted your uh, mic. So now I can minutes. hear you. Go ahead. Yes. Like actually, like minutes? Yes. Like multiple yes. minutes. Yes. Oh my. And <laughs> well, it was. Nobody, I didn't realize that. It was, Sorry. it was like three hours ago. So don't worry about it. That's why I muted you. I was, I, I think I was trying to tell you is that my, uh, no, 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 no. My you, you weren't talking. You weren't off, talking. I said, you know, I, I said, who was it that was, ha who has it that, ha who has the open mic? And no one responded. So I just muted you because it was, yeah, it was easier. I, I, You're good. I, Go I ahead. Real, I didn't realize. It's because, you know, when you hold down on the mobile app and then you, the, you literally were not there. You were not there. There was nobody piloting your station. Because I said, who has the open mic? Because I'm in streamer mode, so I, I don't have your 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 name is is only a P with with three dots. And so I said, who has the open mic with the pug face or the dog face? And there was there was no response. So I said, Okay, we're just gonna meet you. You're good. Uh, Go ahead, man. Um <laughs> What a burger or five guys. <laughs> what a burger. 100%. I remember that was the one of the first things I ever heard when I joined when I joined one of the first ones of these like two, has, two, has my answer has my answer changed? It was Whataburger, right? I, I can't remember. Oh, why I, I don't even bring up 5 years ago. I was hoping no, to I, incite a, I was hoping to incite a large debate. No, um so I, I I'm I'm going to I'm going to go Whataburger for two reasons. The service is spectacular at Whataburger. If you actually eat in the establishment, it's amazing. Further, it's like way less expensive than Five Guys. Five Guys is so expensive. And I don't like their fries. I just I just don't like their fries. Yeah, I rarely have either. I've never had Whataburger ever. I mean, I don't think there's a single one in my state. Or I don't know if there's even one in Nebraska. You got, anybody else in the chat have a hot take on Whataburger versus uh, Five Guys? I had a five guys just open up down up the road from where I work and I went and spent 25 bucks on a burger and I have been that disappointed, disappointed in a long while. All I got to say is somebody dropped a hot zippies greater than what a burger. And that is the right answer is the only answer, but you know, what is I mean, so something should tell you. I mean, if, if the South Dakota doesn't like a burger, you know, we're the beef people, you know, you know, that means it's not a good burger. So wait, wait, Mike. So you're you're anti Whataburger versus uh, Five Guys. So Five Guys is better than Whataburger. I didn't say that. 
Okay. Whataburger sucks. It's bad. Okay. Like everything I've had there, their burger, their fries, their menu, it's bad. I've okay. never been a fan of Five Guys either. So this whole conversation, I'm not the guy to talk to about this because I think that both suck equally. No, I won't say that. Five Guys is better than Whataburger. Hands down. Really? They both suck. But Whataburger is just bad. Can no. I chime in as a lifelong You're Texan? not the only one I've heard that from either. The first time I ever heard about that restaurant, it was someone would say, man, there's some weird stuff in there. It does weird stuff to you. you know? They no, it's not about the stuff. It's I'm coming purely from flavor. He's I'm coming saying, from, he, he's coming like from a, Flavor it, Town. It like he's coming from Flavor Town. Different angles of badness. <laughs> I don't like either one. I was well, never a fan of Five Guys. Like, Five Guys was, like, the thing. Like, everybody's like, oh, you got to try this Five Guys burger, blah, blah, blah. Their fries the suck. Good. Their, their, fries suck. No. their fries suck. The, their I, fries suck. Their fries are garbage. Their fries are worse than in and outs Straight up. I don't care who. Come at me. I don't care. Mike, who, who's no, a better agree. burger joint for you? So, like, that's... <sighs> nobody. Nobody. There's, there's no good burger joint. Unless you go to... Um, like, really good. I'm not the guy to ask this question. Okay. All right. Not really. Because you mean there's not really good, any not, good chain not, not because I don't know what I'm talking Not because I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I do know what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, it, it, like, it, <sighs> so my mom and I were on the search for, like, a good burger in, okay. in, in Detroit. Okay. So just take Detroit, put a pin on the map, and make a circle. We've been there, right? Okay. Five Guys is a chain. They have their thing. They do their little burger or whatever. Their fries are garbage. They throw your peanuts on the, on the floor or whatever. Garbage. The best mm -hmm. burger that I've... <clears throat> almost went into Christopher Walken there. Best burger that I ever had was, uh, and I and I say the best burger from a restaurant was from. Do you do you remember Michael Simon, Chef Michael Simon, bald guy from Cleveland? He was on the Food Network and stuff. Mm -hmm. He had a place called B Spot Burgers, Brats, and Beer is what it's. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I lived in Cleveland. I would go to B-Spot because I, I, I lived right next door to it. And I would drink a KBS, a Kentucky, uh, Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale, KBA. Whatever. Kentucky Bourbon Stout, yeah. It wasn't a stout. It was a, it was a Kentucky. I'm, I'm calling it wrong. Anyway, so the burger was, it's, he called it the Lola, L-O-L-A. Okay. It was a burger, pickled onions. Uh, Fantastic. A beautifully, a beautifully, um, like fried egg on top, where the egg is a little bit of runny. I'm a sunny side up egg guy kind of guy. On a burger, they put that on a on a burger. Okay, but they they sourced their meat locally. Like there's there were only I think three B spots that that Chef Michael Simon made. One of them was in uh, just just north of Detroit in Royal Oak. But the Lola burger and, and the pickled onions and the uh, uh, the the fried egg just and I've had fried egg on a burger in other places. I've had peanut butter on a burger in Baltimore, Maryland. Right? Yeah, like, I, I'm dude, down. Peanut butter, like I've I've traveled. Okay. Yeah. I know my stuff. I know my burger. And you got to travel to put peanut butter on a burger, right, Mike? <laughs> well, so, well, you, you do. You do. You do. You do. But you like do. My, my mom and I's thing was like, we need to find a good burger. And yeah. we ended up going to a place called Vincetti Garage on Woodward in Royal Oak. And it was a play on the Lola. The, like, the Lola is still the best burger for me. Um... I'm I'm dragging on, but case in point, you can't like 
you can't go to a a, a franchise like uh, Five Guys kind of place and expect like a good burger. What you're getting is McDonald's, except you're getting like two patties, right? Oh, uh, I think that's. I think I think you're, that's, I, I, I think that's hyperbole a little bit. That's a little bit of yeah, hyperbole. I was, I was just about to say oh, that exact thing. Yeah, we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight. There's a lot of guys. There was a big. Pile okay, up okay. Right. So here, here. Have you had Shake Shack? Have you had Shake Shack? I've not. Shake had Shack freaking smacks. So if dollar amount is no consequence, Shake Shack is probably the recommendation I would point you at for a burger. Shake Shack is really good. Really good. You can get caramelized onions, pickled onions. You can get a variety of things with a fantastic bun. Shake Shack is really good. Very expensive. Very expensive. What's so your definition of very expensive? How much does a burger cost? Like, you, if Josh were to go to Shake Shack and get a burger, what do you like? You I, I probably dollars, won't walk you... out of there with a burger, fries, and a drink for under thirteen dollars at Shake Shack. Okay, yeah, that's fun. I it's probably north of that, depending on how you get your fries and your burger. But 13, like to me, that's insane. That's yeah, that's like fifteen dollars. Like. And That's a crazy. Not, like, no, but it is. So I'll tell you why. Good. I'll tell you why it is. I'll tell you why it is. So the reason I view that as crazy is because I got In N Out. In N Out is still a very well balanced burger, not the best burger, well balanced burger, good fries. If you order them extra crispy, maybe animal style, you get yourself a lemonade. You're all good. You're under ten dollars for the whole thing. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger yeah, from In N Out is great. It's great. No, the best the best restaurant is where you can order your breakfast gorilla style. <laughs> uh, I will tell up. you. I'll tell you what. My best breakfast, like, uh, so I I have a uh, if I go to a restaurant at lunchtime, and they have a Reuben sandwich on the menu, I'm a, I, I I'm a horrible person that I like. If you have a Reuben, I'm gonna order it. If I go to a, re a breakfast joint, and they have a corned beef hash. And they'll let you order it extra crispy with hash browns, extra crispy, and an egg runny over a uh, sunny sunny side up or runny or whatever. Like that's the jam. Oh my god, that's that's yeah. Oh my god, yeah, it doesn't You're it doesn't take hero, much that's, that's it, for breakfast me. food. It doesn't take oh. much to make me happy. Just you know, hash browns and bacon lard. That's the best thing. But but corned beef hash extra crispy, where they they cook it a long time on that griddle with extra crispy hash browns, and then you hit that egg with the yolk and just break it all. Oh my god, but. I can't do that on a burger. Can't do that. I want like caramelized onions. Got to have the caramelized onions. That's why the in and out is probably one of my favorite, my go-to, one of my go-to. Um, I, I got to say, I, I'm going to go back. What a burger has a lot of options. They're, they're really good. And I'm, I, I can't, I can't complain about a Whataburger to be honest. I, I'd rather have a Whataburger or five guys, but I'm still, I'm still pretty diehard in and out for the price for the price if you're factoring in dollars all right josh mike if you make it up here up to washington for uh the hra pack beach event we'll uh do east side big toms and they have some of the best burgers you've ever had it's uh, not a chain it's a small locally owned place delicious now, burgers now see here's the thing if you're talking about local burgers we have slater's 50 50 out here and Slater's 50-50 is 50% chopped up bacon that's mixed up in the burger patty. That's insane to beat. And they do a peanut butter burger, which is to die for. That's not what we're talking about. That's a that's a hard that's a hard act to follow. But I hear you. I'm with you. I'll eat any burger. I don't care. How close is that to Disneyland? Because I'm gonna be up there in May. Super close. Super close. Yeah. Very close All to right. it. Yeah, it's it in out. Anaheim. Yeah. So as a lifelong Texan and having spent time in Oklahoma as well, I can tell you Whataburger is definitely not the best, no. especially since I got rid of the spice, uh, sweet and spicy bacon burger. That really ticked me off. But In-N-Out, I think, is definitely the best chain. Freddy's sucks. 
and steak and shake. We used to have those. Those are freaking awesome too. But I think the best that I've had is up in Oklahoma. There's this place called Ron's uh, burgers and chili. It's one of the best damn burgers you'll ever find. And they actually have one. Mike, you could go try this. They have one in Tomball and in Magnolia. What's uh, it called? Ron's hamburgers and chili. Ron's hamburgers and chili. Yes. All right. Stateside, I don't know of a better fast food joint than In and Out. Personally, that's my favorite. But all my uh, Ohana fans, all the all the people from Hawaii, Zippies, man, Zippies. I need a Zippies everywhere. Zippies is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, oh, cool. I, I I put a Freddy's and In and Out pretty neck and neck. I don't. Maybe it's just the one I went to was bad. You know, the Mesa, Arizona one, or whatever. Um, I don't know. I. I can't. I, there's nothing. I wouldn't go to In and Out again. Also, why? A different item. Why? It's why? just the burger. I mean, it's well balanced for the price. For the price. For the price. Maybe I can't quite remember. Oh the fries, snap! The fries. There wasn't anything too special about them either. Literally, KH6 WI is at Zippy's right now, waiting on an order to go. Of course, Zippy's dear. is so good. So good. Did you know? Did you know, Josh, that KH6 WI is now on D Star? Is he? Oh, interesting. He is. Yeah. I, I, I mean, that that is somewhat important, but it's less important to the fact that Zippy's is the best fast food <laughs> chain. That's the right but, answer. Uh, I, I, some of the one of the best burgers, uh, in my experience, from a, from a restaurant is Nick's Hamburger Shop in Brookings, South Dakota. Oh, and none of you can prove none of you can prove me wrong because I guarantee you none of you have had one. Okay, straight up though. So here's here's my here's my shot. I'll give you my like local Joe shot on a local burger. I ended up in uh, Minnesota, and we ended up in uh, what's the Twin Cities. So I was on the uh, Minneapolis. What's the other What's the other city? Somebody help me out. Bloomington. No, the Twin Saint, Cities. St. Paul. St. Paul. St. Saint, Saint Paul. Oh, Saint, a, sorry, I'm yeah. so sorry. So we went to St. Paul to get Juicy Lucy's, and that was a friggin' experience. That was amazing. A proper Juicy Lucy was awesome. One of the best burgers I've ever had in my entire so, life. Josh, that was amazing. I lived three blocks down from Matt's, which had Juicy Lucy's. We we was... went to the quote unquote the spot. We had somebody drive us in there that lives in uh, Minneapolis, and he's like, "We gotta go. We gotta go to the other city. We can't do this in Minneapolis." I was like, "All right, we're going." It was the one of the best burgers I've had in my life. the The Juicy Lucy in St. Paul was amazing, amazing. I remember it like it ten over ten years now. One of my favorite burger experiences, and that's like a local joint. That's I'm I'm down with that. So if you ever go to Hawaii yeah. again, you need to try a place in Waimanalo called Kaniki's. That place is freaking awesome too. I'm sure Hamstick Eric's probably had it before. It's in Waimanalo. It's freaking awesome, dude. Oh, I do I do love. It. So uh, yeah, what's <laughs> since since we're fighting, what's the best cheesesteak? <laughs> Chicago pizza is the best. The cheese is on the bottom. The cheese is on the bottom. <laughs> Did you see John Stewart's thing on Chicago pizza? No. I I, I was, hate people getting so mad about pizzas. I hate it. I hate hey. it so much because I love Chicago pizza. I love New York pizza. I love all the pizzas. I love food. I don't care. But people get I understand. so upset. I love food too. They get so mad. Why? Watch John. Watch, watch John. All of our pizzas. They all look thing about Chicago pizza. And as Josh, as a side note, I'm gonna I'll mute myself here in a second. Yeah. We, t we the the McDonald's at the uh, hotel in front of us. Yeah. In, at Hamcation, turns out that actually is the one of the bigger McDonald's. I just I just watched a documentary on that McDonald's the other day. Yeah. So, uh, Mike Mike Stupid. chimed in with that. The the, the parking lot the 
<laughs> Literally, the McDonald's by the parking lot at the Rosen Inn is one of the most traffic McDonald's in the entire no, nation. Not the most traffic, physically sized building. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Not traffic. It's a big it's it's a it's a dual story McDonald's. Yeah. Josh. Josh, yes. we yes, sir. we we ordered we ordered on the app and we went through the drive through. Yeah, we, yeah, we were not experiencing uh, the full gravitas of this whole thing. I feel I feel we went in one morning, but there's like there's an elevator that takes you upstairs to. Is there a, an elevator? Of course, there's an elevator. Yes, they have to. Yeah. ADA. So, like Josh, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> we'll see next year. <laughs> next year, man. Year. Next year. We're we'll we're dining time. in. Oh, we're dining in. <laughs> Yeah, so like they have a they have a wood fired stove. You can get a McPizza there. You can get a McPizza. I didn't know you can get a McPizza. Yeah, where they have they have a deli, not a deli. Excuse me. There there's a there is a legit. I don't. How were you? It was no. You weren't there. It was me and Jason and Frank. I think that went in that McDonald's at the Rosen International where we get our breakfast every morning. Yeah, every morning is legit. The biggest McDonald's, and by biggest I mean physical size building in at least the United States. In McDonald's Dome, yes. It, largest, it is, largest it is There is an upstairs. There is an arcade upstairs. What? There is, dude, I'm where, not. Where is I'm, this? It's in, it's in freaking uh, wherever the Rosen International is. It's on that corner. The Rosen Inn. On international is where we were staying. Like where we were looking, like our Josh. Like, if you and I were to look out our balcony and we that would McDonald's, see it. it, it would be that prominent. Is the, that is the biggest physical size, not volume. Not I'm not talking money. I'm talking physical size McDonald's in the world or the or the United States. You think, like, they have a, you think they have a Street Fighter cabinet in there? Can we get to play some Street Fighter? No, but I'll tell you what they do have. They have the um, Hulk uh the Hulk Hogan yes! uh, wrestling store yes! directly across the street from that. I might the yeah. biggest the biggest McDonald's is in Venita, Oklahoma over I forty four uh north oh, east of Tulsa. Right. Yeah, well, go technically refresh. But there's because... one in Nevada too that's really huge. Like it's it looks like a like a barn. I just watched a video. I mean, literally within the last five days about the McDonald's that you and I ate at every day at Hamcation. We Josh. did. We did. There's an elevator that takes you up. And we, thank you we for never the breakfast. Did that sir. We thank you the for the breakfast. If I didn't say that. Oh, thank it's my privilege. Breakfast. Thank you for not uh, snoring. Um, oh no! Yeah, and driving and doing all the other things. Yeah. No, and I'm like, I'm not even kidding. Like the that McDonald's, like it seems like a normal McDonald's. It's not that big. But it's big. Yeah, it's big. There, there is legit a. Uh, if you go inside, there is a wood fired. Maybe not wood fired, but I, I might be exaggerating. But there's a pizza oven that has a fire. I've seen it. I watched it. I'm a pizza guy. I'm inside McDonald's. You go, there's a bakery. Bakery, that's what I meant to say. I said Billy earlier. I meant to say bakery. There's Over on one side, there's a bakery. On, so, on this side, there's like the regular McDonald's. And then you turn to the right, and there's like this legit brick oven fire pizza making thing. And I think they also serve pasta there. Okay, so Mike, uh, then I have to ask this uh, follow-on question because you qualified yourself as a pizza aficionado. Where is the uh, best pizza? Uh, yes. Where, 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 like, wh what is the well? First, what is the best pizza, and then where do, where does one find that pizza? Well, so the best pizza I've not had, but I would say it's in New Haven, Connecticut. I'll follow up with that to say that the best pizza that I have had is from Tomatoes A Pizza in Farmington, Michigan. Because they were trained by, uh, is it Pepe's or whatever the hell is in New Haven? The real thin crust, like that's, the, that's who they were trained by. 
So, New Haven. Is this like a, uh, what is it, Dave Portnoy Barstool, who does like the pizza review? Looking for that crispy crust. Dave Portnoy crust. and I would be very much aligned in okay. our uh, pizza. So you like that good uh, undercarriage, pizza. that crispy undercarriage, no flop kind of thing? Uh, I don't give a shit about an undercarriage. I, that's that's something he kind of did. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah, he did. I've watched like, many of his reviews. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I love me. He's a fucking pizza guy, right? But And, and I thought about doing a pizza review channel. And then typed in YouTube pizza reviews, and then he came. This is years ago, um, but yeah, uh, Dave and I have um, so his, so Dave Portnoy's favorite restaurant pizza in in uh, in New Haven, Connecticut. Like the pe- the the people that run the place in Farmington, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Like uh, just fucking middle of nowhere, right? Suburb of Detroit. They were taught by that guy, by by Peppies or whatever the fuck it is, right? Okay. So I I that's that's my jam. Yeah, like they if I go to if I if 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 Josh if you and I were to walk into Tomatoes of Pizza right now at Grand River and Halstead Road, and I walked in there. They would just start cooking a white pizza for me. Wow! Like it's just, yeah. Like they, uh, what 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 they do qualifies a, a white pizza? Is that like a, an Alfredo sauce fine, or dude. like what is that? No, it's 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 just the the uh, the thin crust as they normally do. Um, uh, mozzarella cheese, maybe some olive oil, uh, very thinly sliced tomatoes, and some basil. That's it. Just like. Like margarita, but they okay. call it the white. Okay. But they don't do the mozzarella in like the the thin like asshole margarita kind of way where you might. Oh, get like a the bite big chunk, mozzarella. the big circle of mozzarella. Yeah. The mozz they just like thrown right yeah, out. Yeah, you have to like chew it's through it, or else you're gonna rip it off the, the thing. Pizza. It's just shredded mozz over the whole thing. But they got these these just everything they do is fresh. That's that's the key. So you get these really thin, like you know when the good fellas when the guys are in the in jail, but they're like Tony always slices the the garlic really really thin. You know, it's like that. But I, just, I heard oh, and, so and there's a, garlic on it. There's actually chunks like of garlic. Chunks of garlic. On See, that's I I it. really like yeah, like yeah, big yeah. chunks of garlic. Like you know, okay, mince. You can go ahead and give me mince. That's fine. No, but, there's there's probably they're, they're probably like eight by eight uh, eighth inch chunks of garlic. It's just it's fucking amazing. It's my okay. favorite pizza in the world. Best pizza okay. I've ever had. Okay. I've been I've been to I've been to New York City and I've had pizza. New I've York been to City. I've been to Chicago. I've had the pizza. So, I mean, I have Chicago. not had the privilege of being in New Haven, Connecticut, where this, the a uh, pizza, okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? The, I'm talking about my restaurant is called Tomatoes a uh, Pizza. So, what, what are your I'm thoughts not, on the Chicago pizza? Is that actually a pizza? They can go fuck themselves. That's a pie. That's what I'm telling you, dude. Watch John Stewart's. Thoughts <laughs> on uh, okay? It's, it's not a it's not a pizza. It's a pizza. It's a savory just, pie. Chicago can go. F- they like, have wow! No I'm so glad that that blanked basement. itself out. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah, good. I, uh, I feel Chicago like Chicago doesn't uh, know what pizza is, and I will. That is. If there's one, like we've we've had a few hills that I'll die on, you know, yeah. on this on this after chat, yeah. Uh, I that is that is the pinnacle of hills that I will die on. That Chicago, Chicago is crap uh, for pizza. I will fight you. I will fight you to death. You will not win, Chicago. So I will I, destroy you. I, I feel that is like not pizza. I feel like California gets a bad rap in a lot of ways, but I, I will say, like as a Californian, I can walk into some of these towns and I'd say, like, "Hey, I'm just from California. I just want to experience, like, what's the best pizza?" And the, the, then all the locals will crowd around me and be like, "This is the best pizza. You should try this. This is the best." And then I will get the most authentic experience that I could possibly get when I go anywhere. Whether it's New York, Chicago, whatever, 
Like I just say, like, hey, I'm I'm just looking for the yeah, best. So, so so you went to Chicago and was like, hey, I'm from California. What's the best pizza that I can get? And that's how that happened. No, I mean I'm not like an asshole like that. I mean like as a part of things that roll out. If anybody asks that question, <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm I'm an out of towner. I'm here. I'm looking for good food, and I want to try some Chicago pizza. Right, like that, you know that, you know what I mean. Like if you just say like, "Hey, I'm not about like this culture. I'm 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 an outsider of all of this. You guys live this world. Like, what's your favorite? Tell me what your favorite is. I want to experience what you like. That's what I generally do. I ask people, "Hey, what is your favorite thing? I want to try that. Like, that's what I would like to try. That's it. Like, I I, I don't make it more complicated than that. Oh, yeah, okay. You're, I, mean, I you're looked on Google you're Maps. Food. I looked on Google Maps. Farmington, Michigan is not in the middle of nowhere. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, we're just we're whacking. It's a little, it's a little like it's a little enclave, like just a little polygon on the map next to Detroit, and it's completely okay. surrounded by buildings. Do you Josh, have you tried brother? Mary's Pizza Shack? Where's that? It's up near Santa Rosa. Oh, that. Do you know how far that is from me? It's pretty far. Well, I didn't know if you've been up the coast. Uh, I mean, I go to Santa Rosa, but I'm usually getting like a uh, barbecue when I'm up there. I'm usually uh, getting yeah, tri-tip dude. when I'm up there. I'm not getting pizza. Mary's, Mary's is freaking good, dude. You got to try it. But round table is freaking awesome too. Oh, round table though. I guess. Like, I, I, well, I, we I don't have add... it in Texas. We don't have it in Texas. So when I go to California, I do eat round table. Uh, I can see that. I can see that. Uh, I don't know. Pizza is such a weird thing now. So pizza pizza has become so commercialized that like you have to almost go local like all the time to get like good pizza. But even then, it's kind of like it depends on what you mean by good pizza. Like it's it's not it's not all the same. It's it's very relative. Let me just add that um, Ancona, Italy, not oh. the best place for pizza. You gotta see, go to Naples. See, for you that. know what? You know what, dude? You know, Mike, that there are so many videos on YouTube about Americans watching Italian pizza, like people like doing street pizza and all that stuff, and like handing it off. And Americans are like, "That's not good pizza. It's too floppy. It's not it, no undercarriage." And everybody's like, "Ah, that's where pizza comes from, and then this is where yeah. the origin is." See, I am of the mindset that pizza has evolved for the better through being infused <laughs> with American culture. That's my point of view. Okay. okay. I'm going to piss no, a lot of people no, off no. saying this. I, 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 was, I was in Italy. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I, I, did I, was just, I did it. I was just in the wrong part of Italy. And I know that. I know. <laughs> the, I just, the wrong like, part not, of Italy has the I wrong pizza. The I, wrong I, I got it. I got I it. A, I was, no, 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 no. I mean that. I mean that very genuinely. <laughs> I okay. was in Ancona. I was not in uh, Naples. Okay. When you think Found pizza, yourselves you in think the like in the Naples. hoods of Milan. I the the pizza that I had in Italy, I was like, eh, it was really not. It was really not that good. See, and I used to live in uh, in Naples, and the pizza there, oh, Diavolo pizza, is to die for. I'm going to piss a lot of people off saying this, but uh, I think Little Caesars has the best pizza. Oh, yeah. No, that's totally crap. Yeah, no, it's not straight up trolling right there. Straight up trolling. For $5? $5, you can't beat that. that uh, 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 okay, okay. A tombstone you can, pizza beats that. You can, you can add a cost. Sauce. You can add a cost to anything and make it like... So a Shegu radio is the best radio because it's it's so much cheaper, right? So best, Little Caesars is the Shegu of pizza. You know, the, it's the Shegu pizza. Mama, it's Mama Celeste is the best pizza. No, but in real hideaway pizza up in Oklahoma, that is the best pizza. See, Little, if, if, well, Little Caesars, Caesar's good. pizza tune. Now, now, okay, I got two actually, things. actually, that that is a point. I'll, the crazy bread with the with the crazy marinara sauce that goes along with it. I'm I'm down. I'm with you. I love it. I love I love Little Caesars, in that in that specific case, the pizza is trash. I almost got Dude, shot just... in Huntsville trying to get pizza out of <laughs> out of Little Caesars. <laughs> Dude, I grew up on that stuff. I mean, I was poor, so I mean, that's that's what I knew until like I became an adult. 
And and nobody, I'm not joking. I was literally going to the ham radio meetup after Huntsville Ham Fest at the Little Caesars buying 14 pizzas. And there was gun crime happening in front of the Little Caesars. But to be fair, when's the last time you went to a Little Caesars that wasn't in somewhat of a sketch area? Oh, yeah, totally. No, this is all <laughs> on me. I, 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 was the, I was the problem. I inserted like myself in this situation. Yeah, yeah, totally. Don't, totally. It's like, it's like going to a Waffle House. A good area it's like going a to a Waffle dollar. House. I, why did I not expect a fight to break out at the Waffle House? Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Totally. What's the best Waffle House y'all have ever had? Uh, I think it's we need uh, everywhere. I think we need I Bob. Go, we, need, we need our finder Bob to answer that question. Yeah. I don't know. The, uh, the best, go uh, the best Waffle House I've been to was... Uh, in Jackson, Mississippi. All right, real fast. Uh, Mike's gone. He's heading out. I also have to head out because my family's back. So we're going to try and, I don't know, it's like 11 o'clock. So we're not doing much of anything other than probably going to bed here because I am tired. Did you want those movie recommendations? I, I did. Uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes ago. <laughs> hey, well, a good year. A good year is uh, Russell Crowe. The movie is well, called A Good Year? You want to. You wanted sci-fi though, right? Thirteenth Warrior. Sci-fi. The okay. I wanted to wrap this up, but then you hit me with Thirteen Warrior. The Thirteen Warrior is a bad movie. It's a fun movie, but it's a bad movie, and I'll explain why. Antonio y Pandalas. It's an awful movie, but it is entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Steven okay. As, as long as you as class. long as you hold that opinion, I'm very happy. So. He goes from showing people, the Vikings that he's working with, that he has no sword capability whatsoever. And then all they had to do was carve it into a scimitar. And then now he's like one of the best sword fighters ever. Watch that movie again. And they hand him a Viking longsword, which, by the way, Vikings didn't have longswords. That was very rare. That was, like, for earls and stuff that would have that. They'd have axes and, and stuff with, like, a, a wooden shaft and a, and a bladed end. The fact that they allowed him to take a sword and bore it out to a scimitar, and then he becomes, like, a kicking-the-sword-in-the-air pro is insane insane and the fact that he was on like three longboat rides and he was just like i learned viking now that is offensive in the sense that like you could just pick that stuff up just by hanging out that's crazy the entirety of that movie is wild 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 <laughs> just not not okay not okay at all hey don't forget the crazy spider woman that bear woman or whatever the heck it is, the spider monkey bear woman that's all crazy or all get out. I mean, I'm okay with the supernatural aspects of it. Like, go ahead. You can say that. I mean, like, they start killing them. So, to me, the, the supernatural aspects, when they start killing them and they become more and more human, is the realization that they just hype this all up in their heads too much. And they're like, wait a second. We're big Viking dudes. Why don't we just cut everybody up with a sword? Oh, problem solved. Like, that's, that seems very realistic. They hyped it up too much, and then they're like, wait, what if you just hit it more with a sword? Right? Like, that that totally made sense. Like, I had no problem with that. But the whole, like, figured out the entire language on a boat ride? No. And then, like, I have no ability to use a sword whatsoever. But if you carved it into a scimitar, then I know how to use it? That's, like... Bro, come on. Like, there's no relative knowledge that you could dip into at all. Come on. that That's, yeah, not a big fan. But Josh, he listened. <laughs> yeah, he did. He listened hard. Yeah, he did. I got to ask right. before you leave, uh, Josh, have you ever seen the show I Think You Should Leave? Oh, God, I love that show. Dude, I that love is it. The be that is the best. It, that it, is the second best comedy to Letterkenny. If you are addicted to cringe, like if you if you watch cringe and it rejuvenates you as a human being, I think you should leave should be a part of your repertoire. <laughs> it is a, are you sure about that? It is so cringy. It is so Dude, cringe. It is so but much seriously. Like second cringe best on comedy. purpose. 
Second best comedy to Letterkenny or Shorzy. If you haven't seen Shorzy, you need to watch Shorzy. Uh, I like Letterkenny, but I like Trailer Park Boys more than Letterkenny. Personally, uh, dude, Trailer Park Boys is great too. But Freaking but I OG. grew up like at that time when Trailer Park Boys. Tra- Trailer Park Boys was my Letterkenny. Like if you think about it, when it was coming out, like I I was there live when the Swayze train was rolling, like that kind of thing. Like I I I'm I'm a big Trailer Park Boys guy. Yeah, the Canadians are making some really good comedies now. They are. They're they're doing a great job. Love the Canadians. Love my my, I got love a, my brothers a movie. and sisters of the north. I got a movie recommendation that's bordering on radio and sci-fi. Oh, okay. Oh, band uh the band's open up, guys. Get on 40. Uh so I mean, I'm sure you've already seen it, but uh the first hour or so of contact when they're doing uh the intercepting of the alien signals and decoding it is it's so good. I, I mentioned that on the, on the podcast. I'm like, hey, Contact hasn't made the list, and it's very radio-centric. And I don't think my wife has seen it. Leia hasn't seen Contact, which is crazy to me. Crazy. Yeah, I, I really like it. It's a good movie. Contact. Yeah, Contact is a good movie. You should watch it. Everybody's still watching right now. 176 people watching right now. That's awesome. Thank you so much for hanging out so long. All right, also, guys. The, yeah. the Zippies is not that great today. I, I made a poor choice. What'd you buy? What'd you get? Uh, I got the Salisbury steak. Oh, no. That's a... You got to get spam. Have... Are you kidding? Have you had Kaniki's, Eric? No, I haven't. Hey, yeah, did... you need to go try it. It's over in Waimanalo. Do they still have puka dogs out there? Is puka dogs gone? What's puka dogs? That's where they had like the the bread roll that they put on the spit that was like hot. It would toast the bun, and then they put the toppings in it, and they put the hot dog in it. Um, I'm not gonna say they haven't. They don't have them, but I have. That was like a them. Honolulu thing, so it it probably didn't make it all the way to Maui. But I don't or no, you're in. Oh uh, no, I'm in Oahu. Island. I uh, yeah. oh, you are in Oahu. Yeah, I don't. But... I don't go to the downtown area very much though. Oh, I we're we're getting comments that I do believe Puka Dogs is gone. Puka Dogs was good. It was really good. Hey, do you get the? I ask a CW question when you guys are done. I'll, I'll we'll take this as the last question. Go ahead, CW question. Love it. All right. So I I've recently got into CW. What would you suggest for a good like station key that's going to stay at the house? <laughs> you know? Do you know the question that I'm about to ask? Bengali. Bengali. No, no. Do you Bridger, know the question? How much I'm do you want? How much? Um, I, I'd like to keep it under three hundred bucks. Oh, um. So, Bencher. Well, okay. What What's the radio? Just out of curiosity, what's the radio? Uh, radio I'm using is a uh, DX10 or X D yeah, DX10. And you're never gonna go portable with it. It's just like a firm fixed thing that lives. Yeah, so that, that that key is going to be specifically staying at home. Um, I got a really awesome gift uh, from the guy that I bought my KX2 from. He uh, actually gave me a Bugali uh, adventure key. Oh, okay. He gave you a Bugali. Okay. Um. So how much? Is so I'd like something stuff? a little bit bigger that I can like leave at home. Would you say your price was three hundred dollars? Three hundred? I'd like to keep it under three hundred if possible. Like I know, mm-hmm. like some of those Bugalis are just beautiful keys, but. Damn, they are expensive. So you want a big, heavy boy. Signature is probably the one. Yeah, 269, well, 269 euro. So that's a good looking key. Uh, Sculpture is probably what I would point at. Where's Sculpture at? N3ZN Uh, also has a couple under 300 as well. N3ZN is also a, 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 oh boy, sold out. Don't forget to check Craigslist because you can find some really good deals. So if you can if you can find a good deal on a, uh, a Bagali sculpture, sculpture is a very very good key. That would be the tops in the I'm never gonna take this out of the shack key. That's the one sculpture. Uh, N3ZN is another one. N3ZN is at all the ham shack or all the ham shows. Great great guy, really fantastic. <laughs> So yeah, like to- I, I can't say that I'm not real lucky because like I, I have uh, the N3ZN light that mm-hmm. what that I got from um, Ham Radio Dude. He actually lives pretty close to me, and I bought bought that from him. Mm-hmm. 
And then when I bought my KX2 used, the guy gave me that Bugali Adventure. You you have a very like good career of getting good keys, by the way. That's that's good. So most of his keys are over three hundred dollars. So oddly enough, uh, N three ZN is sometimes more expensive than Bagali. So let's go back to Bagali for a second. Let's go to hmm. sculpture is what I would point you at. I think sculpture is the one you want, and that's oh my god, it's four hundred twenty dollars. Oh my god, I don't know what the price is for some of these things. Uh, I did buy, I will say I did buy the traveler and I bought the traveler. It's $280. And, uh, believe it or not, that can sit on the table and it won't move around because it's a big, heavy hunk of metal, even though it's a traveler, uh, that might be an option. Okay. So straight up, how hard would it be for you to go to a ham fest like hamvention in the future? Um, I'm actually, I was going to try to go this year, but, um, sadly, so I have to go to a graduation for my niece. So okay. next year I, I am going to be going to, uh, Dayton. Okay. Uh, then that doesn't really answer the question because I was hoping you could just buy it at like ham fest prices and be able to get it. You probably should start looking at the used market for ham, for keys. That'd probably be a good idea. Otherwise look up Bencher or Vibroplex. They're, they're inexpensive. They're good stuff. Bencher's really good. They're all really good. I mean, if you think about it. And don't sleep on those pooty keeg too. Those things look pretty nice. Some of the uh, paddle keers and stuff. Them pooty keegs. Oh, I'll definitely give those uh, give those a look. But I, I've I've looked at the signature and also the. No uh... oh, man, I'm having a brain fart because it's too late and I should be in bed already. All right. Well, I am. Uh, I got to wrap up here. We got so distracted by having so much fun. I forgot to talk about this, and only the 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 most the most observant of people noticed it. So, uh, this is a game. This is a video game. It's called Full Quiet. I sh I showed this on a live stream not too long ago. Actually, I think it was actually very long ago. This is a Nintendo Entertainment System game. Notice the CW. There's a radio in the background. And I was like, you know, as one of the most prolific YouTube video game channels on the internet, the Ham Radio Crash Course, I have to play this game. But I never had the ability to do it until today. So today, this showed up. I have a retro USB device that will allow me to play NES games and stream them because I've got all my uh, HDMI cables there. So I am going to do a live stream where I play Full Quiet. I have heard that this game is like a 20-hour NES game. It is incredibly long and difficult. And it requires like CW decoding and a number of amateur radio things. Like this is a like a sci-fi-ish supernatural game that includes radio. I have never seen anything like this before in my life. I'm gonna give it a shot. I'll probably live stream it because you know why else? Would I, how else would I do this? So. We didn't get to it today, but I got to rig this all up, and that was what I was going to... If we ran out of things to talk about, I was going to rig this all up. But we're done. I'm done. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Full quiet. You're going to you're gonna need to get a Miu Mini so you can play it on the go. Nope. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm going to... Uh, I'm just going to play this. Oh, actually, I should, I should do this just to show off a little bit, so... Uh, guys that are hardcore NES guys, uh, gray, right? Gray for, uh, cartridges, right? Gray. How about full silver? How's that sound? How's that sound for a game? You like that? You like that? You in on that? You need to post a speed run on Twitch for sure. So there's a, there is actually a YouTube video of somebody doing a, a speed run on this. I think it's the world record. It's over an hour. An hour is the speed run. So there is no way Josh is live streaming the entire run through this game because boy, howdy. Yeah, it's, this is freaking cool. I, I like, uh, I found out about this and I was like, oh, I'm in. And I, 
I I bought it. It looks but. like it's actually a modern game made for NES. Oh, it's a hundred percent a modern game that was made for the NES. That's exactly what this is. By the way, by the by the way, Josh, silver is cool, but nothing will ever beat gold Zelda. Nothing will ever beat gold Zelda. No, no yeah. that 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 is that is a bee's knees. No, so for anybody that doesn't know what's going on here, this is a game that was made for the NES from today's technology. So when I say it's a twenty-hour game. A 20-hour NES game is insane. It's insane. That's so much content in a cartridge to run on an NES. That is crazy. Remember your childhood, kids. Remember. Remember where we came from. Remember the 1900s. This is an a, 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 This came out last year. This was 2023 when this came out. This is a brand new game. Brand new. All right, I just I just got it, so I'll be playing it on my Mia Mini. All right, go go nuts, man! You can help me out when I try and go live with this. I think that I think the viewers deserve an official HRCC Half Life One speed run. Uh, I can't do a Half Life One, but I could definitely do a Half Life Two. Half Life Two, oh my god, I love Half Life Two. HRCC Half Life One multiplayer. By the with, way, with just like radio contacts in the background, I have to make radio contacts like every couple of minutes right that's funny we should do that it does look like they have it on steam also for those of you without an nes uh, and I, what like... game? I i i don't know that i could could is i there, could i stream there... half-life 2 on my channel and people actually watch it i don't think that i could uh, on twitch for sure on twitch i could i mean yeah but you know it's half-life 2 Ham radio channel. Just simulcast then. that. Uh, you would be surprised, my friend. Half Life Two. I love that game. I, built I a love Half Life Two. I built, I built a custom machine for that game. Half Life Two is one of my favorite games. Like, uh, I, I, I only played online games like my entire life. Like when I got, well, no, I played tons of video, like standalone single player. But when I got to the point of the internet, I was like in. 100% in, but Half-Life 2 is one of my favorite games. Like, the story of Half-Life 2 and Gordon going through, getting the suit, all that stuff is just, it's so good. Without well, speaking, nobody had to say a goddamn thing. Barely anything, barely any dialogue. One of the best games ever. Well, the graphical engine, the gra the graphics engine has made such a leap in that game. It's, oh. it's one of those, like, defining what? defining games of, of the whole genre, like, that I, I, that's why I had to build a machine for it. My old one couldn't handle it. It looked like fucking pixelated 1980s shit. Like, yeah, it was kind of a revolutionary one. Imagine you're it was. You know, you're, you're used like, to uh, you're used to the the first version. Like you're deployed in Iraq, and this game comes out. Oh. You're like, wow, holy shit! Could you imagine? Yeah. Like, uh, so the best part about Half Life Two is you play as Gordon, and Gordon is like he if you played the first one. He's not really doing anything until he gets the suit. And then it's just a, you know, part of who he is, right? It's it's what gives him life and armor and all that stuff. But when you play the second one, he's kind of like a fish out of water in a world that he is unknown to. He gets dropped in by the the suit guy. And you're you're literally having to tra traverse all these situations until he gets the suit. And then when you get the suit, you feel like oh, it's on now. It's on. And you start getting all these weapons, and you just start murdering everybody. Half-Life 2 is like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. It it. By the way, if you're a parent, play. have your kids play Half-Life 2. They don't have to play the first one to still understand how good Half-Life 2 is. They will enjoy it. I, I promise you. It is so good. So good. I played all of I it. I think I I mean I would say just play Half-Life 1 first anyway, but 
It's a long you know, game, though. It's a long full, game, and it, yeah. Well, so is Half Life Two. There's three, but versions. it's not the full, same. Full, full, full disclosure: I never played Half Life One. I still haven't, but I played Half Life Two like five times. I mean, ago. it's not yeah. the same type of. game. It's still a great game, though. It's not the same type, but it's a great game. But you don't have I mean, to play the first one to be able to like you dive in. To. No, but, you I, but I mean, I, if you're I, gonna I, play Half Life Two, you might not. as well get the Valve Collector's Pack and get them all for like five bucks every Valve game, right? Well, no, I I've owned. Half Life One for twenty years. I've as, never as, played it. As someone who I has, played two. as someone who has multiple hundred hours in Team Fortress Two online, I agree. Buy all the Steam things; they're really good. Yeah, I mean, by the, I don't, by the I way, mean, Josh, Valve, game, Valve games just in general are just good. I mean, they they perfect them almost. By the way, Josh, I'm still waiting for that Apex game. Apex Legends? What are you talking about? You, there. Were, I we were on a uh, after chat like four or five months ago, and you were like, you know, I, I happen to bring up that I play Apex oh. all the time. You're like, oh yeah, I let me know Apex. I uh, I don't think I'm fast enough anymore. Like I used to be. I used to actually be like world number one competitive in Unreal Tournament 1999. And I'm just oh not as fast. God. I'm not. I'm not as fast anymore, man. It's not the same. Apex is different. It's different. Don't don't be a fucking quitter. Play with twenty year olds, dude. Just do what I. This is what you do. You play the sniper characters. You're nah. Gonna, you're gonna you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose more times than not in close combat. I like a with wingman, man. I'm a I'm a wingman guy. I'm a all about the. Wingman. No, no. I trust me. I love close combat, but no. I, I I tend to play I tend to play distance guys because I could do the finesse. I could still do the finesse better than the kids can. Um, so I I, I did. I was playing that when uh, when it came out. I was playing Lifeline a lot. So when it came out, there was very few characters. I, like I was playing. Uh, it was Bangalore and uh, and Lifeline. Those were the two characters I was playing a lot. You played it right at the beginning, of then, yeah. Right at the beginning, there was only like five characters, basically. Yep. Josh, you could learn a thing or two from the movie Cars Three. Don't be such a negative Nancy. Don't be such a Debbie. Downer. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. But so you have to factor in like I have so much time in a day. And right. I generally make I know, YouTube videos, I know, right? I know. Now, with that said. With that said, here's here's a deep cut. If you're ever on the game Marvel Snap, I am playing the hell out of that game. I love that game. I I was uh really big into what's the card game that Blizzard came out with? Hearthstone. Really big into Hearthstone. I have so many cards in Hearthstone. But Marvel Snap, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. On the phone, oh, I'm playing it like I do. I do play too much of Marvel. Uh, uh, Marvel Snap now. It's really good. Everybody's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's really good. When it, when it comes to Half Life games, I was I was more of a fan of uh, Day of Defeat and uh, the original. Well, not the original, but CS 1.6. I played so much Day of Defeat. So much of that 1.6. Like I was a 1.6 engine guy. I played. Everything, everything. Counter Strike didn't matter. Everything. Day of, Defeat, Day of Defeat. That's Half Life Two, like the third. No, uh, that's like no. one point six. Day of Defeat came out in one point six. It's also in Half Life Two. No, sorry, they, they they upgraded it for the Half Life Two engine, but it uh, wasn't it wasn't nearly as good though. In one point six, what? The, yeah, no, <laughs> don't one, even don't even don't no, even talk point, crap point, about my lineage. <laughs> It was By great. The way, 6 speaking, was good. Speaking, when, it, when it came out on Source, it went downhill. Speaking of Counter Strike, the best map that has ever been designed for any first person shooter ever made was Dune 2. No, it's Two Towers. Fight me. Get out of here. Two Towers? Nah. Get out of here. Two Towers for Unreal Tournament 99? Get though. out of here. Get out of here. Oh, no. Oh, I loved. I loved. Well, oh. But you were a kid playing in a sniper map. Two Towers was a was a sniper map. Dude. No, no, you had a you had a transponder in UT ninety nine, so you could blast your transponder to the other site and then translocate. Yeah, uh, uh, whatever. I mean, they were okay. Yeah, that that changes the dynamics. I, I'm talking like classic shooter. I, like no, no. What do you mean classic shit. shooter? <laughs> UT ninety nine is the most classic shooter. Everything is based off of UT ninety nine. 
fight me. Uh, disagree. Come at me. Disagree Come at me. quick. Come at me. Actually, no, Doom. I'm going to go back to Doom. Or if you're looking at the CD upside down, Wood, as all the memes show. No, I mean, like, you, you can you can give me a hot take on Quake 3. Quake 3 literally revolutionized the speed of shooters. The speed uh, of shooters literally comes from Quake 3. Like, Call of Duty, all that stuff, the speed at which they're doing that is Quake 3. Period. Yeah, I, 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 do, not, I do not disagree with what you're saying about UT-99 because that was what... Uh, it's, the, it's still the Unreal Engine. Most games are based off of that. That started with that game. But there were ones before that. Um, I got I, personally. I got hooked in on Quake Two. Friends of mine that were in it a little bit earlier than me got hooked in on Doom. So Doom, oh, Quake Two are like the '90s main hookups to it. So and then people I, like you got in later. <laughs> uh, calm down. <laughs> calm down when you're talking to me. I, so so uh, Unreal Tournament '99 did something that like all shooters later built upon. Every one of their guns had an alt fire. That didn't exist before UT99. Quake 3 had the speed, like the 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 like the velocity of movement, like the slidingness and all that stuff. That was great. UT99 had the 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 drift factor where you could double click and your your person would flip and then you had the alt fire mechanics on every one of the guns that added all kinds of layers of capability. So with the pulse rifle, you'd blast out the ball and then you hit it with the laser and it would blast everybody. If you timed it right, like that is, come on. That is like, come, that is the best valid, part, valid, right? It's very so good. Valid, it's so good. Valid, valid point. Yeah. You were, you were not wrong. I, 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 know, was, I, I, I lived it. I lived it. I know. I know I lived it too, dude. You are not wrong with that point. I uh, part part of my response is a little bit emotional. They're just like when I got it, but yeah, you're right. Like there was no secondary fire prior yeah. to that game. There, like the rocket launcher where you could like so you could not only like hold it down, right? So you had you had two options. You could hold down the rocket launcher and it would revolver up like. But you could choose if it was just a single blast of all the rockets or they fanned out. That was a thing you could do in a shooter. It's like the, and it was so cool, so good. It was it, that was in 1999 when that came out. It, it's like ah, 20 years ago, man. It's 25 years ago. Josh, 25 roll. years ago. Oh my god. Oh my I know, god. I know. I know. I so uh, yeah. I know, dude. I'm gonna be. Sucks. I'm gonna be like killing noobs in the nursery home in the future here. By the way, stop playing the age card on Apex because I've played with guys who are like seventy before. <laughs> See, I'm a I'm a Quake Two guy. I liked. Uh, there's this mod called D Day. It was the first uh, the first game to ever have aim down sights. I have like probably a thousand hours in that game. It's, oh, dude, it's, I love it. Was that. So great. I love it. I love it. See, that's the thing. It's like I respect all of it. Like I'm not gonna say one's better than the other because they all brought something unique to the game. And if it's not for that, there would be like none of what we have now, which is all great. It's all really good. Now, with that said, when we were talking, <laughs> Drew and I were talking before the live stream, and he's like, "Oh, my son's playing uh, Fortnite," and I was like, "Oh, are you are you doing the are you playing with him?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm playing with him." He's like, "Are you building? Do you build?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the building." And I'm like, "See, I can't." I can't get my head around the building. My kids are doing the building on Fortnite, and I don't know what the hell is happening with the building. I can't do it. I can't do it. I tried. It's I can't Twitch. do it. It's, it's all Twitch, dude. Dude, I like. I can't. I can't play I, the. My, uh, I can't do it anymore. My six-year-old son plays for. I I never played Fortnite until I was my my kid is already hopeless. He, he's seven year, He's almost seven years old and already like incredibly addicted to video games i i guess i was already at that age too so doesn't fall far from the tree but uh i was i've never played fortnite i played i played apex forever i have i have nine thousand hours in apex really uh, that's an impressive amount oh, holy oh, smokes it's a ridiculous amount yeah and, i do have to play with I'm, you i do have to play with you I, yeah, if i'm gonna I, get that I, going i have to play with you that's well, crazy. I, I I love what they do with the game, man. Like it's the first it's the first game ever. No, it's good. Every three every three months, they either change all the weapon meta and the maps, or they add a new character. 
so everything always changes. You can play the same, it's the same basic game, same basic weapons, but you gotta, you gotta switch it up. Like, gun, the guns that I use now, four months ago were shit. You know, yeah. it, it's, it, it completely, it, it makes it, it always makes it interesting. I will say 9, that I like 000. the velocity and speed. The movement feels really good in Apex. I love that aspect. Oh, of it. that's probably my favorite part of it. It's uh, I it, the only other shooter I could think of that I like more than this one would have been the original CS. Uh, like, that's, the only... that's like that's hard though because you grew up on it, right? Yeah, I, I'm trying to remove emotion from it, but like the dynamics, like I, I don't know, like I, yeah, I can't wait for my kids to say like, Dad, I started playing this game called Counter Strike. Would you like to play with me? And I'm like, Yes, son, I would. <laughs> I'm gonna, dude, I'm gonna own the crap out of you. I'm waiting. Game. I am waiting. I might <laughs> like video gaming is like my main way of bonding with my son. It's like, oh my. god god <laughs> <laughs> like i there there's a meme of like uh uh it's like honey will you will you stop going so hard on the kids on mario kart and then the second picture is dale Earnhardt. <laughs> it's like no i can't i cannot i cannot yeah <laughs> i am yeah. unwilling to do it like when when my kids are like dad would you like <laughs> would you play a game with me and it's like i'm gonna murder you and everything we play <laughs> you don't understand <laughs> You Did you say have... you had 9,000 hours? That is a uh, lot of time, man. That is a lot of actually, time. That, that, that's, okay, actually, listen, that's actually listen. an underestimate. <laughs> an underestimate. Listen, I, listen, an I, underestimate. I did, bit, I did a little bit of the math. That's 375 days. 375 full days. One year and 10 full days spent in that game. Yeah, and I've been playing it since February 19. That's over five years. Yeah, that's about right. One fifth of all of your time <laughs> since <laughs> in the Stop past five. It, it, honestly, it honestly, five this is why this is why five. I have to play this game with Mike. I, I need to play with NAYO on on Apex. Oh my god! What's your favorite character on Apex? Fuse, absolutely Fuse. F what's Fuse? Which one is Fuse? Grandier. Oh, he's the guy that has the mortar, right? Uh, he can shoot grenades like really far. He, so okay, he the mortar, oh, he's he got the, the arm. He's the got the grenade, arm, right? He's the, the arm grenade, thing. The, the grenade launcher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do, do you watch Doctor Disrespect? Rings a bell. I love Doctor Disrespect. He's one of my favorite YouTubers ever. I watch him all the time, and when he does uh Apex Legends, I watch him like. When I'm working, I have him playing in the background just so I can watch him play Apex. It's so much fun. And he loves Fuse. Fuse is one of the guys he plays as, or plays as. Yeah, uh, say his name again. I'm gonna, I'm typing it right now. Dr. Disrespect. You don't know Dr. Disrespect? Oh, my goodness. Uh, the chat's not saying anything. There's barely anybody oh, watching. No, I, I, say, I save all my YouTube streaming for you you guys okay and, all right well, and history nice. shit like yeah uh, actually like it's funny as much as i game i watch very little videos on gaming well that's the thing is that like because what happens I, I spend so much time gaming <laughs> yeah no i mean the the reality of getting older is that like i end up watching people game more than i game now because i have too much stuff going on like i will literally watch somebody play a game while I'm editing and other stuff, because I just have like too much going on that I can't do that stuff anymore. Like I really can't. It and uh, it's yeah, yeah. Two time man. All right, you guys got me questioning my hours. I'm I'm trying to actually look it up. Uh, it's split between EA and Steam. I have two thousand hours on Steam, uh, but that's not the bulk of them. There, Hold on. So by the way, there there is nobody. There there is no um. So there's a couple reasons why I like Dr. Disrespect is that when I do a live stream, it's just me. You're like literally talking to me. If you if you catch up with me at a, a ham fest, this is me. I love the fact that he has a character that he plays as and he does it so well. And if you watch his live streams, it's just so good. 
He's just so on point with the character he's playing through the whole thing. It, it's literally like he's built his prestige on, and then Mike will know this. When we were when we were in the 1900s, <laughs> there was a, a a business called Blockbuster Video, and when video games got really popular, you could you could do this challenge where you would fight with other local kids and you can keep going up the ladder. And so his claim to fame was that he's the two time blockbuster world champion. Cause he is, he's literally the two time blockbuster world champion. And that just kills me. I think it's so good. It, it's like, it's such a part of his persona on the live stream. And by the way, he doesn't look like when he's normally streaming. Like, he has a mustache, but he wears the bullet, and he's got the whole tack vest they got. It's just the funniest thing ever. It's so good, and he plays the character so well. And all the people that play with him are so good. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We actually didn't have that at the Blockbusters when I was growing up here. In oh, you didn't world. have that? We did. It was like uh, you had to play... Uh, uh, what was the the basketball game where it was like he's on fire? Oh my god! NBA Jam. You had to play NBA. You had to play NBA Jam, and I think you had to play a Mario, and then something else, and then that's how you qualified. But you had to beat out uh like multiple other people. My buddy was super into it. He's like, I'm gonna kick everybody's ass, and he did really good. But I was like, eh, I'm I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I don't really want to go to a blockbuster and fight other people. Oh man. I Dude, literally I, I, I I'm literally I going to wear this. I'm literally going to wear that guy's merch uh probably next weekend for the uh for the patron picks episode cuz I just oh, I love I love that guy. He's awesome. By the way, by the way, speaking of uh, what you're wearing, what is your shirt? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, by the way, I, I, I did get. Uh, if you, if you listen to the podcast, we got a message from Florence. I don't. Florence, uh, is a Newport Beach and also Hawaii, uh, apparel brand, and they contacted me and they're like, "Hey, here's a coupon code. Get some merch. Get some stuff." And they they sent me a lot of stuff, and so this they're that this is what they call the luau shirt, which I just loved the boar with like three arrows in it. I was like, hell yeah! So yeah, that's uh that's the shirt I'm wearing right now. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. Like uh, a couple hours ago, I was googling like Florence and a boar with arrows. And yeah, I yeah, yeah. it's super shirt. cool, that's, dude. It's I super had, cool. I had to ask. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah, they make really good stuff. Like we got a uh, a down shirt, uh, down jacket for my wife because she has a <laughs> Leia. Leia, although from uh, is Chinese and born in the Philippines uh, and all that other stuff, has a, a temperature range she can she can exist in. And so what she does is she just layers. Like, if it's too cold, she just adds more layers. And she's like, I, I want you to buy a jacket. Buy a jacket that's fitted for you. And then I will wear that because I'm going to have, like, eight layers on when I put that jacket on. And I'll be all set. And I was like, okay. So we're going to you know what? She's a keeper right there. You know, a lot of people from warm climates don't understand the layering thing. It's like they, they complain about the cold. You know, for me, it's T-shirt. Then an Under Armour, and then a sweatshirt, yeah, and then yeah, a coat yeah. over that. No, yeah, so I don't ever, I'll, I'll, I don't ever get cold. It's always my hands or my yeah. feet. Yeah, I'll take, I'll, I'll take negative twenty over one twenty any day. Like, uh, uh, there's dude, always so many, there's dude. always so many layers you can remove. You can always add more. Peel your skin off. I, I am, yeah. uh, as a California guy, I, I tell my wife every, all the time. This comes up. You can always add more layers you cannot remove heat like how if you're camping and you're in the desert it's hot as shit like how do you deal with that you can always add more layers when you're cold when you're sleeping sleeping is no problem when you're cold you just have a right sleeping bag you're good to go it's not a problem hot when you're camping is a nightmare cold not a problem 
not a problem at all. Always give me cold. I'll, I'll camp in snow. I don't even care. Yep. Yeah, that's one of my that's one of my nightmares is as being in a place 100%. where it's like the dew point is really high, and uh, I mean there are places on Earth where this could happen, where it's just hot enough that no matter what the air is just hot and moist enough that it'll it'll kill you because you can't physically release the heat as fast as it's yeah, coming. Yeah, no, I, I I'm with uh, shorts and snow. I've done that. I flew with my dad to Alaska. I've I've rolled all around Alaska. Uh, Anchorage and Juno in shorts, but had layers, uppers, and we're good. We're we're good all day. No problem. I remember my dad used to blow the snow in the driveway wearing fucking Tiva flip flops. Yeah. No problem, dude. No problem. That's the thing, yeah, is that I'm like a... I mean, also if you live in that climate, it helps. Like totally it helps. But you know Oh yeah, my climate is like in in the continental US is like the is like the worst for that because uh, I live in South Dakota, so I live right in uh, western or eastern, so like right by the you have western, no... western you Minnesota. Have no barrier. It's like it's like it's it's like there's no hills, there's nothing to stop the wind. We're so far away from the ocean, there's no temperature moderation at all. You, yeah, you yeah, yeah. That, that big high in Canada where the jet stream dips low, it just wants to come in and yeah, get you, and all you can that see nice that. You can, dry you cold can, heat. You can see that that feature going in through the, from the prairies and then northeast yep. Uh, yep. Montana and that's Wyoming. when you start getting people complaining about the lake effect. 3,000 miles away. You're like, no, how does that affect me where I'm at? No, 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 no. Not, not, and then, not there. And then, no, and so, so the, the Dakotas and Minnesota get hit. Actually, honestly, like between the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Montana, they, they're probably the hardest hit in the lower 48 easily. Um, it's the, the, time when the, the wind is the wind is terrible because it'll suck the energy. Yeah. Right yeah. The yeah. wind yeah, is the worst. The it. wind is the worst. You, so negative twenty with like sixty percent humidity and it's like twenty five miles per hour constant wind. So it just so, sucks. So straight up, I'd rather have super cold situations where the snow doesn't melt, because that's just a temperature regulation thing, right? When you add wind to that, that's a nightmare. But if it's wet because the temperature's too low and everything starts melting, that's horrible, horrible. I don't like that situation. I like super cold, no wind, great, no problem. Dry, yeah. it's great, it's easy, you're rolling around, no problem. So I um so I work in nuclear. I work I work in nuclear plants that are right on Lake Michigan. Uh, great great lakes, northern you know, northern part of the US. And I have worked with people, uh, so there's no there's no stopping the wind. It is the lake, yep. 70 to 100 miles wide, just wind rushing over it, and boom, hits the shores and confines itself right down between the dunes on my walk into work. Yeah, I have worked with people at both my old plant and my current plant that walk in wearing, like, ski masks. Yeah block the wind it's that bad like on like 10 degree days when you have a 40 mile wind Dude. in your face it is fucking painful 10 degrees on its own i could do that any day no problem so but if it's if you got a lot of wind in your face oh my god is that zapping out of you so uh it's there, hard to get motivated oh sorry no no there's a couple of air force bases in colorado that i've been to and you literally get told when you're going there to travel from California, because Californians don't understand this, you go to this base and they tell you, hey, if you have to park on the outskirts of the parking lot, you need to like cover all your skin because you could get frostbite by the time you get to the gate at the base to like to badge in and all that stuff because you're going to be. Yep blasted with wind high altitude wind at super low temperatures will zap you will completely zap you uh, someone's yeah, been a retriever who said that who said that josh i almost said it and he said it before me yeah i've been a retriever yeah that's me i know what you're doing there no you don't <laughs> It's it's hard to get motivated uh, to, to snowblow the bit. driveway when it's like negative twenty and it's just blowing snow right in your face. 
Yeah, yeah, and then you put the schema, and you put like a uh, you wrap up your face, and you put these goggles on, and it just fogs up, and then it instantly oh, flash yeah. freezes, and you constantly wipe it. You got to take your glove off, wipe it, and then he fogs up and it freezes again. <laughs> My favorite is yeah, when you no, roll in. That's no. Uh, the trick is you have to use a glycol spray. Use a glycol uh, spray. Well, you don't the, the station problem is I don't that. have it. But, yeah, you know, no, it's, it's just a cold, cool, it's cool weather thing. Work. <laughs> my my favorite my favorite for people who roll into bases too early when you get hot like you get hit with reverie and you have to like stop. <laughs> That's my favorite. As a non military person, you're like, oh my god, the speaker started playing something. I better pull over immediately <laughs> and not move. That's the thing. Oh oh no 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 oh no five o'clock oh please get a building oh, or or, no, or no. earlier than that when it when it's like super early I got hit with that before and everybody's like don't move pull your cord. see the the navy it's bases just important. do that at eight in the morning so you're good yeah well that's when you get hit yeah <laughs> oh man so many people are yeah, talking about they, Shriver yeah Shriver's a plot uh, Shriver's a spot it's a spot let's just say that. What are you guys talking about? Uh, in chat, people talking about stuff. It's Josh. It's you have you haven't figured out this community is a small world. <laughs> yeah, I, I've it gotten really is. I have gotten a ra I have gotten random messages on networks that I don't expect anyone to be able to talk to me on, and they're like, "Hey, is that you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's me. You found me." And it's wild. It is super wild. Yep. It's it's crazy. They're like, oh, dude, I watch your videos. They're like, oh, this is a this is a wild place to be talking about this. <laughs> this is really crazy. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that that's the wild. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's definitely hold wild. On, yeah, that's on, definitely wild. On. I'm gonna I'm gonna take advantage. I'm done, of my man. Elmer, I'm done. That's my... that's it right there. You can't beat that. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. There, there you go. I took care of it. Uh oh, where? What? No, you don't have to take care of it. It's fine. What do you mean? No, 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 no. I took care of it in the right way. Uh, -oh, I don't see it yet. Is it on? Uh, no, YouTuber? I pinned it. I'm an Elmer. I can do that. Oh, <laughs> you pinned it. Good, good. Yes, good. <laughs> All right, everybody. I think you I'm gonna. Never, you never texted me back, Josh. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't because I'm not even on that app. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> all right, everybody. I uh, I really do appreciate you hanging out. Uh, all. How many people we got watching? Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up live. One hundred sixty-seven of you from. 366 hey i appreciate you hanging out uh i i don't know what to say this is uh, the ending here is just kind of how this goes if we're not talking about ham radio stuff we're gonna just explore the space and i had a lot of fun doing it i don't know what's gonna happen with this i gotta i gotta sort out how to plumb this to the hdmi and get it on a live stream but i promise you if i if I do a video about full quiet, it won't be a Saturday stream. It'll just be me just hanging out. Like we'll we'll do a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It might be Tuesday next week. That's all I'll say about that. And uh yeah, maybe maybe I'll do a Tuesday. That maybe be fun. Give me something to, you know, not think about. All right. Anybody on the uh Discord got anything you want to mention before I head out here? Liberty Jim. Fliberty gibbets, indeed. Anybody else? I was late. No, oh, you were late, but welcomed. And sorry for, uh, I didn't mean to mute you in the sense that I didn't want to hear from you. Yeah, I was you holding just, it down when my screen cut off. You had a hot, a hot mic. You had a hot mic, so that's why we did that. All right, everybody. Have a great rest rest of your weekend. I uh, I will will be posting a video for Monday or Tuesday, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a poda tomorrow. Actually, I'm I'm gonna try to do two things. I'm gonna try and record a J poll video because I if you saw Mike KMRD, I didn't I didn't bring it up. Uh, he he posted a video about a really cool J poll antenna that I got before him. 
and he made a video before me on it. So we're going to test it out. We're going to take it out in the field and we're going to do a, a, a live test on how good it functions. And we're going to compare it to our favorite antenna, which is the Ed Fong J-Pole. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. But until then, I'll say 73 to everybody. Take it easy on the Discord. 73. 73, Josh. Take care, man. Later, guys. All right, everybody on the YouTubes and everywhere else, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. This is a very long live stream. So, uh, hey, thanks for watching. Take it easy. See ya.